first of all, I didn't vote for Trump. I could care less that Trump I'm not didn't, saying win, you did. <laughs> didn't win the election. I the thing that I okay, care wait, about wait, wait, is wait. honesty in media, and that that you've wait, got to admit honesty that in media. story. Trump was saying the election was going to be rigged eight months in advance. Yeah, true. Crazy. He's going off like crazy. What we can do is socially stigmatize them, and that is an effective form of rhetoric. After the civil rights. Like it can be, I mean, certainly. I suppose you gotta be really careful on who you pull the trigger on stigmatizing, right? No, I give this uh, the same argument all the time. I think we, when we stigmatize things, we assume people are changing their beliefs, but what's actually happening is we're just not looking at it anymore. I think that part of the reason why Trump caught everybody by surprise, me included, was because we'd stigmatize so many of the beliefs so much, we assume that no one else in society could have held them anymore, but that isn't the case. What actually happened is you just didn't see it anymore. And then when Trump came out, there were like four different points during his campaign where we were like, this is it, like he can't survive this. Today we'll be watching some, uh, this was highly requested for weeks, but we didn't want to cover it because we had just done a Vush video and we don't like to do two in a row. Mm -hmm. And this is Vosh, uh, is he advocating for violence? I'm not sure. Or he's at least advocating that the Republicans, if they control all three houses of government, that they will enact some type of LGBT genocide. Yeah, should we get into it? You've you've covered this already, Destiny, didn't you? This is like, yeah, I sure did. Wait, also, yeah. just hold on. I'm trying to figure out what I just signed up for. That's not fair. I'm not, I'm not, He's already covered this. Am I committed what to like an eight-hour show, or can I? Take you off can whenever? leave. No, whenever you, you yeah, want. you you can. My name is like, yeah. oh, we're gonna okay. be here for okay. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. Just you making can sure. skip out, and thanks for asking me ahead of time. At least you know you <laughs> might want to say goodbye to us no, before yeah, you leave. Yeah, just sneak out of the room quietly. Did you? You gotta join the watch together, though, Destiny. Do I have to? Well, if you want to watch the video of that. I, m I remember all of it. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> he's he's going to be on Video games are serious other. business, okay? Just don't let don't let the watch the other link in your stream for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. yeah, that that game looks kind of lit. Destiny, how is that? Is it good? Everybody's playing it. Seems to be good. So what game? The V Rise or something? Game. Okay, hold yeah. on. I'll join you. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll join your thing. Where is the Thank uh, you. Oh, uh, was it Rose? What's the Rose yes. Wrist? Is that the YouTuber? So Rose Risk is a bread tuber, I believe, who's responding to this video. And Vosh decides he's going to jump in and defend his take on this video to Rose Risk. And I believe, Destiny, you were in the chat. Well, hold on. Kind to of... me, just because I want to, especially if I'm involved in Vosh, I want to make sure the facts are accurate. I thought, okay. didn't Rose Risk reach out to Vosh? Well, I, I, I thought it was the other so, way around, yeah. but I'm not sure. So, yeah, we like to get accurate facts here, too. So I, I appreciate that. We don't want to Vosh, if we're misrepresenting you in any way, I know that you would never <laughs> misrepresent anybody on the Internet. Right. So I would just like to formally not going to apologize. But if we get it wrong, you know, acknowledge that you got acknowledge it wrong. that. We there you go. Yeah, okay. Anyway. So, so the, you did, did the thing that I didn't know, Destiny, was did Rose Wrist ask one of your questions or it, oh, that yeah, was unclear to is, me? Um, there was one question that I wanted him to ask Vosh because I thought Vosh has been a little bit cagey. But... Right. So, and he did ask that question. Yeah, he did. And he told Vosh which question it was. So. What was the response? Do you recall? I don't even remember the question. Stephen, fuck okay. all that politics but shit. Whatever it was, it was unsatisfying. Do a Last of Us oh, 2 playthrough. Yeah. All it's right. not that bad, I promise. So let's get into it. Let's get into the video. NPR's Melissa Block reports. Obama. Now, there must be an initial assumption here. Kindergarten to third grade, that's so little. It's about... So the name of this video is Republicans Obama. Want Queer Kids Dead and They're Winning. <laughs> and this is uh, in re response to the uh, DeSantis uh, Don't Say Gay bill. There's a bit of an echo on the Obama. watch together. Is that Doomer or Rags, perhaps? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it, it shouldn't be me. Right. Um, I mean, I have headphones in. Is there any other way that that would happen? Obama. I have headphones in as well. Yeah, I have headphones as well. So Maybe it's you. Maybe no. watch together. I didn't hear an echo. But... You didn't hear an echo? No. Well, I About, did. Just look and see how the box lights Obama. up when the video starts, and you'll be able to tell who's echoing if there is an echo. Right. Um, keep in mind, the real position that most Republican politicians Obama. have is that, well, okay, just let's get this out. 
There's definitely an echo. Yeah, I do hear it now. And it's definitely not me. <laughs> okay, well, I don't hear an echo, which oh, makes it feel like it might be me. Is it me? Oh, I don't hear an echo either. It was you. Oh, shit. Well, wait, hold on now. Yeah. Well. Come on. It even echoed, like, after we paused the video. <laughs> the other guy said he didn't hear an echo, so fuck you guys. Vosh was still talking. Rex, stop guy? covering, Obama. okay? Covering, I'm not, I'm uncovered entirely. I don't, I don't, I also don't hear an echo. I don't, I don't know what's going on. You guys don't have like a stream open oh, in the um, background or two watch together windows open or something, right? I don't have any other stream open. No, the guy that's, who, the people that are saying they're hearing echoes. Yeah, I, I do hear the echo. I don't have anything open. Yeah, I don't have anything open either. Hmm. Hmm. We'll get to the bottom of this eventually. Maybe. I hope so. For those who are being bothered by an echo, because I don't hear it, so I I don't I don't. Let's try again. You it's out of the way. Try, uh, might be better to search for it while it's going right on. Right to begin with, okay. Legitimately, most Republican politicians completely fixed now. Whatever you did, it worked. I didn't. Doomer. Care, so I don't think me. they care about trans people. Okay. <laughs> it's my what Republican path. politicians care about is letting the world die to climate change by not doing. All right, it's back, Doomer. Uh, right. Wait, 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 wait. Doomer, <laughs> mute yourself. Doomer, mute yourself for a second. Well, I don't hear any echo, so I don't know. If, I don't think there could be anybody in here echoing. Are you guys in another group call or something? No, this is the only call we're in. Hold on. Legitimately, most Republican politicians, I don't think they care about Trump. Okay, wait. Okay, it's not Doomer. I, oh, <laughs> okay. I, do, I do hear it now, now that I'm really kind of... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Steve. <laughs> my ears. Destiny, mute yourself for like a second on Zoom. I think it's usage. Wait, okay, here, play again and we'll see whose box lights up. Go. Okay. It's people. Okay? <laughs> what Republican politicians care about is letting the world die to climate change by not doing anything about the oil, gas, and, uh, you know. Uh, uh, it's Adam. Only Adam's box. Yeah, I see Adam's up. box lighting up, but no, I still don't hear it. It was, it was, um, it was Destiny. I muted it. How, how, it, was it was Adam's Wait. box literally lighting up. Um, uh, uh, coal yeah, lobbies Adam's that box is they are bought out by. But the that goes gone. cutting taxes for wealthy people. Now, those two positions... Okay, you can unmute Destiny. If, did you mute him in the call? Okay. <laughs> if it's you, it's Steven. How is this possible? Wait, is it actually um, me or... It is it actually is you. Yeah. <laughs> My box isn't even lighting up. I know, but... Maybe, muted, maybe but he's in... Way. Maybe he's in the watch together as... Like a with the mic and the oh, watch together. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You're wait. I right. absolutely am. Yes. Oh, hold on. Jesus. Fuck. You're yeah. You're in two calls. Yes. This has happened before. Oh how, wait, how, is it? Hold it, on. My microphone and my webcam are not activated. Hmm. It's gonna be eight hours of this. <laughs> I just bear with, just bear with <laughs> I also, if that was the thing, day. then muting me into the in this fucking call shouldn't affect that either. Motherfucker. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, no, you're muting in one, but you're still open in the other. But we don't hit, hear the oh. echo because you're only in one. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Then. That's not a good point. Well, wait, wonder, what echo? Are you, I, what are you hearing an echo of? Can I just mute him? Can I just we're mute hearing him an, the watch together? We're, yeah. we're hearing echo of the watch together, not of you. Mute me. Just mute me. Do what you must. <laughs> I accept. Continue. Position that most Republican facts. politicians have is that. Well, okay. Just let's get this out of the way right to begin with, okay? All right. Legitimately, most Republican politicians, I don't think they care about trans people, okay? What Republican politicians care about is letting the world die to climate change by not doing Definitely. anything about the oil, gas, and, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, uh, coal that's true. lobbies that's that they are bought true. out by. And two, cutting taxes for wealthy people. Now, yeah. those two positions are really <laughs> bad uh, politically if you are... Exp so... I want to play this. Is that just like it for a minute before? That's all they care about, Rags. Shut up. Well, no, just to sh this is very interesting because this is right as the "Don't Say Gay" bill gets passed, and he's kind of saying, "Oh, Republicans don't really care about the trans issue." And you'll see a month later, this transitions into Republicans are going to enact an LGBT genocide. So. I just thought right. that transition <laughs> seems okay. very extreme. So they went from not caring to being like, we have to get rid of all these people. <laughs> well, like he's saying they don't care. They're just going to use it cynically for ul ulterior purposes. And that transitions into the genocide. So, All right. 
I would I would imagine most of them are like what like I bet a lot of people are just apathetic to it. It's just not something that they generally discuss or hear about or talk about. Well, I mean, I think people care about the the gender identity being taught in school and things of that nature uh, more so than other issues. Yeah, I think I think there's a fear or worry about like stuff going on in school. I think that's a really easy thing to get people worked up on really need to gender stuff. For some reason you can't do it with mass shootings, but <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the fear there's the yeah. fear that, you know, they're going to have their children be trans, like you that. know, essentially, but Well, there is also the fear that they're being taught an untested ideology, this idea that you know gender assigned at birth is a pretty radical idea for a lot of people and i i don't think that's really been scientifically vetted and i'm not sure it belongs in public schools for that reason yeah no i agree so but that that concern seems lost on people on the left uh like especially vosh i mean we talked to matt binder and and lance a couple days ago and I mean, that seemed lost on them that people, you know, people are concerned that their kids are being taught this untested ideology mm-hmm. as fact, which, you know, well, how do you have that debate if they don't even accept that's what they're concerned about? The thing that was interesting to me when we talked to them was that not that it was untested, but they don't even see it as being a political question. Right. They're, they're like, this isn't this isn't a polit- right. like we said, we don't want politics and things of this nature be taught in schools and they're like this isn't political this is just you know civil rights issues and it's like mm. yeah i don't know about anytime that. the word politics is invoked it's a little weird because i mean like technically everything is political right R- really well well no, not, not i, I, I mean, wouldn't not say that really yeah i think I mean, so I, and, 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 unless we're moving out of like once you've left like physics chemistry and math like what mm-hmm. you teach in every history class is going to be political. What you teach in every sociology class is going to be political. Like sex ed is political. Well, those those mm-hmm. those are political topics, yes, mm-hmm. because they have to do with uh, social arrangements. But if it's something that there is no, like you said, like math isn't mm-hmm. generally a social topic, so it isn't political because there's Although, no moral component. Kind of, yeah. But then even even some conservative parents can turn these topics into big political ones as well. Like Common Core, for instance. Is something that sure. people have really strong feelings about. Um, sure. So yeah, but I, chemistry is not, and you know, reading is not really. Uh, well, I guess maybe you can. Yeah, I just, so like, yeah, they, they, I learned a, that. I learned a saying political. I like a, a long time ago, um, which is, political things are things that I don't like, um, which mm-hmm. basically means that like, if you don't like something, it becomes political. Um, and I think that I think that's a good thing to keep in mind because there's a lot of things that don't seem quote unquote political. But what might not be political to one person, if another person disagrees with it, it becomes political, you know, um, not to get like too hardcore, but even for something like chemistry, if you've got like a flat earth creationist, that's going to be a political topic or evolution. Well, you know, sure, uh, totally. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's just there's a lot of contention around almost fucking everything in the United States. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's fair to say that anything you disagree with is political. And I guess when we've talked about this before, we sort of landed on that. You know, public education should be sort of based around being as uncontroversial as possible and fulfilling the needs as as many people possible. And I think there's a good balance of of yeah, I mean, like technically anything can be political, sure, but you know, how many people are really flat earth cre- you know, flat earth creationist versus I, unfortunately you know, I think in the United States, isn't it like a decent chunk of people? Like over like ten, what isn't isn't it like flat like, earthers or creationists? I guess we can play. Well in terms them, of but. creationists, I think isn't it like forty six percent of Americans fuck, I don't know how old this data is, but I thought it was like past forty percent of Americans still believe in like God creating shit. Um so yeah, I'm I'm not trying to say that like um like some things are clearly more controversial than other things. Right. But I think it's yeah, I think it behooves the, you to understand the that older split. you can't just dismiss something by saying like, oh well this isn't political. Because I think that's a big folly that a lot of people on the left have made. We're like, oh well this is an uncontroversial, absolutely established scientific fact. And it's like, well, from where? Well, from gender studies and sociology. It's like, okay, well, there's gonna be a lot of contention here. Um and I think it's important to recognize that because when you just blow past it and say, Oh, well, you know, um, I don't think this is contentious, you, you kind of mm-hmm. miss the whole field of people that do think it's contentious you know that's what I'm saying. Where, where are you at on that question destiny yeah the, the, the earth is flat the <laughs> gender ideology stuff in the, schools, yeah it's gen, gender assigned at birth is that a like a thing in your lexicon 
Um, I, so I feel like everybody just tackles these conversations like dog shit. I think the problem is that um, it's contentious. I you, think a lot of the LGBT stuff has kind of like ran away into like very, very, very activist groups, such that I wouldn't trust a lot of activist trans people to talk about trans issues now. So it makes it really hard to say like, where am I at on it? Like, I have my feelings and thoughts on it that I would argue are pretty are about as close to true as I, I think they should be. Although everybody feels that way, of course, right? But um, some of the more kind of like radical conversations that feel like they're leading the dialogue. Um, some Sometimes feel a little bit wacky, um, you know. Like anytime you got somebody talking about like xeno genders or neo pronouns or you know like all this stuff, it's like I, I don't feel like any of that uh, should even be talked about because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's gonna it's gonna depend, I guess, on what the question is more specifically. I, I get it, that. I guess Go when ahead. it comes to a lot of the school stuff, I think a lot of parents have a particular um, desire to keep sexuality conversations and i guess that would probably bleed into gender related conversations to ones that they have with their kids not ones that they kind of have this degree of separation with uh it's it's got this personal kind of nature to it for sure i think although i will say i kind of i'm super out of sympathy for parents because it seems like especially for boomers like they just don't have those conversations at all so like yeah, fuck you. <laughs> uh, if like there are so many girls that have like their first period that never even knew periods were a thing until they started bleeding around in class. Um, there are a lot of boys and girls that don't ever get any conversations about STDs or birth control, like real conversations, not the ones where like if you smoke marijuana and get a blowjob, your dick is gonna fall off, like stupid shit like that. So it's hard to be sympathetic towards parents that are like we want to have these conversations. Well, you're not. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I mean, yeah, it's they're complicated topics. Yeah. Um, well, I think they probably were comfortable with them learning that in, you know, fifth or sixth grade, whenever it's appropriate, whenever sex ed is appropriate. Yeah, well, but even when, just question, weren't... when is it appropriate, right? Because some people would say that, like, kids in sixth grade having sex or sexual feelings, that's fucking disgusting. So. Well, no, they, they teach them the, they well, I mean, teach them you... the sex ed. They don't necessarily assume that they're having sex. Right. I mean, that's yeah. when you start yeah, to like physically go through aspects. puberty. So. I mean, that's um that's what it was for me when I went to school was it was I think it was like six ish grade we got into the the biology topic of you know reproduction and everything and we all got this this note from the teacher that explained everything we're going to be talking about and we had to get our parents to sign it that yeah. they were okay with that and then we right. brought it back to the school and teachers and everything and then we had that all the all all of that school stuff so. And again, I went to I, I was uh, I went to Catholic schools pretty much uh, always elementary and high school. So, wow, and they taught sex ed in Catholic school. Yeah, Catholic wow. grade school they did, but it was really bad for me. I don't know what it was like for you, but for us, it was basically like talking about how if you like, we learned about like shadow partners. If you have sex with like shadow three partners. people that have had sex with three people, you're really having sex with like nine people or 27 <laughs> people every single time you fuck somebody oh, yeah so all that of sounds our... fucking awesome yeah um we learned uh, we learned the tape analogy where you know you take a piece of tape and you stick it on your arm and you take it off over mm -hmm. and over again you go this is what it's like to try to bond with your family once you've had sex with multiple people Jeez, you can't do wow. it anymore um, we saw the pictures of like fucking like rotting genitalia but that this is catholic school though i'm hoping that Jeez, right. Not right. i can't remember what mine was um i think we sort of delved into i think because it was so long ago and I, I legit can't remember a lot of it maybe it was because they didn't talk about it much but i do remember seeing some of the pictures of that stuff they'd show there, there was a clear uh, a clear very strong encouragement that you don't have sex until you're married and stuff like is it that. but is, aren't the pictures kind of good to warn people like this is what kind of what you're signing up I mean, it for. depends well, what the conversation the, is around yeah, the pictures, right. also right. the chance of an std like making your dick fall off like no we had a very bad I, like i'm so embarrassed to say this especially given my level of sexual activity i wasn't it, i was it, I think I was like 30 oh. when I learned things about like chlamydia and gonorrhea that I didn't even know before. Like in terms of like how permanent these things are or like do they clear up with like one bout of antibiotics. Like I, even for me, I didn't know a ton of shit. Um, mm -hmm. And like, yeah. And then same thing with drugs too. We did like the dare stuff. I was 30 before I finally like started to I did to dare? Research. Hell yeah. yeah. So I, the way that we educate our children around these topics is so dog shit. And the problem with too, and people know this or they understand it even if they don't know it. Um, once you lose somebody's trust because you lie to them about some things, they're not going to believe you about anything. And we do that totally. to our kids a ton yeah. when we talk mm -hmm. about topics so stupid how do you feel on the, that being said how do you feel about the santa question <laughs> which i don't like to lie to my kid ever but i mean some people like santa. if you want to do it that's fine but i think fairy tale shit like that is stupid as fuck there's plenty of cool no shit santa. to appreciate in the real world like why buzzkill lying santa isn't real no santa. tooth fairy jeez i mean the presents just 
Yeah, but they're there. I, I don't know. <laughs> About them. So uh, instead, what they do is they maintain power by keeping their voting base distracted by a non-stop series of culture war battles. They are meaning. This is su such projection, like off the charts here. <laughs> well, it's not. It's true, but it's happening on both sides. Both sides I know. seem to be focusing a lot on culture war issues that kind of detract right. from not really having answers about a lot of economic problems right now. Of course, turning the bill into don't say gay is exactly what he's describing here. Mm -hmm. Also something, this is a huge mistake that a lot of people make on the left and right. Um, people will say things like, people just care about economic issues. Like they don't care about these weird culture things. That's a distraction. That is yes. absolutely not true. People absolutely yes. care about culture shit. The idea that it's just a distraction, you think they only care about economic issues, that is just, yeah, you couldn't be further from reality. Yeah, I was about to say, with the, with the, the, whoever the right wing Vouch is, would he be, he or she be saying the same thing about whatever the, the Democrats might be doing. It's just a distraction. It's not really real. That issue doesn't really matter. It's just a distraction. Yeah. Well, but, but most people understand on some level that like the economy is so complicated, it's hard to have an opinion about it, right? It's like, no, do it's I really know to enough to- opinion about it, as <laughs> I've it, it, it is, but I think that's part of why people don't care as much. But with like culture issues, there's no barrier. There's like, yeah. it's not like read 64 Great textbooks. Point. It's just like, you know what? Are, what are your in, yeah. what are your intrinsic moral values, right? And then it, that just manifests itself as your opinion. So everyone they're, has an opinion. They're That's teaching true. what to my kids. I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, teaching economics to my kids. How dare they? My school. True. Well, that's what was weird when we talked to Matt is that he that was basically his perception. I guess he was he seemed like he was kind of very much in a left wing bubble about, you know, why does anyone care about this culture war issues? Why don't they just vote about? you know, public health care and things of that nature. And it's just, it, I feel like, I feel like the left's never going to move. They're never going to gain they politically if that's the attitude yeah, um, they, they hold. They're never going to gain any vote, pick up any votes. And I don't think, I don't think it's true because at least publicly, like a lot of Democrats are focusing on these culture war issues and they're obviously doing it because they think it's effective. Yeah, yeah. you have to, it is. It's yeah, popular. people are it is very popular. effective. People are far more likely to devote their moral interests than their economic interests, especially in terms of, I mean, unless you're talking about a huge tax cut, I mean, People the things that you're even... voting on are don't really affect your economics very much anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people don't know what's in their economic interest, so it's really easy to convince them that whatever more it is money. That they want is right. yeah. going to be in their economic interest. True. And they are done expressly to distract Americans from the fact that their real positions are really, really bad. Um, now, Republican voters, I think. That's an interesting. Do you, I, I? A part of me doesn't think that the the secret because they're in the 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 castle on the hill and it's always lightning behind it. And they're like, all right, we need to we need to distract our voter base because we're actually really evil and they're going to know we're <laughs> evil if we don't distract them with these issues. It's like I don't know, mate. Maybe they actually care, you know, because I think that, you know, I think everyone on most sides probably actually cares about this sort of thing. You don't have to imply well, they don't actually care. And they're being I, I think with the Republicans, it's, it's more that most Republican politicians are still technically neoconservative neoliberals from like the Bush era. And they have to appeal to the sort of new Trump populist movement. And so instead of focusing on economic issues where there actually would be probably some pretty strong disagreements, it's easier for them to just focus on these cultural issues, which they would generally agree upon. And then like all these, like all these, like uh, don't say gay bills or the CRT bills, they don't really like, it's very easy to pass these bills. It doesn't cost the government really much to do any of this stuff. So it's just, it makes much more sense for them politically to focus on this stuff. And parents are reliable voters. If they can step in and pass some policy that's going to make parents happy they're down to do that they're right. totally down to do that it's like a gift yeah exactly it's free money care about trans people sincerely because they're told to because they consume media they watch news articles or they watch news bits they read articles you know um which are telling them essentially that the world is ending because children can think that they're the gender that they don't think that they think they are um so on and so on now Again, I want to be clear. I don't think Republican dumb. politicians, for the most part, care about this stuff. I also don't think they care about the consequences of pushing down that road. Meaning that 
if this is just step one to ten years from now, like police doing mass roundups and executions of trans people, I don't think Republican <laughs> politicians... Does he think that, like, what is that a fuck? meme or is that something he's... Like, Rex, have you seen this gonna... before? Well, he, no, he I is... haven't seen this sort of thing. I'm not like a, I'm not super big <laughs> dog, man. He's, I... he's, he's serious, but I mean, he admits he engages in gross hyperbole, his own words, so. Oh, okay. That's gross hyperbole? I, I hope the people I, who that, hear I that, that know it's gross hyperbole. Because like, yeah. I'm like, man, I guess if, yeah, because I, I don't know. if I don't know how crazy he, because I've heard, he, I, he hear all the crazy stuff, but. I don't think it's hyperbole. I, I mean, maybe this is a spoiler, but like he's repeated these statements like so many times in so many ways, like to pretend it's hyperbole. I mean, it's not being taken as hyperbole if it is, right? Right. I might Most have to get really the Tim Pool. Sort of thing. I might have to get the Tim Pool beanie out here. I feel, I feel like we're drifting towards <laughs> the civil war. Tim Pool civil war here. <laughs> well, he spends the majority of the debate uh, with the guy that we're going to watch, just comparing, saying that basically the Republicans are going to become the Nazi Party if they control all houses of government in the next election. So I, if he's speaking hyperbically, he, he's being consistent. If he's with speaking it. what? Hyperbically. <laughs> okay. Hyperbolically. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right. Petitions would care. Lead all the way down that road and back. I do not think they care that much. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, like maybe they don't care enough to do it. Like they, I mean, that seems more like well, they just actually don't care that much. Well, that's what's even weird too, because he's saying like they, was the Republicans are going to accidentally round up gay people? Like, what? Do you, like, or they're just going to do it? They're, they're just, they don't care about it yet. They're going to expend all this energy to, you know, put the gay people in camps or something. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Well, do, like the, we, I guess the implication is the the semi apathy of step one is going to eventually turn into full blown, like, hatred and concentration. Well, camps okay. And... Here, here, here's a serious question because I, I don't know the answer to this. Would he just would he consider legislation that would like block trans kids from transitioning as a genocide? Yes. Because he might. Any any single piece of legislation that does anything regarding trans people that isn't like completely one hundred percent reaffirming them is uh, genocidal to him. Jeez. Okay. Down. Well, then, <laughs> I mean that 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 might clear up the confusion, right? Because well, like, no, when he, I think of a genocide. Said, that's not what I think. I'm he he said round up, didn't he? Specifically, Wait. and executions of trans like people. I don't think for consequences of pushing down that road. Meaning that if this is just step one to 10 years from now, like police doing mass roundups and executions of trans people. Okay, so he says specifically mass roundups and executions. What this implies is that there are meetings of police officers and SWAT teams who are sitting in a meeting and one of them has the big whiteboard and he's telling him <laughs> this is what a trans person looks like. And he cuts through all the slides. Yeah. This is how you can tell. We, we've got all the people with picker avatars from Twitter. We've got yes. their addresses. Let's go get them. Well, and, and Doomer, like, to my knowledge, there's only one state that tried to enact what you're talking about. They tried to say no Obama. kids are allowed to transition. It was Texas. And Fosh never brings that example up, even though it would be his, technically it would be his strongest example. Though I guess it would also be undermined because a Texas state court blocked it on the grounds that it's probably going to be unconstitutional. So, well, that that's probably why he doesn't bring it up. Yeah, I guess. But that so, but that's the problem with this conversation. He never brings up the specific legislation he's talking about. That's like the one step away from enacting the LGBT genocide. Well, I think right now well, the legislation they're bringing up is I think in Florida they're trying to remove trans people from the ability to do like Medicaid type stuff. Oh, okay. That... Uh, I don't know if he knows that example or not, but yeah. I mean it. it... Like, it's a problem if you think that he's trying to make a persuasive argument to a neutral and biased observer, but I don't think that's ever what he's trying yeah, to do, not. really. He's preaching I to think he, an extremist audience now. Is his yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Seems that way with this kind of genocide talk. You generally want to lead up to that. Yeah, well. Ooh. I don't know. I, you don't want to go up there. Just, just jump the in. joke is that you don't. Is that you, 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 you don't. Yeah, jo joke, sure, Rags. Yeah. I don't oh, think yeah, Republican right, right, politicians right. would care. <laughs> they will lead all the way down that road and back. I do not think they care that much. Uh, it doesn't really matter the degree of sincerity they have on this issue uh -huh. um, because this kindergarten to third grade thing is only a stepping stone to any elementary or middle school, to any schooling or public institution at all. I don't know. I, I don't know. That, that's, that doesn't seem like some crazy and reasonable thing to say, to, to make distinctions between younger kids and older kids, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think a Tra lot of people, Transitioning? Yeah. Yeah, like, of course. It, really yeah, you many should issues. make distinctions. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's necessarily a 
it, to jump to oh this is just their stepping stone to the whole kit and caboodle is i don't know there's i think that both sides and pretty much everyone can agree that there is some line in between the young and the old that we could sort of put some line on somewhere i i, I think it, i think it's reasonable to do so i think the only thing is that if we're talking about a line that should be put there um they, then the line should I feel like the line should just be decided medically. I don't like the idea of like state legislators trying to figure this out. Like why? Why not just leave it up to hospitals? Uh, like it feels like a conversation to have between like a doctor, a patient, and then like a child if they're involved. And that should be it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, how do you feel though about there being sort of ideological capture around the therapeutic industry and the medical industry around trans issues? Like there really aren't unbiased doctors the doctors that are in this space are really political actors um i mean yeah that could be a case but then you fix the political institution you don't bring in another political institution to regulate it right because political capture obviously describes our political system too right like because doctors sure. might be political the state legislature is going to make these decisions um and then also even if there is some amount of political capture i would still want the right as a parent to make these choices irregardless of some state legislature like if there's a decision that needs to be made medically between me and my child and a doctor i don't want desantis standing in between me and my doctor and my child's health like i just i would never ever ever imagine um, any parent would want to have to deal with that but but if you had let's say you had christian conservatives pitching affirmation care as like a way to deal with homosexuality obviously we would jump in and say no that's wrong <laughs> right i mean well sitch, well, sitch wouldn't but <laughs> what i, just, Sorry, you're, I you're just you were just echoing a little bit there um i, mean, I just I feel think like that if, once you hit like certain levels of like evidence for things i think it's okay to say that this is something that uh, like shouldn't it. be done anymore so like let's say that it was the case that we were a bit further along in the future and we were to see that like hey like these types of trans healthcare things don't actually help um then then yeah we would say like okay well maybe this isn't something that should be you know recommended for um people but i would still hope it would come from the medical institutions and not like legislatively but right well this the state does i mean medical licensing boards and stuff like that they're somewhat state regulated right I mean, sooner or later, the state gets involved. Um, does the state get involved in approving medical I guess you could argue like the FDA kind of does. Sure, that's a um, state organization but, as but well. But still, the like, FDA the, runs like Consumer Protection Agency is a... Yeah, but these things run kind of independently. Like you, you might nominate like a head, but it's not like we're taking votes in the Senate to decide... Yeah, it's state adjacent. Right. Yeah. Well, I think you go and, to the Consumer Protection Agency. If you... And, and this is with any operation. If you have an operation that you don't get informed consent on you know you got a doctor that's just like oh this is going to change your life it's going to be great and it turns out to be terrible uh then you would go to the consumer protection agency i believe to say listen i didn't get informed consent i'm suing this doctor yeah, would it, would medical it be malpractice get, true yeah for, from a doctor especially because hospitals in that whole field is probably very very they're used to having those kinds of considerations maybe more so than the government would it be easier it, to get that kind of restitution in whatever form it is from a hospital or a medical organization than it would be from something that maybe the government has more fingers in this this is why i think the informed consent is where this battle is really going to be fought and i think this is why so many of the trans doctors are ideologically captured because i don't i don't i think like sensible surgeons probably see this coming down the road and they just mm -hmm. it's like a nightmare for them i i, I don't how do you give someone informed consent when there's such little research on something like this? I just think a lot of legal wrangling is going to be coming down the line in the near future. I mean, you, I mean, you can tell people that like stuff is experimental, right? I think wasn't that something that Trump actually legalized? I thought people, I thought conservatives praised him for it. I think Trump made it so that if you were facing like life or death circumstances, you had an easier time accessing experimental medication. Um, right. I mean, like, what is the informed consent around that? You know, like. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's part of the case. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's the case that they're making in trans issues. They're definitely saying, you know, your your son or daughter is suicidal. Therefore, they are somewhat in a terminally ill situation and therefore promoting. Yeah, I think we, the left needs to get away from that shit because it's cancerous to 
conversations that the constant like they're all going to kill themselves if we don't approve everything right now this has to be the case or they're all killing they're all suicide like that the left needs to move away from that messaging because it's really i agree 100 i I totally agree going to they they can't though because that's kind of the medical justification for everything that follows well the medical justification doesn't have to be you're gonna fucking kill yourself right like giving children amphetamines is relatively controversial but like adhd doesn't make people commit suicide right right but if like to my not, I think the puberty blockers and a lot of the cross sex hormones and a lot of this stuff is still, you know, it's not FDA approved. It's all off label. And the justification for it is like, well, it's better than dev. And as long as that's the criteria, it makes it very easy for yeah, any I mean, of the stuff to be justified. You don't want medically. them to die, do you? If people are right. saying that, I would disagree with that. But it doesn't have to just be death. There's a lot of other markers we can look at for like improved quality of life um, sure. that are going to be important as well, I think. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree it would be better if they moved away from it. I just, Mm -hmm. I don't think they will because I think it it serves too much. It it benefits the medical conversation too much to justify what's kind of going on unquestioningly. To, you know, um, uh, 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 the um, Speak Up Anti-Grooming Act where they establish a hotline to um, inform the state if a parent is found to be queer in any way, shape, or form, uh, because there's a higher risk, according to their data, um, of abuse to their children. Um, and is, is that true? No, no, no. He's he's saying there's he's oh, it's, predicting it's, okay. there's going to be uh, narking okay. <laughs> on people for being gay or queer. Essentially, my, my bad. That just sounded pretty well. Then the police <laughs> show up, and you know, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes. So yeah. Um, that's why they're focusing on it. It has nothing to do with harm reduction. It has nothing to do with protecting kids. Republican politicians love raping kids. That's like one of their top things next to cutting taxes. Uh, they're hugely in favor of it. Uh, well, you're laughing, so that obviously seems like hyperbole, right? Well, I mean, it's well known. You know, Republicans are in favor of raping kids, right? <laughs> you know? Jesus. I, just, I think it's funny that Vosh does everything in this video that he accuses Republicans of doing. Like he basically says, all Republicans do is scare. Well, isn't isn't Vosh the embodiment of it's okay when we do it? I guess so. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You have to keep in mind for a lot of these people, um, I say on the left, but it's true on the right as well. When it comes to politics, people will lay out like a set of principles that they believe in. Like we should do this or we shouldn't treat people like this. But when they look at their opponents, they view their enemies, their ideological enemies as actually being evil. So yes. like those same rules don't apply, you know, like obviously we should treat people with respect, blah, 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 but this person is engaged in an evil, action yeah. that is actually like an aggressive attack against me. So therefore I can act in this manner, you know? Yeah, I don't care calling people evil. Right. No, but that's, I mean, that's the classic. Doomer, you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> Unironically <laughs> evil, maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, it Special is, cases. It's just the, yeah. The, the, yeah just. Doomer is the author of the, famously of the, Vosh is unironically evil video. So that's why that's funny. I've heard you... of that. Yeah, I've heard of that video. Okay, yeah. so it's that a was just. Video. So now we'll move on. Oh, to wait, the is next. that. Are you the Doomer? Are you that Doomer? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yes. the Doomer, doomer yes. Oh, I'm surprised so... you didn't know that. Oh, I, didn't, I don't know if I've ever <laughs> it's a heard different you talk Doomer. Before. Okay. Did you cover yeah. that video, Destiny? Yeah, we watched the whole thing. It's a thing, a, of course. It's a great video. Yeah, Vosh <laughs> totally lost his shit over it. I then... thought you were a different stoat. <laughs> Well, he wasn't a stoat back then. He was the Wojak Doomer, so. Yes. Yeah. But yes, and then he was like, you know, I really want Vosh to hate me, so I'm going to put a monocle in my avatar. <laughs> Just Is to Vosh convince everyone. Against, against this, was, this was a Is top troll. Deep, this was a top the deep troll. lore I'm not aware of? Well, it, you know, it makes him a rich bougie. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Totally. There is, there, there is a bunch of cringe Twitter drama you don't need to get into, but everybody was calling me an elitist when I'm like a fucking... 99th percentile economic left socked him. Um, yeah. so I was like, fuck it, lean into it. <laughs> Put a so miss on my the, uh, you missed the opportunity to give yourself the little, you know, the, the big, long Cruella DeVille cigarette holder thing? You need to have one of those <laughs> to really go all the way. I only associate those with Cruella DeVille. I don't know what they're really called. C- CT, get on it. He would have to go with a 16 behind nine avatar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know her lighter is like a little dragon, right? They went, they went full evil with her. I can, I'll call Cruella Deville evil. I, I will, I will take that lead. Wow. What Very I, bold. what, what I meant was Vosh is definitely scaring his voters to the polls in the same way that they always accuse Republicans of. 
Republicans are just fear mongers. They just want to scare you to the polls. That's all they care about. All this manufactured outrage. When Vosh is basically saying here, they're going to round you all up and execute you. Mm-hmm. That's, how is that any different? I mean, that's kind of that's like politics 101 these days, right? It's like everything is genocidal. Everything is an existential threat. Everything is on the verge of like killing and destroying everybody. Like that's just kind of how people. Yes, but I don't that. like that. No, yeah, it's I really bad. Like it's bad. All. It's bad. Yeah. But. How do you have a conversation with someone when they are basically accusing you of being a mass murderer before well, you, you even talk to them? You can't. But that's that's evil. the point. That's the point is that you can't like it, it self selects in people who are. Just completely unwilling to have conversations with people. Let's who label and dismiss. Them. You know, if we label them as a thing, we don't have to talk to them. We don't have to engage with them because we've already labeled and defined them as being this thing that can't be reasoned with and they're evil. Mm-hmm. To be mm-hmm. fair, yeah, but you see Republicans will do this on the other side, right? Like all trans people are I'm groomers. Sure. Teachers that talk about these things are trying to like groom kids into doing things that pedophiles like it's all the same shit. Everybody plays these games. I don't necessarily think that's true, though. I think the groomer thing is kind of political payback for being called racist nazi homophobes for the last six years i mean they you can say finally that, but like, hit on something conservatives have been calling gay people groomers for the past like 20 or 30 years that's been well so, a stereotype some, since some the 60s are, but it, of gay guy well yeah but i'm saying it's been a stereotype of gay people for a long time that they're just trying to like find children to molest like that's home, been a- home but that, destiny that's the homophobes of the and definitely the homophobes on the right are doing that indiscriminately right we can't, just say, are... we can't just say it's a minority when it took a little boy dying of AIDS from a blood transfusion to finally get Republicans to care about AIDS, right? Like, it was a pretty mainstream opinion of the I mean, Republican this Party. Is, you're talking, what is that, 30 years ago, 40 years ago? We're, I mean, I'm talking about today. When was this blood transfusion thing? Was that before I was born? Um, the... Um... What's his name? I Ryan mean, that's Hart? probably in I'm the just 80s. Saying, right? I'm just saying that when you're, AIDS You're was talking a about thing, the 80s? I'm just saying that when a well, because you were saying well, you can't it, bring up an example from 40 years ago. I'm talking about now. No, no, I understand what you're talking about, but you're saying like, well, this is payback for this. And what I'm saying is like this kind of quote unquote payback right. goes back a long time. But like, I would the, like yeah. I would like to think that the Republican Party has worked on its homophobia in the last 40 years. I, I mean, I don't see conservatives uh, being the bit. party of homophobia anymore. Yeah, so I think that much. example. I would agree. Is just, yeah, we've we've moved so left I, like yeah. socially for sure. But, mm-hmm. I'm, but there I'm, are only still, I'm only responding there are, to you saying that like this was payback for this. And I'm saying, yeah, but the payback has been going back and forth for a long time. There, sure, are, yeah, still, but it's, it, there it, are still homophobes in the Republican Party, okay? But I think right. they're very, very rare in this day and age. And that's the good thing, I would well, say. Well, I, I would say these things do go back and forth. It's sort of like, you know, okay, so... They're calling the they're calling the left groomers now, and then the left was calling them racist before then, and before then, the Republicans were calling communists. Democrats, communist, yeah, you know, they made liberal a dirty word and basically associated with communists. So I mean, yeah, these things continue, you know, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Right. But what I what I am saying is, there are a bunch of rank and file Republicans who are like, I'm not homophobic, I'm not transphobic, I'm not racist. But they're being called racist, Nazi, homophobes every single day. And if you say to yourself, listen, they're mislabeling me, then you're going to be more inclined to start mislabeling them groomers. And where you had at one point, only the homophobes would be using this terminology. Now you have so many people who are just moderates who are like, yeah, they've been lying about me forever. So now I'm going to lie about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't I'm not doing this. I'm not going out calling people groomers. I'm just saying that morally speaking, they it, it's become kind of a tip for tat thing. Yeah, I mean, so, I would and, agree with that. Yeah, of course. And, well, I, yeah, but I do believe, and they 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 are saying this now. They're trying to say anybody who uses what's the term happening groomer right is now, a homophobe. Yes, which I don't believe that's remotely true. So. You don't believe? Wait, say that last thing again. They're they're trying to say the Voshes of the world are trying to say right now that anybody who calls anybody a groomer is a homophobe. Um, a homophobe, no, but the, the, I mean, it is, it, it is really weird. If you're using like groomer, like, I don't know if a lot of people even know what groomer means. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it feels like an, it feels like a reiteration of like prior attacks on LGBT people to just call people Dude. like Oops. groomers. It's kind of strange. Unless I'm so you glad actually see somebody grooming, right? I'm well, so glad we're having this of... conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause destiny, it seems like you don't, you're not in the know about the groomer thing. Since you want to, well, no, I'll just say it's it's weird because, to my knowledge, the per- the first person that really pushed the groomer label was James Lindsay, and he meant it specifically in this kind of uh, specific context that he's arguing that a lot of the 
the queer theory stuff is sort of independent of gay rights and trans rights and is used to deconstruct, you know, liberalism and normative values and, and all that stuff. And he did mean it in a somewhat, he, he, he talked about how the idea was to sexualize children, not in order to, you know, have sex with underage children, but was to, that sexualizing them for some reason would open them up to basically being able to, to be more willing to accept sort of, uh, you know, socialist Marxist rhetoric and ideology. And when he was talking about grooming, he meant it in a kind of political way. And that was, to me, I think that's really how it started. So that's obviously- pretty been- big, So we're assuming that the whole reason why people are pushing for certain types of LGBT stuff is to get children more in line with being able to accept Marxist no. in the future? Or- no, no. Well, first of all, I don't think that's what's going on. I think, the, I think he's only referring to, and what I would agree with, is that the academic literature behind it, that's the intention. And then it gets picked up by people because they feel like, you know, they're continuing the civil rights movement, basically. Well, I mean, it feels kind of like equivocation, like a Mott and Bailey, right? Because you can, you know, you can call someone a groomer and you mean they're like fucking kids. That's the intention that you have. And if someone calls well, you, you're like, oh, I don't that's mean that. Definitely, I just mean yeah, I'm not going to deny that. I'm going to agree with you that that's definitely happening. And that's part of the power of labeling people a groomer is that it, it kind of allows that, that, uh, meaning of like oh you're a pedophile then when someone says oh you're you're a homophobe you're calling all gay people pedophiles they can kind of smug lay pep smug pepe face be like oh no actually i'm just talking about political grooming and i understand that's all happening but i think there's some truth to the label well so tr- some, label? some truth meaning that acad- i mean like so like in academic circles certain ideologies are pushed to groom children to be more uh, warm towards Marxist ideology in the future. Is that like the, that's where you're saying it's applicable or? Yeah, I think, I think it is, I think it is political grooming. And I think if they want to be more specific, they should say that, but obviously they want to have that incendiary pedophile implication. Well, it feels, I mean, it feels kind of to me like how racism went from being, you know, having malice for people of different races to like you support society. And Systemic society, racism. Yeah. Well, right. n- n- no, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I just mean the, like the equivocation of changing the underlying um, representation of what a word means. Yeah, like what, a, a if we were to ask amount. the average conservative what grooming means, I, I, out of a hundred people surveyed, how many do you think would give that academic answer? Because I would guess oh, less like, than two. I, very, very few. Yes. Yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. So anyway, we'll move on to the the second the second lead into the debate mm-hmm. for the Vosh video. Okay, listen up, people. I, I understand the Pro-life the urge to engage subject. in sociological analysis, but first and foremost, it is critical to understand the fact What's that on his ear? Did Republicans he get a are demons. Um, That's his marshmallow. Had, uh, surgery to remove. It's it's a uh, bandage because he has keloids on his ears. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So this video is called uh, "Why Pro Life Republicans Want You to Suffer," and this was immediately after the Roe v. Wade leak, I believe. Okay. I I understand the the urge to engage in sociological analysis, but first and foremost, it is critical to understand urge, yes. the fact that Republicans <laughs> are demons wearing human flesh. Uh, you know, you can fault Democrats for being incompetent or maliciously incompetent. I mean, and you can, and you should, by the way, you, it, I encourage you to. Um, but most Democrats, you know, I don't feel they're actual envoys of Satan wearing human Man, flesh. Republicans, however, this is a requirement for entry. And I want I, I'd like to I'd like to point out really quickly. People said I was being hyperbolic about his rhetoric, so. Wow, man, what a great <laughs> are we clip. responding to chat now? Because I have a lot. Hey, you made your video too early. <laughs> yeah, oh, what shit. the fuck, Doomer? Yeah. You need a part two. Get busy. Should, should have learned it. Sorry, fuck yeah, I know. Uh, are we responding to chat to now? Because if so, I've got I've got a lot of things I could say. No, I'm just fucking with you. But okay. To I muted you, Destiny, chat? just to avoid the echo. So. Yeah, I got you. Sorry. Yeah. Somehow, I th- I know that it has to do with the watch together. I feel like if you left the watch together and came back in, you might it, it might fix it. So, okay. Wait, do you want to leave it unmuted and see if it echoes again? And then if it does, I'll just keep muting. It does. It is. Oh, echoing. it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how. Good question. All right. Well, I'll mute. Usually, we're used to dealing with professionals here. You have me. open people back, who've streamed uh, more than once. So. Well, the th- something is happening with the watch together window. <laughs> that I don't use this watch together thing, but like I can look on Zoom and I see that my thing's not lighting up, so I can't be leaking audio in there. But also, I don't have my microphone approved for. But Zoom, the if you enter the watch together room 
incorrectly, somehow you can talk through the watch together room. Okay, I'll refresh so, it. We'll see if that does anything. Yeah. What's happened? Okay, I refresh it. You can tell me if it does anything there. But See, I heard it. I heard my voice come through the watch together room. Oh, yeah, you could toggle your microphone on the watch together. Yeah. Yeah, do the, yeah, mute yourself in the watch together room. Activate your microphone, click on that button, and go block. Smash that mic button. Oh, it, it okay, it shows a, a symbol when you're activated, so he was not speaking through watch together. That wasn't yeah, the issue. Yeah, so I've got, he didn't have the I issue turned it on and I Oh, it there, isn't? But... Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it's going through, maybe the watch together is going through your speakers into your room or something, and you're hearing it in your headphones and in your room. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, try one more time. If it echoes, I'll just keep muting myself in here. I want it to be known, and I talked about this a little bit on Twitter, but I think it's very important to insist on this. A anti-abortion, pro-forced birth. Yeah, I can hear it yeah, bouncing okay, right off that wall in back of you. Well, I see it echoing now. I don't know. Okay, I'll just mute myself. Go for it. There's a little tinny sound coming off the saxophone. Uh, tinny, don't say that word. Birth advocates, do not give a single shit about the unborn. This can be evidenced in a variety of ways. First of all, I will say as uh, as someone who who grew up Catholic and was surrounded by them for much of my life, they they absolutely do care whether yeah. you agree with it or not. They they <laughs> they really they really do, do care. Of they care a lot. They do. Yeah, they do. What are two very basic common sense policies that everyone who sincerely cares about fetuses would support? Anyone who doesn't want abortions, right? Do we need to guess and then see how our guesses compare with? Sure, him? Rags. You got a guess? Uh, I'll have to put myself in, in the the Vouch mindset. Uh, it already tastes terrible. My condolences. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. With him, I actually don't know. I was thinking that we maybe we could pull pull some together, make a game of it. But I legit. It's got to be. It's got to be like uh, like child after care. It's like if you if you welfare don't, something like that, free yeah, baby about, formula, something that he would think everybody would agree on, which is tough because you want to think that it's crazy, but he also thinks Republicans are Satan. So, um, I'm gonna go with abortions allowed after second trimester, and. Uh, mandatory or, or like <laughs> big what? What? Was, how does how is that? That's I a, don't that's know. A policy. I don't know that's how why he thinks. But, I don't know how this person for me. I don't know. Rags, we're using our brains today. Okay. <laughs> no, we, we have to. We have to role play not doing that. So, oh, that's that's true. And that's true. Then he thinks. Oh, I, I got you. That, you're right. No, obviously it's going to be some sort of child care. Or, I think so. Or yeah. free college, or who knows what he's going to say. Yeah, free child. Ooh, he might go into free college too. Yeah, sure. Wait, are we talking yeah. about why why he's going to say they're anti-child or what? No, why why they don't really he's care? He's going to say Republicans are would be in favor of if they actually cared about fetuses. Oh, sure. I mean, like these are going to be super standard like Democrat arguments, not even wild ones. Is that like Republicans care about a child until the moment it comes out of the womb, and then they're opposed to things like welfare right. or opposed to anything that would help like further along the life of a child after they've been born, of course, right? Right. Free right. child care. Yeah. You guys are you missing the two? obvious one. What? So we'll say it. Tell us. Well, you'll see. I've, okay. I've watched this video. Okay. Before. Thanks. You would Such want access cheat. to free contraception free because contraception. you want every birth to be deliberate because if it's not deliberate, that increases the likelihood of abortion. Of course, that completely goes against Catholicism, but who cares about their free religion, right? They probably don't care about their religion at all. <laughs> what a, what a dumb well, it's more just, I mean, the right's just against, you know, public funding as much as possible anyway, generally. Yeah, but they're not going to say, they're not going to give up their principles. What kind of person says, oh, here, let me give up my principles. I mean, here. I will say that, like, the majority of religious people are having premarital sex and stuff. It, I, mm -hmm. I do think it's a little bit strange. If you're so opposed to abortions, why wouldn't you be pushing, con like, contraception is bad and it's a sin, but it's probably better than murdering a baby in the womb, right? Because they, because they can't do it because of their principles. They would look like hypocrites and they know that. So, you know, on the down low, they'll promote it, but they're not going to come out and support a bill in there Congress. Are, well, sure, I guess, I but then it makes it harder to feel like you have a principled stance towards protecting fetuses. Like now your they're, principled stance is gonna be more like aligned towards following whatever religious idea you have more so. No, they just circumvent it by saying abstinence only. That's why they That's why they are only. in the abstinence only position. Yeah, yeah I know it doesn't work. work. Right? <laughs> I know it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't matter though that it doesn't work as long as they maintain 
their principles. Well, that's I don't what even, they're I don't worried think they about. Need, I don't even think they need to push absence only. I mean, people can buy condoms. Right. You know, people that's can what, get condoms, you know, relatively easily. That's Most what I'm can. saying. Every every Catholic family in America is telling their kids secretly, use condoms. <laughs> well, I think but they're not going to support people, a bill. A lot of religious people are that they, they do have that bit of a if they want to do it, then that's their their right to sin or something like that. There, there is a probably enough of them to where it's a sizable chunk where if it, as long as it doesn't cross particularly strong lines, which I don't think contraception does for a lot of them, they mm -hmm. would be all right with. It's fine if it's out there, but we we don't like it. Uh, well, right to do it. There's also there's a difference too between saying like if someone wants to use a condom that's up to them versus saying like, oh, my tax dollars are going to be yeah, yeah, paying for this. Yeah. Nothing yeah, but I mean, that's, that's really it's make a difference. Because that one, you're paying one way or another. <laughs> you're either going to no, pay I, yeah, the, yeah, 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 they, I, I understand like consequentially, yeah. but I'm saying like the way people perceive it, the whole situation. Yeah, yeah I know. Imagine it, yeah. Factually, nothing lips people out of poverty like capitalism. Do you think Vosh is going to go? No, I was going to say capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> You think Vosh is willing to abandon his principles just because that's a fact? Of course not. Well, he's not he going to accept care. that as a fact in the first place. Right. Yeah, of course. And you want prenatal care. Those are the two big ones. Sex ed as well. No, three big ones. Sex ed, prenatal care, subsidized by the government, free. Uh, you know. I got that one right, by the way. The way civilized Good countries job. do. Uh, and uh, access to contraception. Republicans support none of these. In fact, they're opposed to all. Got them. Proof. <laughs> Proof. All three. Republicans are against uh, access to uh, contraception. They are against sex against education. Access and they to are it? Against. I, don't know. I don't know about they're against access yeah. to it. Yeah. Don't you know that? The Republican Party hates condoms. <laughs> Well, and okay. To be fair, he did say provided free by the government. Okay, they are against. Now that. he's saying, yeah. He, also, I think a lot access. of Republicans would actually say they don't want like like teenagers have no business accessing contraception. Or at least I've heard my mom say this a ton, and I feel like I've heard other Republicans okay. say that like you know like they shouldn't even be for, for teenagers. You're encouraging them to have sex and stuff. Maybe it depends on the flavor of Republican you're talking to. But. Maybe, yeah. I think the I mean, Republican this party is, this has is come a long way. Mostly true. Well, yeah, but do we focus on like what we think? like boomer parents are saying or do we focus on what the party is actually pushing for i mean the party is more productive but yeah totally party against against um the uh, uh, uh any kind of I, 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 I what happened to vosh what 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 happened to vosh here vosh used to be no verbal ticks none of this none of this verbal garbage what happened i feel like the confidence um, level here has been eviscerated he I, needs I, to I, ameliorate I, his oratory as the, yeah. as the preeminent expert on vosh videos i disagree with that vosh do you realize <laughs> that you're speaking do you do you realize you're doing public speaking right here then all this oh, uh, you're being <laughs> too you're being well doomer's saying that he was always like this he, he did just it. edited clips he did Plus it it's it fucking before. hard it's all, I, if i go back and listen to myself talking i sound like a fucking moron so like i don't know well, edit that, that shit out. What do you mean go back? Positive changes to our healthcare system. They do not care what is prenatal care. Care for a, like a pregnant, you know, like making sure the womb's healthy and everything. Um, making sure everything's going on. I didn't well. know they didn't. They do not care, okay? The reason they care is because they want to control women. That is it. That is at the end of the day, that is it. Okay. This is that's, I, that's I, always that's never Why is this so stuck like with me? This is so dumb because there's so many people. I mean, I'm pro-choice, but there's so many people that are pro-life, and they, for whatever reason, they really have strong feelings about you know protecting the life of the child. It's, I've never heard this you know mythical Republican be like, "Listen, I don't give a fuck about fetuses. I just want to make sure well, that women." Not, he's not making you know, the argument lockdown. that they don't like actually not care about fetuses. He's making the argument that like consequentially through the policies that they enforce, that they're essentially like implicitly condoning you know more abortions happening rather than explicitly saying i don't care about the life of the fetus right no he no i don't think that's what he's he said they, they, they just want to control women 
they don't care about the feelings. I know, that's I what he just said. Time about, yeah, I, he like, did, he gets right into weird territory there as well, for sure. But I mean, I, I think that there are like it's it's always been like a classic question of conservatives. Although apparently we're not allowed to talk about all conservatives, but it's always been like a classic question of conservatives where it's like, okay, <laughs> oh, you guys no. want less abortions? We know how to do this. You do it through sex ed and you do it through contraception. And both mm-hmm. of these things are things that historically, at least, conservatives have been dramatically opposed to. Like like they'll die on the cross of like not having sex ed, like good sex ed for kids or contraceptives available to teenagers. So I mean, I think it's a fair thing to point out but well, yeah he gets into some weird territory later where it's like oh well it's do, just about controlling does anyone, bodies well, and stuff right does anyone really like the average person really look at politics in that like logical consequentialist way because i don't think that they usually just rely on their you know their moral feelings to guide them well that's that's the thing is yeah like, of course uh, yeah no I, so but I, that's I, what i, I mean like so it's not like like republicans are being hypocritical or in that they're not supporting sex ed because that would reduce, you know, teenage pregnancy. It's just they're not even thinking about that from that consequentialist lens. They're like, well, I'm against teenage pregnancies. I'm against sex ed for all these moral reasons. Right. I mean, I think it's I think it's fair to say that they have a position that's like pretty stupid considering what you would expect to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like your stated priorities do not line up with your policy objectives. You know what what you're proposing? Yeah, that's is like not going to accomplish. Her. Okay, yeah, but that's I think fair. this is like you can, you can people, call them out for being dumb as yeah, fuck. It is are. dumb. You people, can, sure. people, people will criticize it, but it's like it's kind of like Democrats who say they want more affordable housing, or progressives who say they want more affordable housing, and then they dick ride the fuck out of rent control, which is like one of the dumbest policies of all time. Like, True. So, so people right. will hey, argue. People can argue something like, "Oh, okay, well, like, do you really care about rents? Because it doesn't seem like it, because you're pushing for policies that don't help." So, I mean, like, you could say, like, "Oh, are you saying they don't care about rent?" Well, no, they do care about rent, but it's just like the policies that they're pushing aren't affecting the thing that they're trying to to change. So it just seems kind of strange. I think that's like kind of they, the overall they point. They think it's yeah. working or they feel they have to go a particular route. If you're a conservative and you have a lot of Christian influence and you're like you're, you're a strong Christian, right? You might want certain goals, but automatically, to you at least, it, it locks off certain opportunities that you can use to get to that goal because of a, a moral reason or a religious reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To the conservative women having sex outside of the socially ordained divinely ordained controlled format of a monogamous marriage is sinful it is degenerate and the the primary agent of this degeneracy is of course the woman now republicans don't care that much if guys sleep around you know this is very basic slut sh- slut shaming logic right like you know you can talk about no, monogamy all you want, dirty. but when guys sleep around, it's like, hey, you know, and if girls sleep around, they get shamed and like kicked out of their social circles in a lot of conservative places in like the Bible Belt. Destiny, is that the case? You went to Catholic school. Did all, were all the guys I mean, they'll, like they'll always tell you that like nobody should have premarital sex. But like socially speaking, it's always kind of like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you're a guy and you manage to do it. But I mean, like they'll always really? tell you that like, yeah, of course. maybe among your friends, but not around. Like try telling that to your Sunday school teacher. Oh, I'm going to go. I get mean, to your Sunday school weekend. teacher, but I'm thinking more in terms of like how fathers and um, mothers like relate to their children. I think even in early like um, sitcoms, you would see this kind of thing where like the daughters are super protected um, and, and the sons are kind of like, you shouldn't do that. But like, oh, good job, son, you know? Um, not, not like explicitly, but I mean, like, there's also a difference in terms of like the consequence of both as well, right? Like your daughter sleeping around gets pregnant and that's like a whole thing versus your son is sleeping around and doesn't get pregnant. Sure. You know? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and obviously there's different, you know, reproductive strategies that are available to men and women, you know, just because of how we evolved. But I, I don't, I, I don't do. think yeah. that there's some broad feeling no, I didn't grow up in the Bible Belt, but I would assume there's not a broad feeling among the Bible Belt that's basically like telling guys to go fuck around and telling women that it's they have not. To, but you're never going to see the pussy. same type of charge against sure. promiscuous men as you will against promiscuous women, where promiscuous right. women are like essentially devalued whores that have no value left to offer a man in a relationship. Whereas like promiscuous men are like, well, you shouldn't have done that. You know, that was kind of sinful. Do some penance. You know, sure. That's, that a, just that's an emergent sort of aspect of just the a woman is pregnant and she has the baby. It, um, I, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, I don't think it's just that, but I mean, there's a lot of potential things you could go into for why people treat that the way that they do. It just, there's, there's a lot there. Yeah. Like men maybe are perceived more as the, you go and you, know, you go get women and women are to be had in that. Yeah. There's like the chaser sense. chasey thing, right? It's like the, what's the old kind of like meme saying is that like a, a box that's unlocked by any key is a shitty lock. A, a key that unlocks any lock is a master key, right? Like that's it's just... like these types of sayings. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> like, there's a lot of reasons why people believe the things that they do. It's not just going to be religious or just cultural or just evolutionary. There's a whole bunch that kind of like plays into it. You know? Oh, I, I think it is just evolutionary. I think the 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 uh, the analogy that you're using there is just to illustrate the to to basically articulate the intuitions around the the evolutionary reasoning because it all goes back to paternity uncertainty. Like the man doesn't necessarily know if the child is his and the woman always knows any child that comes out of her is hers. Sure, it's just not, it's not very yeah. interesting to say something like everything is evolutionary because I mean like technically that's true. It's like saying everything is biological because without biology we wouldn't exist. I mean that's kind of true too, right? Right. But I mean like there are, there are we're going to have evolutionary tendencies and then culturally we're going to pick and choose which things we exaggerate past the yeah, normal which point of exaggeration. Press. Sure, okay. cu cultural evolution is, is, a th is a real thing. Yeah. I would argue that the reason, the, I, I would argue that all of cultural evolution serves biological evolution. Otherwise, it, the culture would die out because if the if the people perpetuating the culture don't continue themselves, then the culture dies just as a point of logic. I mean, no, it just, nobody's using it, that it's culture. It's like a hedge that you can trim. In you have to be really careful where you go with that because, like, what, like, should type one diabetics be allowed to live? Right, because these no. are people that have no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Never, okay. I, you know what? You win that debate. Never well, mind. no, uh, but I, I'm, not, I'm not. Didn't I'm expect not you to bite the bullet on that one, but all right, yeah. I'm Someone's not making that it. argument, and I, I, I would I would go further than that, Destiny, because if like our culture uh, is one that we protect people like the type one diabetic, right? And I mean, you have a perfect example in someone like Stephen Hawking, which in you know three thousand years ago, until the Hun would have you know just pushed him off the cliff, right? But since we've kept uh, him, he's. Uh, been a major contributor to our society well, in ways that that's just our culture has recognized that you can get great deal of value from people who maybe aren't physically yes physically yes but that yes, is a, that is part of our culture but in a way but now well, but now you have transcended the biological into the cultural right because now you're arguing that like because theoretically th this is why society is so complicated theoretically we can say the goal of any gene is to like propagate itself right that's what genes are supposed to do they copy and they copy sure themselves. yes that's what they do right sustain yeah yes it might be the case that there are some negative strategies that in a microcosm seem to not work well, but in a macrocosm yeah, actually yeah. end up working well because of how we socialize with each other. So this is, I don't know by, I don't know where we're at on this. I don't know if we can ever know the thing about this, but like I've heard it suggested that evolutionarily speaking, there might be an advantage to having gay people in groups of people. Even though gay people don't propagate their genes, having some number of gay people present in a society allows for more caretakers that you don't yeah, have to worry about actors. competing with for um, uh, reproduction purposes, right? So that's an example yeah. of like, it seems like a very negative reproductive strategy, being gay, but having some of these people might give that society more advantage than another one where every single member is competing for reproductive purposes, right? That, that's just like an example of like, a, like where things can be start to become socially exaggerated, or it's hard to say one-to-one, -one, this is evolution, and this is society or whatever, because all of these are, things are like interwoven with each other. Well, that's You're that's right. a huge aspect of any evolutionary talk, whether it's cultural or particularly biological, is that you got to operate on these very large scales a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, isolated stuff doesn't always... And, and and you're yeah, talking about multi-level selection. You're talking about selection at the level of the individual and also selection at the level of the group. Familiar. Well, so that obviously, it too, yeah. Was yeah. that, uh, was it Brett call his lineage selection? Lineage selection. Right. Yeah. Versus the yeah, individual selection. Which we're, we're going to have him on to talk about that because he keeps talking about it, but not really. No one's digging in. And, <laughs> so, right. Well, no, yeah. I mean, I think the reason the evolutionary stuff comes up when we're like watching Vosh or another, I guess, leftist is that they primarily ignore any of the biological tendencies that kind of view people as these blank slates and then all this stuff is just culture kind of being foisted upon people forcing them down these pathways which i don't think you're going to get the outcomes you want if you have that view when it's really culture is kind of trying to supplement or sublimate these evolutionary tendencies in pro-social ways and you have to kind of understand it and look at it in that way if you want to enact positive change in societies. Yeah, it's the and exact if you want to build better institutions. Yeah, Go ahead, Dustin. It's the exact same thing. Like when you want to make government policy to alleviate some issues around poverty, you cannot ignore market forces. If you do that, right. you're going to True. miss so much and you can't, you're not going to be able to account for everything that's going on. It's the same thing when we talk about social things. You can't just try to enact social policies or change culture in a way and completely ignore like biological realities because 
then you get into weird areas where we're saying Never that like those. you know like Kobe Bryant should be able to identify as a woman who played the WNBA the next day or something right like you can't, you, sure. can't, you have to you have to have some grounding here in what is factually that, true yeah right well i mean that's what lysenkoism was and why it was such a disaster yeah wait are you telling me you believe in genes <laughs> <What>? <laughs> girls will lose everything if they're accused of being a slut and guys by the same i mean we're talking about divine social standards here right you'd think it'd go both ways but of course it doesn't it's about controlling women and i, I mean men have an intuition that they don't anywhere? like yeah i mean neither well no and, uh, let me rephrase it men do like slutty women a lot but they don't think not to raise their child gonna, yeah they don't think i'm gonna make this woman my wife yeah they right. think this is for tonight yeah. right Maybe, exactly. although I don't even know if that's true, because it seems like if guys had, if you gave a guy, if you gave a normal guy the opportunity to fuck um, like mm -hmm. 10 different women, they would mm -hmm. actually prefer that every single woman they fucked was a virgin. I think a lot of guys would opt for that. So even for quote unquote promiscuous women, they don't actually want promiscuous women. They just want a woman that will only be promiscuous with them. I think it's generally oh, the favor. Sure, sure. But see, I, I think you're being too charitable to men? overall to Vosh's oh. uh, point here, because He's he said Republicans don't care about the fetus. All they care about is controlling women. So it sounds like he's very clearly saying that they literally do not care about the life well, of the I'm, child. Well, that's because you guys are all very anti vosh I'm trying to steal man's argument as much as I know. Possible. I mean, like, <laughs> I yeah, I appreciate it. I, I'm critical as well, because if you go to my Twitter what? or whatever, I'll say shit like you can't just say that Republicans don't care about women. You sound like a fucking moron and nobody's going to listen to you because obviously right. conservatives care about women to some extent or obviously. But like I'm, I'm trying to give like the best version of what he's trying yeah, to say, but he's either too stupid okay. or Sorry doesn't understand women. like how to phrase right. it correctly or he's actually too radical and he doesn't. Yeah, of course. Okay. Do you think Vosh tur turns his ship around, Destiny? I mean, I, I watch a lot of your content, especially on Vosh, because it's so fascinating to me. I just, I don't, I, Vosh is just so in this weird bubble. I don't think he can, I don't think he'll ever be able to appeal to a wider audience. I yeah, think his audience is he probably- He can't appeal to moderates because why yeah. would you watch like Vosh over me, right? Or, or any yeah. other, like, or of even course. like David Pakman, right? So he can't appeal to moderates. So I think he's going back to trying to appeal to the very extreme left and the very extreme right. Like extremists are somebody that he can always appeal to. He knows the group he can pull from. But they, mm -hmm. but they, they are, are super finicky and they score very low on loyalty and i feel like sooner or later they're just going to get tired of vosh and it's just going to be out the window with it to be I honest know, there's, with you. there's a I mean, lot of people who just yeah. want to hear what they think they really want to get that you know affirmation of yeah they those those conservatives they are evil those are probably yeah fuck them yeah I see Vosh like a, a like a cryptocurrency that's just on the verge of collapsing <laughs> Coin. I think you're wrong. I think he's going to do strong for a while. I, Until I, someone I, else comes. I, I as long as these people that. exist, I disagree with that too strongly. I mean, is Vosh the Bitcoin of Well, okay, wait. He, he, got so much, he got so much flack for the J.K. Rowling stuff. But did he did he gain subs or lose subs? No, he, got, subs. he has gotten fucked in all of his big controversies. Yes. Oh, which really? is why okay, I think he's then. trying to like appeal back to that crowd again. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, he was trying to suck up to Hassan, me, but yeah. he realized there was like no path forward there, and Hassan never gave him any play. <laughs> um, there were some really sad clips. I'm sure Doomer was probably saying, if you've gone through so much, where he was like, I remember there was <laughs> one where Hassan was like, oh, yeah, like I'm never going to affiliate with somebody like Vosh because I hate the debate bro community. And Vosh was like this is actually hassan giving us compliments guys you just don't understand <laughs> yeah. it's really 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 sad to see that um but yeah Oof. i think that he's kind of realized that he's kind of like lost that center of moderate market so he's just kind of mm -hmm. like aiming towards extremists and he needs and he's trying to like realign himself especially after all the fighting with leftists with non-compete with luna with cat black um and then with the whole like um jk rawling thing he's trying to win favor back with that crowd again that's why he's got people like kethels and stuff that he's trying to make appeals to and then the more extremist rhetoric that he did decently well before Mm -hmm. These, well, these extremists want to see blood sports, though, and Vosh is basically in his fortress arc where he's only going to debate yes men. I just saw him. I didn't watch the debate, but I saw him have a second debate with another conservative. But this conservative is just so milk toast maybe it's a good thing yeah. maybe it's actually a good thing i don't really him, i don't like but. saying this publicly because i don't like giving him career advice or whatever but honestly mm -hmm. vosh even though his fan base thinks 
He needs to do debate stuff. He and I always say that because I want him to debate more because I like it when he looks stupid. He doesn't actually need to do debate stuff to succeed. What he really needs to do is just focus on these hot button cultural issues because he gets really big viewership doing that, both live viewership donations and VOD viewership. So I don't know if he's realized that. Um, and if he has, then good because I haven't given him free career advice. But if he hasn't, he doesn't actually have to do the debate stuff at all. He just has to focus on culture war stuff and he gets big viewership doing that. And he yeah, doesn't he, ever have no, to risk looking dumb or anything. He ha he has to. Did you did you see the um? During the like cutting off Destiny arc, did you see his response videos to you? Uh, yeah, I have my fan base. Those, likes me those were so of course, those yeah. were those were some of the most fucking dishonest. I I could tell exactly what was going on there. He's like, oh shit, Destiny actually makes me look stupid. Uh, I can't talk to this fucking guy anymore. Uh, okay, what's what's the cope? Oh, Destiny's fucking dishonest. Bad Destiny's faith bad actor. Faith. I'm not gonna. Destiny is a bad now. faith act. Yeah, yeah. It, like, if you want to see the most dishonest Fosh videos, those are some of them. I didn't cover them because mm -hmm. I just couldn't really work it in, but. If you go back and like watch those debates and then watch fucking Vosh's coverage of it, it is so yeah, goddamn unreal. bad. Yeah, it's unreal. And and then and then immediately following that, the like the like bridge burning destiny arc, mm -hmm. he basically stopped doing debates. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And, or or and like if he took a debate, it was with like some random fucking person. Yeah, exactly. Like Somebody that he knew he could beat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh. And and to be fair, that's smart. Like it is. Um, and it's I working think, for think, him. Like a lot of his audience is literally like, oh yeah, we don't want debates anymore. We like the Fortress arc, like blah, blah, blah. And some people like in my community might think like, oh, that's a cope. But I don't think it is a cope. I think that a lot of his community, honestly, like they don't even want to see him do debates anymore. They just want to see him do like culture works coverage stuff. Yeah. No. Do you think that, um, do you think Vosh has become in a way kind of a victim of his own radicalization? Like he sort of pushed himself down that, uh, kind of fallen into his own trap, so to speak. Yeah, but I mean, in a way, we all, I, like, I victimize myself in every way, too, right? We all kind of, like, we learn and we grow, and the things that we've done <laughs> in the past come back. You're and a lot us, worse so. than he is. Yeah, so I mean, I like technically Vosh and Asana are like Frankenstein creations for my community, so I have to live with that every single day, too, you know? I just, <laughs> it is what it is. We all live yeah. and learn, and yeah. When you have legal abortion, when you have sex ed, when you have uh, uh, access to contraceptions, in the mind of the conservative, you are facilitating a degenerate lifestyle. You are building for people the 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 availability of that of of that lifestyle, which they don't want. They want. Is there is there any aspect? Because I'm I'm not too familiar with Vosh. Um, it does feel nice actually. Uh, but how much of does he think that there is a reasonable level of kind of like some cultural um, like. I guess, uh, encouragement to not be promiscuous or like some limit on, you know, how sexual you should be. Is he? No, he's is, fully is he, like, what is his most progressives will never ever should admit. Be poly and and that, yeah. Like yeah. Vosh. Oh fuck. Does you guys I, haven't he, seen he, it. It would be a really funny video. You're muted. You're muted. Oh. You're muted. Hey, he thinks like, if you're monogamous, it means that like you're manifesting jealousy or something. He's given a bunch of really fucking cringe takes on this. It seems to be a pretty hard endorsement of like, the polygamous, like mm -hmm. just whatever the fuck lifestyle. Yeah, I was gonna say Doomer's seen the video. Yeah, there's one where he goes off. It's like a 20 minute video where he says that like every monogamous person is just like super jealous of. of I, their, even, yeah. I know about that one. Uh -huh. I I know about that piece of Vosh lore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we fun. covered that one. It was great. Yeah, that was. He that said was that fun. there's no difference between your girlfriend or wife having a male friend and shaking her hand versus having sex with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. Penis. Okay. Every I don't know where yeah, he right. falls on that. So, you know, line. to answer your question, I don't think he prescribes any sort of, you know, tamping down of sexual urges or promiscuity or anything like that. Yeah, I don't I don't really like know how to phrase it, like what name for it, um, like some kind of like r some reining in on, you know, I guess sexual activity. Uh, like it's kind of like a calm down. You don't have to. Right. Well, it's <laughs> yeah. Like the issue is that like um, I like I obviously I think conservatives have a shitty view of sex, um, and I think we should have more sex. I think sex is fun, but like. For some reason, people on the left don't ever want to acknowledge like the downsides or the potential downsides or the costs that are associated with certain actions. And I guess that's just, that's always the frustrating thing. part to me. Like not everyone is not everyone's equipped, particularly mentally or psychologically, to be having a lot of sexual partners. Yeah, or, or look at all the rape stuff. Don't... Like I got a lot of heat for saying um, if a girl isn't like comfortable enough to stop a guy from stealthing her, she probably shouldn't be engaging in casual sex. And people got really mad at that. Um, mm -hmm. Like basically saying yeah. like I think that women okay. should be raped or whatever. And it's like, well, no, I'm just saying that like you know if you're gonna be engaging in a lot of um, you know like 
extra sexual behavior, you have to, there's a whole list of responsibilities that come along with that to keep yourself safe doing it. And if you can't handle that, you probably shouldn't be doing it. But people want, the problem with a lot of progressives, they seem to want to reap a lot of positive things from behaviors that the right would condemn, but they don't want to look at any of the costs associated. Yeah, and and that's just, it's a totally unrealistic view of the world. And you're setting people up for like failure in the real world when you do that. Yeah, if you tell them that you go out and have all the sex you want, it's going to be great. You have nothing to worry about. It's good. It's it's you exploring yourself, and it's great, and it's wonderful. And then, you know, things happen. That yes, yes, you know, all three of your girlfriends are pregnant. I mean, that's really yeah. true it's in so many that. areas. Like, you tell people, hey, spend less money on stupid bullshit, and you'll be better off financially. And they're like, what, you think you can just be a billionaire by not buying Starbucks? And it's just, like, so fucking cringe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially when, like, 20 years ago, like, that's, like, the least controversial thing ever. Like, the first thing that you do if you're a poor person is you look at your expenses. Save you money. start, like, you start writing down, like, what do I spend money on? And you'll always find, even as a poor person, like, oh, shit, I waste a lot of money on, like, these dumb things. But people just want to blame, like, billionaires and, like, whatever big strike capitalism or whatever instead, so... What are you going to do? That's what I learned when I started uh, cutting out soda from my diet. Just sort of thinking about if I get, you know, such and such of this every week, like, holy shit, that like that, that shit adds up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easier to focus on like big systemic things you can't change. Yeah, like you can change not drinking soda every day. But you can't change like fighting the sugar lobby or some sort of like big system big wide thing. Yeah, that you can't have any impact on. Mm-hmm. Well, this was like a this was honestly a cut chapter of the video that I almost made. There's like Vosh is really, really against individual responsibility. Always. It seems a lot of the time. Yes. Yeah. And it's so fucking cringe. Um, I, I cut it just because it didn't fit. But it's this is a very, very good point. There's so many. Fu- there's You could find 50 quotes of him. Well, that came up being with against the, the most common fucking sense advice to help people mm-hmm. that came up with the Hassan drama with the, you know, Hassan spending all his money in houses and cars and clothes. And it was like, well, you know, he doesn't have to actually live his principles on an individual level as long as he's advocating for policies. Oh, God, that, like. set of, that was the last, I think, set of big debates I had with him because he looked so fucking deranged there. <laughs> Where I was asking him, I think I asked him, I was like, so functionally, so should a socialist and a capitalist like basically live the exact same lives? And he's like, well, yeah, I guess, because you have no obligation, blah, 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 because consequentialism, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, what an absolutely stupid fucking thing to say, yeah. Maybe that's why uh, Destiny. Maybe that's why you got blowback about the whole the women and the stealthing things, and implying that a woman has a some level of responsibility, regardless of how minuscule. It is a bit misogynist. Dare you. Well, the yeah, the <laughs> issue is that you. like people view like personal responsibility with like moral culpability, and that's kind of always the issue with these conversations. You know, like yeah. if you leave your car door unlocked and somebody steals your shit, it's not your fault. You, it's not it's I, not it's not your fault that somebody stole yourself the fault the moral fault lies with the person that stole it but with some more responsibility you could have avoided that outcome yeah you know? yeah and that's always the, the issue um, people whenever they hear responsibility they instantly assume oh you're saying it was that person's fault it's like no yeah no, it's an no. aspect of what you deserve um like if you yeah leaving your car unlocked you don't deserve to get your stuff stolen but mm-hmm. a natural result is you could get your stuff stolen you should lock your car yeah First of all, I, we Adam. had this thing in our chat with. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 Rags. Wait, wait. Well, First of all, Adam. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. What? Oh, I was, I, we can talk about the, the DQ, if you will, the the deserve question. We can no, 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 no. Adam, Adam put a Destiny's title to stream on Adam and Sitch, and he put it right in the middle of the screen. What did I fuck up my? Or something? No, no, he, no, no, you, no, you didn't. Perfect, it's, Destiny. Yeah, no, thanks for joining a, us a me- today. No. I got it. So, so we would used to always fight about whose name comes first in the show, okay. and eventually, I don't really call it, fighting. It, yes, we'd always fight, and it was eventually Sitch and Atwell was always. Sitch okay, and let's be frank. It so. should when I when I went to look up the live stream of this stream right. that we're doing, I went to the I went to the search bar on YouTube, and of course, I pre- I, I Adam and Sitch. Oh, <laughs> of course. God. Look, the, reason, Adam, the reasonable way to do this is you put, you put Sitch, the no. Adam and Look, Sitch it rolls no. off the tongue better. If you have, no. It's if you alphabetical. Have a, no. If you have a list of things, you want to put the best thing first. So it just makes sense. Yeah. Well, oh, I, yes. That's his opinion. That's not me. That's not that, that that's, why, that's why your name is last humor in the uh, title. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I just think that Adam and Stitch sounds better and it's uh, alphabetized. That's okay. I don't want to hear this. I, I don't want to hear it from, from the, what was your team name? The Artards or whatever. <laughs> I don't want to hear this the, the propaganda. <laughs> I'm not sure. What, what's great about Adam and Sitch oh, is right. that even the Andes capital is, is uh, alphabetized with everything else. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like doubly neat. Wow. It's perfect. Uh, J-Mac, 
Thank you so much, JMac, for the $200. Our surrogate oh, father damn. said, wow, what a lineup. Can't wait to see what insightful nuggets of wisdom our dear Lord and Savior Vosh has for us. How much of that is mine? JMac, aren't you supposed to be hanging with the family? Are you taking my advice and sneaking into the bathroom on your phone? Yeah, you're supposed to be. This is supposed to be family day, JMac. Come on. Well, we do thank you for the yes. super chat, obviously. Yes. JMac, executive producer of the show. Mm hmm. Of the Sitch and Adam show. Yes. Of the stuff app to carry Sitch. weighty Sitch, you consequences got the name that they will have to deal with for basically the rest of their lives. You know? And don't get me wrong, by the way, you know, right oh, now no. they're going after abortion, but they will go after contraception. They already have. Republicans famously just a few years ago made a strong effort to prevent birth control from being one of the, um, uh, you know, obligated uh, uh, aspects of healthcare that workers, what was it, the um, Hobby Lobby, right? Hobby Lobby, that was the place, their Supreme Court decision. So they don't have to provide. That was the, isn't Hobby Lobby, a, didn't they have some religious thing going on? Yeah, well, kind of... I thought this they is... had a private health insurance plan between all of the employees, and I think it was religious, and they were worried that I believe the ACA was going to make it mandatable that they had to cover things like contraception, and they wanted to repose on a religious grounds. That was so, like, that sounds, that right, sounds it's actually, no, it's actually more specific than that. They were <laughs> opposed only, they were fine with, with contraception. They were only opposed to, like, the morning after pill and things like that, that they say is too close to being an abortion. They're fine giving people condoms and all that other, and the pill and all that other stuff. I'm, I'm not, I'm not particularly familiar with the lady side of contraception. Is it expensive? Uh, is it hard to get a hold of? Is it a... Uh... There's so Vaughn, many different types of like... the chat says birth like, control is cheap, so... There's a lot of different types of birth control pills. Um, some of them are very cheap. Some of them can be pretty expensive, over $100 a month, depending on what kind you get. Um, when it comes to women and, Damn, like, the pill birth talking? control, it just... Um, it just depends on like what hormones work well with your body, with your body, whether okay. or not you need like a lower <laughs> hormone birth body. control. It just depends. Yeah. Okay, all right. Because I just pretty. don't know. That's just. Yeah. But th to me, I don't. To me, the idea that the Republican Party is going to start trying to clamp down on just you know condoms and stuff like this and going forward like in the future just far, seems very but... far fetched to me. I don't think this is a real concern. They're going to make it illegal to have premarital sex. Sis. You don't understand how this works. They have a zero tolerance sex policy. Mm -hmm. They want no sex to happen ever. No sex. Ever, outside yeah. of the bounds of marriage. Right. That's the Republican Party from 50 years ago. I just I don't I don't buy this. I just Look, don't buy yeah. it. Federally mandated chastity belts, okay? Yes. See, that's what that's they'll put a fresh seal on every base. vagina. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, it seems this is bonkers. But anyway, um, birth control, you know, they and it's all a lot of these are appeals to I've noticed. And in, instead of like, this is what I want. And here's why it this is always it comes weighted with this fear of some horrific dystopia that's going to happen if you don't go with my position or what I think is the case. Mm -hmm. um, right. Instead of just, yeah, no. here's what I think it should be because I think that, you know, principally or oh, whatever that word means to him, but here, but morally, whatever the reasons are, here's how I think, you know, the country should be. And I, here's how I think society could be. I think that's reasonable. It's always just weighted down with that fear. All you know, of that's boring. Vosh is, apocalyptic. Kind that's of. really boring, Rags. You have to stoke the fear. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for drama purposes, I, I don't. You know. I, I mean, this is kind of game this is populism 101, right? Bernie and yes. Trump kind of like play off of this. It's the idea that things are always in dire straits, that that all of the institutions are against you, and then this is like the one way through, like the one path to salvation. Is I am the one person, person that will save us yeah. all. Yeah, or but they're doing it for parody. electoral advantage. They're not doing it because they care about people. Well, that's what's so disgusting about it. Well, you do it, it for no. Bernie, Bernie was the one person that's going to save us. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you do it. You do okay. it for status, right? So for a yes. politician, it's going to be for the status that elevates them to get elected. For a video person like us, like streamer people, it's going to be for the status of getting more viewership and money, right? But it's all right. at the end of the day to elevate you in the eyes of other people. But they could. The two things could be aligned. Like we're looking for status by actually informing people. The actual knowledge about the the world that we live in. Vosh is is trying to gain status by gaslighting his audience into being terrified of Republicans. I don't. It's not the same thing. I mean, I, as a liberal, I would obviously agree with that. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> Want to? And, and you can look all over the place for examples of this. There are plenty of openly anti contraception Republicans at the federal and state level. You can find examples of them making an effort to legally distinguish 
certain types of birth control in a way which makes them overlap with abortion, where legislatively, you know, they push against abortion. See, this is why I feel like this is intentionally dishonest, because it sounds like he knows that the Hobby Lobby thing wasn't about contraception. It was about these, you know, plan B and morning after pills and all that stuff. Honestly, he probably, you're giving him too much credit. He probably doesn't know. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've gone into conversations before. Like he wanted to bring up, I remember we got into a debate on a panel where he wanted to bring up that in Florida, uh, everything that happened in the election between Bush and- Oh my God. Gore or Kerry. I always forget which one. <laughs> Gore. But it, it, Gore. Uh, Gore. It was, it was Gore. an example how Bush and Scalia were fascists. That was like his example. But like he didn't have- he, he didn't even know what he doesn't even know what fascist means really but like he didn't have any examples of like anything he didn't know anything about like. the hanging chads he didn't know how the right. ballots were decided he didn't know who did the recon he had no idea about any of it it Dude, was it was, like the, it was the, the funniest it was the funniest shit in the world destiny was like can you give me any evidence that anton scalia is a fascist and he goes well i'll have to do my reading and get back to you on that it's like, i was like i mean that's a pretty strong that opinion to have <laughs> With right. no, not even, not even like a singular example. And I'm not even, and usually when I'm debating people, I'll be honest. I'll be like, I don't need you to like, I'm not looking for you to source me a study, but just like talk to me. Like, what is your feeling about what why you What convinced you? Yeah. yeah. Why do you mm -hmm. feel convinced? Mm -hmm. And you know, what got you to that wherever you were? But, yeah. Yeah. That, that was a and fucking he heard Anthony Scalia was a Republican, so therefore, obviously, visa v ergo procto, he's evil right. as he's hell. A yeah. Well, I mean, and Scalia is an easy one too, because Scalia believed the devil was real and possessing people, and he could have. He well, thrown that's a little. Yeah, that is a little weird. <laughs> yeah. Abortion, but you know, what is contraception if not a preemptive abortion? There has actually been an effort to. What is Wait a minute, legally a legislative a abortion? Yeah, let me go I mean, back a second. You'd have to be a particular you know, kind of person to think that, but I can understand why, like a really religious person, might think that a contraceptive is essentially that. I, um, I know. I don't being, think that's. I've never heard that argument being made. It's it's not like I know. It, obviously, contraception in terms of like if we we step into the the moral you know kind of framework outlook of a like a conservative Christian or Christian in general, right? Then um, contraception is less is is less evil than an abortion is, but they go hand in hand. And you're like when I was growing up, and you know catholic and everything they would say you know don't do this it's getting in the way of the natural whatever it is and mm -hmm. it's it's not right and it's it's stepping in the way of god's way of yeah things. god's plan god apparently however he planned to use contraceptives yeah. so don't stand in the, in the way of god's, god's plan well, yeah exactly it seems like it seems like most people can under even if they're pro-choice or even pro-life they kind of understand the other side's position and there's some sympathy like Abortion is a, a difficult uh, topic, but with, con think, with just contraception, like, I don't think that's true at all. In particular, yeah. I feel a lot of there, there needs to be this. Uh, you don't want to get each side riled super duper up on how evil the other side is with an issue like this, because there really is this aspect of you, both of you want something. I don't think you will ever either side will ever get what it wants fully. You're going to have to come to some kind of a middle ground and you both might be well, a I mean, little bit unhappy but. i don't think Dude. most most pro-choice people i don't think are the types of like you know abort the baby till like the day before it's born i don't most, think that's well, yeah the, most the aren't, average position. Yeah. i i watched uh dev's video uh where he had a lot of the, do the graphs and things on uh so what he said don't like watch that? dev's video you like that <laughs> they're just fucking around oh okay and, and, and they had a lot of graphs on what people think about abortion and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. But it's not like, yeah, the, the amount of people who are like abortion always, yes, all it's not a very big, it's a right. very, very tiny group of, you yeah. know. I don't, push against I don't know that the whole Republican Party, though, is Christian conservatives like this. I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> it's got to be a smaller percent than just. I mean, they characterize the entire the, Republican Party as like evangelicals. It's a, that's a large number. I'm certain of it, well, but it's not the big, entire party. That big difference between yes, I'm I'm Christian, but how far I go with it? Like, do I go to church every Sunday? Do I really go hard into the Christian stuff, or is it just sort of this background detail about me that kind of is a part of me, but it's not like the big focus of? Uh, I think there's a there, there's plenty of people who definitely see their. Uh, their religious uh, beliefs as sort of this, well, not the it, most important thing in their life. And, and it seems also, to be, I, 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 I just would, looked it up. I would it assume, yeah, what is it? It's between 60 and, 60 and 70% of Republicans are Christian. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. okay. Are Christian? Okay, oh, okay but yeah. yeah. No, but I would assume it's also different because like with contraception, 
I'm not Christian, but I would imagine from a Christian perspective, it's like, oh, if you're against contraception, you know, God says be fruitful, multiply. So you're really only harming yourself on like a spiritual level or not following Christian dogma or, level. Where with yeah, abortion, it's, it's, it's like you're they believe that you're literally killing a human being. So it's completely different like sure. way of conceptualizing. Yeah. Yeah, it's this kind of, uh, I think someone in the chat said, like, passive Christians are kind of how a lot of people are. It's uh, it's it's almost like, it's, it's like a flavoring to their character. It's not like the defining sort of characteristics mm -hmm. of their system. Or it, and, and, of course, everyone takes their religious beliefs, however deep they may or may not be, and they interpret them their own way, and they make sense of everything their own way. And they might even, they maybe they cheat a little bit and a part of them knows about it. It's like, well, maybe I think this and maybe this, and I know it's wrong, but it's okay because da, 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 da. And people make it work and they come to their own little, you know, they'll, they'll smash that round peg in the square hole however they can. But that's a lot of people about all kinds of things. And of know, course, religious beliefs are, they're not a. People are being driven by their moral intuitions, not their logic machine. Mm -hmm. against abortion but you know what is contraception if not a preemptive abortion there has actually been an effort to legally cordone birth control in a way that fits it in a similar category and this is part of a broader process to legally disenfranchise access to reliable forms of birth control uh, iud's you know birth control whatever the shots that you can take the implants you know uh, the goal would be to make these things more expensive, less accessible, and to impose essentially government penalties for the uh, provided availability of these forms of contraception. If you don't think they'll do that, then keep in mind that for decades it has been illegal to fund abortions with tax dollars. Even though abortion is a constitutionally, for now, constitutionally protected right, and even though it is undeniably a form of health care, it has been law that abortions can't be funded with tax dollars. Plan there is, I, we kind of let him go on a little bit in the, in the, the, the reactor in me wants to pause and say something, but there's, there needs to be this recognition, like at least this is base level, the baseline recognition that even if you don't agree with a, like a, a religious person, can we at least give them the credit of saying they, they don't, they're not trying to do something nefarious to subvert you, but that they actually believe that this is a moral thing to them. It's a moral. Why would issue. I do that? Uh, I suppose it's true. Why would you do that? Um, but that, that's not winning, son. I think but one it, of the... Well, yeah, if you're, I think your goal the, is to be honest, but I mean, it's politics. I think one of the intuitions that divides left and right on this issue is that the right wants people to be responsible for their own actions. And the left is more willing to accept that... Well, I, I, that's a bad way to put it because whether or not it's true is really is a hard one to to determine but they they believe that people are products of their environment so they're they're less willing to make people responsible for their own actions and to blame society for their actions and, and that's a huge split here of, yeah both sides sort of feed into each other if whether you say that the individual has the most responsibility or the the culture of things around the individual has the most responsibility both of them can feed into each other. The more you tell, we take the, the more left side, if, if you tell them that the individual doesn't have any you know, power over themselves or responsibility, broadly speaking, then that just, it feeds into itself and all the problems are, it, it can never be you and it's just, it snowballs and it works both ways, of course. Well, saying no to abortion is basically forcing someone to take responsibility for their actions, I think, in their, in their estimation, yeah. Planned Parenthood sense, fund. Yeah. What's up? Well, we can move on to programs. the debate. A tiny fraction of what they do. Set the, the These stage. are just intros? Yeah. Oh, right. They, here's why we really show Yes. This. Pit is accurate. <laughs> your followers, Luke Beasley on YouTube. And I've been a follower of you for a while. And It's like the minimum amount of decor you can have for your backdrop. You know, it's like I just get some blue lights. That's fine. That's, <laughs> Look that's at fine. you, <laughs> Mister. Doesn't no, show up on funny. camera. It's no, no, it's fine. We're, we're having know. fun. We're laughing. We're uh -huh. having a good time. Everything's Rags. great. He's okay. he's a lovely person. Rags. I just, this, it just Rags. amuses me. This Who guy is, purchased a short little, SMB. It just the door looks okay. really skinny. He doesn't have any money for fine decoration. Who who is this guy? Because 
I mean, he does a real good job. Vosh does crazy things, and the look on his face are like, oh, why would you say? <laughs> he's uh, really Luke not in- easily. Is he's name. really not into what Vosh is selling him today. I think he's just he's a guy that's trying to get into like political stuff, but he's pretty young. I think he's 19, maybe 20. Oh, um, yeah. He's trying to start like YouTube channel. He's a fan of Vosh and man, everything. Yeah. Then why, if he's if he's five or six years younger than Vosh, why is he the one that seems to know what's going on here? And Vosh is the one teetering on crazy town. Well, you know, age and craziness and always go hand in hand. I you guess notice. so. Yeah, Especially I guess it's just if you're personality. Vosh and maybe you get cut up, caught up in your own your own pit, so to speak. Uh, I think uh, age and craziness are heavily correlated, though. The younger you are, oh. the crazier you tend to be. Yeah. Okay. Do you disagree? I, I couldn't. No, I, I don't know. I, I didn't, how about I no, how about I have no the opinions younger, on the matter whatsoever? How about we'll just He's limit got a lot this, of young kids. In whatever Sid thinks, I okay. agree with. He's placating. How, how about this? We'll just limit it to males. The younger a male is the more full of shit he is is that is that will you at least sign on to that one i think well, that's just children young young well, even are... then i don't even know there there can be an earnesty to children um i'm i'm not i don't know i i'm not ready to sign off in any opinion the, the, <laughs> the craziness to age on, on the age question okay hold on so yeah. if, you, if you if you take any individual person and you look at them at 18 and compare them to when they're 30 I mean, they're going to be way fucking more ignorant and like hormonal and kind of at 18. 18. Yes. Right. However, well, however, 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 th- oh, this, no. is, this is a, yeah, uh, that's, that's where we're however, but, however, the, the difference between people is greater. Like, like you could have people that are way fucking more reasonable at 18 than the average person is at 30. And that wouldn't, oh. that would not surprise me. We're witnessing bit. it right here we're, in this video. We're talking about right. crazy. Oh, you, we said, you said crazy. Maybe tell me what you mean by crazy, because when you can when you say crazy and I hear it, I'm like, oh, like like a super duper far end of the spectrum, this mega ideologue. Look, he's he's advocate. Member. Look, he's advocate. Cult member is the perfect example. Vosh is here advocating for his audience to go buy weapons. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I see the average Vosh viewers like mentally unstable. Well, I'm pro Second Amendment, so I can get behind that, right? Yeah, but, but arming mentally unstable people I don't know about just that. doesn't seem we're like gonna a, have to, we're gonna doesn't have seem like a, here with the arming the mentally incapable. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're gonna, you could say you could say Republicans want to arm mentally incapable people too. <laughs> to be fair, okay. I feel like so, at least they're pitching. You got to have a gun safety course. The Republicans are. No shot. Uh, Republicans, no. <laughs> no <laughs> what, really. You don't think so? Absolutely not. No. For the most no. part, no, that doesn't seem to be the case. They're definitely it's it's, isn't, it's my right. Isn't there some Supreme okay. Court case right now they're trying to make it like open carry with no license yeah, for some the country? Are, some states are like when that. you when you say I have license that, to concealed carry here, which I do. When you say the words assault rifle. Yes. And you and you yeah. get like and every a million person on the right comments. gets triggered. Yes. Well, uh, that's what I was going to ask. I'm yes. like, are those lefties or, or righties who are responding in the comments going, oh, my God, you said the unforbidden words. Yes. My knowledge is that Republicans get annoyed when you say assault rifle, because that's often used to denote things that are in no way. But right. Is it's, a, it's a miscategorization. Rifle, yeah. OK, so it is no. people on the right. We all agree. You know, say something just so absurd. I had to reach out. <laughs> Look at that. He just he gets on stream and he slaps him in the face. Like in 27 <laughs> seconds, he's like, Vosh, when you say something this retarded, so this idiotic, this so is so absurd. absurd. It's absurd. Like he's it's, going, he's going full Jordan Peterson on him. So absurd. Someone, <laughs> absurd though is uh he's like, yeah, he has a gun there. Um the but the whole um <laughs> Yeah. absurdity isn't uh it's not that bad in terms of internet speak right if someone says ah, yes he said something so absurd i like that seems low tier for me i don't think it's i don't I think agree it's insane that, yeah. that vosh owns a gun i don't think it's remotely insane that vosh oh we're bouncing we're bouncing oh yeah he wants to he probably I, let's hope he doesn't want to kill evil people with it because that would be well vosh oh, vosh yeah. is, is, pro- is probably definitely a target he's on the internet saying just absurd things <laughs> So yes, he should probably have a gun. I just I don't know that his audience needs to be packing firearms, but well, if he's telling them that they need to be thinking certain things about a lot of people, and I hope I hope not. I don't want him to go 
I don't want, I don't want one of them to go too far. Yeah. I, I don't oh, think, I don't think, wait, I don't think, you know, having people giving arms is a problem. I think it's having arms and then hyping up the fear that you're on the verge yes. of the yeah, civil yeah, war genocide is the, yes. the real key factor. He's listen, like that. his reasoning for why you should buy a gun sitch yes. is because Republicans are going to round you up in genocide. Right, okay. right. Right. It's not for home protection. Yeah. I got my gun right. next to me. Uh, remind yeah. me what it was that I said that's so right, absurd. Like, Fill me on, in. 17. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so obviously <laughs> I, I get that the tension's running high with the Roe v. Wade news. Uh, I'm what the kids call a sock dim, so. You are, you are one of the most kids. Issues, but obviously down the road we would maybe disagree. Mm -hmm. um, so actually on the policy prescriptions, we would agree on the conversation around abortion, but the way in which you obviously responded to that news was calling Republicans. And then you went on to specify Republican politicians, maybe primarily, uh, were demons and human flesh. <laughs> and I saw that, uh, which is medically true, by the way, scientific studies have been done. Right. I, I can't tell if he's joking. To, um, he's, he's joking, you know, fight you on that. And <laughs> I saw that you talked to a conservative and I saw the title and got nervous that he was going to argue with you about this exact same thing. But then y'all's conversation went more into him saying, ah, it's not that bad, all these different things. That's not where I want to go at all. I agree with you on how bad any of these given issues. I mean, the fact that you would be pro-life, quote unquote, um, wanting to minimize abortions, but then also want to ban con uh, contraception. Makes no sense. I'm not saying I defend, or y'all got into the conversation around um, the demonization of trans people and all that. None yeah. of those things was, am I going to be like, oh, don't. Yeah, it's really irresponsible to demonize a whole group of people. That would be, that would be bad if we did that. We Literally demonize. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't want to do that. What do you, don't I call agree. them evil because. I thought he bad. just did that with the Republicans, though. What yes, yes. Rags. Yes. Oh, yeah, they, you're, you're pointing Adam. out the oh. irony. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. yeah that one. You're right. It is ironic. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. Point it off. But you definitely a bit. Here's just to, just to show you. This is what Vosh would say. He would say, listen, being Republican is a choice. Being trans is not a choice. You're born that way. It's an immutable characteristic. You just you can demonize Republicans. That's the way you get them to stop being Republicans. That's what he would say. Because because all of a sudden being a product of your environment. Wow. Well, uh, I, yeah. I don't think I actually don't think that's what he would say. I think that he I think that he would say that. Uh, pointing out the evil of the Republican Party is necessary to radicalize people to Obama. take action to take the country back. He would say something like that. Hey, you're just saying that because you watched this already, and that's what he says. <laughs> I no, I haven't watched this. You're a cheater, like Destiny. Has so he look, said um, a date? I have done, yet? I have done my research. Okay, <laughs> I've done, done a sad amount of research on this uh -huh. fucking guy. Done a sad amount of research. Is Vosh preparing for the next Jan for next January sixth? Hating your it sounds like maybe is. that is disavow. Yeah. Okay, ouch. Tangential. By the way, there are people in chat asking for your name and pronouns, just to be clear. Yeah, uh, Luke Beasley, Obama. and pronouns are he, him. All right. Uh, thank you. But yeah, oh, yeah go I mean, on. Yeah, go on right We didn't give our pronouns. Um, absolutely. So my pronouns are none. <laughs> Do not fucking address me. Okay. Fair enough. I guess I'm not trying to kind of, oh my God, look at all these quotes, but I did write them down just so we could kind of hash them out. Keep hating and your life then. My class, biggest Andy. concern is what does it do for our movement? Yeah, something just it's something I noticed. Keep I hating your life I, then. I, I class, look at Andy. The, the scrolling uh, Vosh chat every once in a while and you see the my guy, they just want women to suffer. And I'm like, you, you see these mm -hmm. enough times and you're like, dang, that's just oof. It really does. They believe that all the time. Well, that's, they totally okay. believe that. Yeah, that's first of all, that's every chat. That's like every chat is going to repeat most of what streamer says. Obama. But the problem is, is that Vosh says way fucking more extreme shit than most people do. So his chat is like just, you know, saying the fucking crazy shit that he says. Yeah. Using that type of rhetoric for instead of. I love his opening because his opening is basically Vosh. You're making us look like shit. Okay? <laughs> you're making Stop us you look people, bad. Stop calling people demons, please. Yeah. We're trying. Come on. We're trying to look sane here, Vosh. Please, you're not helping. Yeah, Vosh, um, don't you want to appeal to the reasonable on people in if society? If Republicans are evil or not, because that's kind of a pointless conversation in my mind. Mm -hmm. More so, it's is it 
I would be curious why, <laughs> what reason that he would give for why that's a pointless conversation, just to just, sort of hear it from him. What, I think, why it is? I think he identifies the 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 important part of the conversation is the rhetoric used against him. Like even if they agree <laughs> yes. or disagree on whether or not they're evil, it's like how should you be talking about that group of people, right? Right. Like uh, it's not I've, some kind of I, a like principled thing. It's more of a tactical well, thing. Could, you can't. I mean, if Vosh thinks Republicans are evil, you can't really debate him out of that position, right? I, yeah, yeah I, I, I was going to say. I guess it depends I, on how he got to that position, because I would wager that for most people, any position that they've been convinced of in a sort of debate is a position that theoretically they could be debated out of. But if it's a position that they hold for a less than rational means or an emotional one, then it might be really. That's every. That's every position. Well, that's that everyone every has, position. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah the, the thing is, like, I, 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 I have a lot of experience arguing about whether or not certain people are evil, and it's just it's a cancerous conversation because everybody has their own conception of evil, and like even if I completely justify, here's what I think evil is. Here's the argument. People mm -hmm. just don't give a shit. They're like, but evil isn't that. Evil is this other thing, and there's just there's nowhere to go with it. So I mean. I don't know what his reasoning is, but he is correct. It is a fucking pointless conversation. There you go. Doomer doesn't want to argue about whether the Nazis we don't, are really evil or not. I just think, <laughs> like, I just conceptualized Luke as the sane one here, but now I don't know if Luke is basically saying, yeah, I totally agree with you that Republicans are evil in, you know, demonic skin suits. I think you're reading way... No, he doesn't... No, believe, I don't Adam, think Luke no. believes that at all. But rhetorically, I don't think it's a Adam, good idea to put well, that No, 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 no listen. Adam, Luke is a good boy, okay? Yes. Okay, sure. He's a base socked him. Okay. Okay, I hope so. I mean... Well, no, so I get annoyed because sometimes in these conversations, people try to craft their arguments specifically in a way that they think will be effective to the person they're talking to. Right. So, you know, Luke's like, okay, well, I'm not going to talk about whether Republicans are really evil because that's a pointless conversation with Vosh. So I'm going to talk about like the rhetoric we use to discuss this. But then people like in chat and other people will view that conversation and say, well, he didn't actually say Republicans aren't evil, so he must agree with it. Yeah, I, just, no, I, 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 I don't think like that. I think the thinking. viewership, the culture needs to change around that. I think we should be crafting conversations around who we're talking to, right? Exactly. Like in right. this conversation, like I'm siding with Vosh a little bit more than you guys because there's no point in having like a fifth person here to just shit on Vosh. Like, what would be the point? But I, like, the, the way that we talk to people about certain issues is always going to depend on the audience we're talking to. I think that's fair. I think that. Should yeah, be exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I is mean, you can shit on Vosh if you want. <laughs> is this shit? Is this shitting on Vosh? <laughs> Of course, it well, is. I feel like I'll, this I'll is more like the a, best of my ability. Mild, I feel mild like, farting. Look, I feel like this is more like a rescue mission. Okay, there is a bunch of people <laughs> oh, yeah, who have been abducted. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait a second. Yeah, okay. There is a bunch of people who've been yes. abducted by a cult leader. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> we need to break through. We need to break through to those people. Mm, okay. Yeah. You disagree? I, I mean, disagree. We're not, we're not Daryl Davising uh, Vosh's audience. Wait, wait, disagree Vosh, that it's a cult or that we need to rescue? Yeah, Vosh is not a cult. Vosh is definitely no, a cult. No, no, come I on. disagree that. that come on now. I disagree that we're doing that activity. We're doing God's work here, Sitch. What, do you, okay, what the fuck are you be, talking but... about? <laughs> I have we are on a rescue like mission. <laughs> we're, we're, heard that. We're, on a, we're on a crapping on Vosh for our audience mission. Okay. Destiny, yeah. since you are. We're on a mission from Gad. Since you are taking Vosh's side in this, just I don't know why, but what what uh what is good about what Vosh is doing in this debate? Well, I don't think is anything is good. I'm just trying to make sure okay. that his positions good. Okay, are, there we go. I think it's, I just want to make sure his positions are represented as strong as possible. Otherwise, it's just dumb to just shit on somebody and then not actually what like, make it, the strongest are versions. Are his right. are his positions though? All his positions just seem like BS used car salesman shit though. They don't. I don't see any. I don't see any any like philosophical underpinnings to any of his positions. All of his positions are just demonizing Republicans because well, they think, disagree. I mean, like the underpinning, the idea is that there's going to be some level of political action that should justify people being able to take up arms and defend themselves against like actions of the state. Is the idea now? What he's done oh, okay. is he's trying to identify if we've gotten to that point. Um, I would agree right. with the first part. I think everybody would, whether they'd admit it or not. Everybody agrees with the first part. There's going to be some level of violence in the state kind of now. Yeah. yeah, but it's just a matter of do we agree factually for if we're there or not yet. And his goal is to so, make the argument that we are there. Yeah, right? we need okay, to now, line with extreme risk. Now we're actually getting to some substance, which I actually like. Like we've talked many times on the show about how we can define those points. One of the things that I've brought up is if we got in a position where a Supreme Court uh, – justice couldn't be not uh couldn't be confirmed 
unless the uh, president in power controlled the Senate, I think that would be a point that you'd go, okay, something is definitely wrong here. Obviously, they they put off Mayor Garland in Obama's last term, but it would be something different if they did that to an Obama during his first term, <laughs> like during I mean, his I first, would argue that first that, months I in office. I already did that to Obama. I don't think it matters first or second term, but I mean, I understand what you're saying. Maybe it'd be a little bit worse, but. Yeah, no, if the, if the president just came into office and a, and a Supreme Court justice drops dead and they hold off confirming a justice for the entire uh, term of his presidency, maybe they hold off for eight years. He's president for eight years and he doesn't get confirmed because of, you know, the opposite party controls the Senate. Well, I'd say that's pretty fucked up. That, that would be a sign yeah. that there's some pro- some major problem with institution. I don't think that would be a call to violence, though. But it would be uh, some it people would might be see very. It that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not sure about that. I, I wouldn't go for violence for eight years. Supreme Court hold out. But that's me. <laughs> I mean, eight that's years. Not, I mean, we, eight years. I think it's really bad, but I wouldn't start you know, Listen, trying to. Shoot OK, people how about this? It. How about this, Sitch? A, a second Supreme Court justice drops dead. Mm. Now there's two open God, seats, dying and they're Drop still like and they're still putting they're it off. Um, I I definitely can be on Sitch's side in terms of how hesitant we should be to um to to go that far. Listen, and then the and then the Republicans, a uh, Republican president steps in, and they nom they confirm like two Supreme Court justices in two weeks. <laughs> it's like. At some level, you're like, this is completely unfair. I, the again, it is, it level, is but I don't. But. When, when it comes to enacting violence, I think there has to be some direct threat of violence first from the government that is being threatened or that is going to be implemented. Not yeah, like I think a, you have to be a little bit more forward thinking there, though, yeah. in terms of because, like, by the time it would get to that point, if you haven't like resisted at any point of the way, you're basically too late, right? There is going to be there is going to be more act, acts of political violence. So, you know, that there are because people are going to feel justified in doing that, which I mean, I don't condone that kind of thing, but I feel like that's a pretty strong indicator that institutions so, so are breaking down. I just want to be clear, Adam, you're on the record that if someone held up a Supreme Court pick for eight years, you're what are you exactly saying? That someone should be able to violently no, no, attack no, no. congressmen no, or something? I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you. I'm not. I in no way want to justify political violence. I think obviously you've got to try to fix Wait, it. Wait, why not? In Our whole country is built on political violence. Well, I, I don't like that statement. I don't think anybody believes that. Wait, hold I on. Wait. Let's be really clear. If we don't want to have a conversation because of YouTube TOS. I think that's perfectly acceptable. That's fine. Well, when, but when we can't, we no, can't say statements like nothing would ever justify political violence because right. we all know that's not true. There's sure. obviously some things that would, right? If the government issued a mandate that everybody had to become yeah, sure, boys, yeah, okay, or, or else the FBI is going to show if, up. If, if, if the Republican Party rounding starts up, rounding up LGBT, yes. <laughs> like obviously, right. political violence is. Well, yes, but is that okay. wait? Is that is that the line for you then? What if it got to the point to where um, Trump was able to find a way to get? Pence to rescind the election results, and we had eight more I, years I mean, of Trump. Are you just is that like? Well, the, no, that would be immoral to do anything. No, see, I would say I would say that that would start to that would start peaking on that border of maybe justifying violence if something like that happened. If well, but you say well, the then why does the erosion of the executive justify it for you, but not the um, judicial? Because the Supreme Court judicial holdup is essentially the same thing, just in a because different. Because there's of a difference right? between the president basically saying "fuck the system," I'm going to do something which. I would assume is illegal to just throw out the votes and to basically potentially give himself power forever versus the Senate just doing shitty sh- uh, policy, not stop policy, procedural things to basically stonewall the president, which they can technically do under the framework. I mean, they can technically, but we're now we're getting into the breaking down of norm. I think a lot legal of our government, we can bring in legal people, I don't know, 100%, but I'm pretty sure a lot of our government is kind of ran by norms. Um, it's course. not all of it is like 100% dictated in, in law. Like, so for instance, if the executive didn't want to enforce a law it could technically the executive doesn't really they, they don't they've done it yeah so like, they have done it when you, yeah. but you get you can get in these areas like well we're not technically doing anything illegal you know congress said they had to do it and the president's like ah you know whatever this is why they call them constitutional crises right because it's like well technically there's not like a mechanism in place for redress here or it might not be 100 percent illegal but it can happen and then i think you have to kind of figure like okay well what is like the line here what do we and I, that's kind of what vosh's conversation is about he says we're past the line um i would disagree i think most of you guys would disagree but i don't like statements like not 
no, I would never justify political violence because no, we, we all would. And we would do it before an officer of the state is like holding a gun in front of your face and threatening to kill you. There's going to be a sure, line but, before that where it's going to be justified. Sure, but I, I assume you would agree that there's a big difference between, you know, Trump throwing out the votes and saying, just declaring himself president for another four years and holding up a Supreme Court. I yeah, don't that's think why so. I'm I asking. think that you what happened to so. Obama was one of the worst things that have ever happened in the history of the United States government. Obama won the right to mm -hmm. that Supreme Court pick when he won his second election. Garland was the longest holdup of any Supreme Court justice by far in the history of the United States. I think that that was such an unimaginable was breaking he? of norms. Yes, it was an I mean, unimaginable they, breaking of it. norms. I thought insane. they've done it like two or three times though. So. Not, not if, to the length of what Garland was held up. Right. They didn't even give so him a hearing. It's not even like they voted time. him. It's not even that they voted him down or they didn't confirm him. It was that they didn't even give him a hearing. That was no, unbelievable. I it was yeah. outrageous. I think people downplay I think it, that how I think it was unfair was. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I no, think it was I, unfair too. But the reason that I brought it up specifically mm -hmm. was because I just it's difficult to find tangible markers that you can point to to say that we're on the path to the point where you would condone political violence. And I want to find those markers early. Where Vosh, I mean, he's kind of just out well, to lunch on this whole thing because he's not really even taking real political markers into consideration. Maybe maybe another marker here is that there's some alternative that can be solved via, you know, our elected, you know, our democracy. So with the Supreme Court issue, you know, it can it can be solved via, you know, people just uh, voting who they want the Senate to be made out of. The, well, you know, no, the, that's the just to be clear. I so. agree with you. You should be forced to do peaceful options first. That should be kind of our obligation. Yes. Right. But yes. there is no redress yes. for Merrick Garland. You can't voting on a new Senate doesn't give you that. No, back I, I, but you right, right. condone violence over that. Right. I mean, we're I, in agreement I, I, on listen, that. Listen, listen, I think what happened with Garland was super fucked up. And I was very much on this topic when it was happening. But I just think that's very different than, you know, you can vote to have, you know, you couldn't fix that problem at the time, but you could vote to have the Senate be Democrats or Republicans or whoever, where if the president throws out the vote, there's no real way to address that with voting once that happens. That's sort of like, that's it. Sure. But I mean, like I can I can be empathetic towards people that are complaining about rulings now that are going to be coming from the Supreme Court that we kind of had a, a, an ability to. Address. Oh, they're going to trace it. Yeah, they're going to trace it right back to Merrick Garland. Yeah, we mm -hmm. didn't because we've got a you know, we've got a heavily conservative Supreme Court. So if you're going to get really bad decisions coming out and it's likely that this Alito ruling on Roe v. Wade will be a 5-4 or that's so I've heard if that does come out as a 5-4. Now you're like, well, fuck me. I voted for that Supreme Court justice. I right. voted for Merrick Garland when I voted for Barack Obama. And I, and I didn't get my that was my democratic yeah. thing afforded to me. And I didn't get it now. So it's like, you know, they feel jilted. Well, no, hold on. <laughs> They Jilton weren't. It's not that they. Feel, it's jail. not that they feel jilted. It's that they were deprived of their democratic representation through a through a historic breaking of norms. That's what happened. It wasn't just a jilted feeling. They actually got fucked. I mean, by they, I mean the Democratic Party. Well, that well, isn't that the same thing? Getting jilted and well, no, getting jilted is like fucked. when somebody does something mean and it irritates you. Like somebody like killing your dog. I don't think it's like you feeling jilted. Like there, there's oh, a difference. I was I think it's old like, school <laughs> jilted about so like you're, someone you're not taking up to it up their wedding. So, yeah. So that 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 intuition might be why you're more leaning towards political violence over something like this, then, I mean, you feel like this is someone killed your dog. A Supreme Court, getting denied yeah. a Supreme Court pick is a really big deal, I would say. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the most important jobs of the executive branch is nominating a Supreme Court pick, I would say. Oh, but no, it's you, fucked. It's totally fucked. Think, I agree, but I don't right. know if it's but killing your dog. Fuck. Do you think that there should have or could have been some violent uh, repercussion to that that would have been acceptable? I'm not sure. I don't yeah, think that's about the it. Question. But like, if there were violent protests, um, I don't know. I would, I would have to think about it, but uh, I lean more on the side to where I don't know how much I would condemn them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I certainly sort of by default, I'm like, eh, let's call it. Think, think about just, it. If there's any other it's a big deal, if there's any other markers, because that's one of the few markers that I can point to and say, look, you know, this, this could happen. And that would be evidence that we're moving more towards Tim Pool's civil war, even though I don't want to admit it. So that's why I just, I want to look for, I want to look for tangible shit. So look, we, we, we can fix this through the system. Okay. I'll run for Senator on the platform of packing the court. Okay. We'll, we'll get all of this sorted go. out. Well, is that another thing? I mean, packing the court kind of would be another. That's true. That would have been. Yeah. I hate that. I, that would also be, a, that would be, I hate it too, but I, it's, I was joking. That, that would be a historic breaking of norms in itself. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. actually, how is that, how is that decided? I don't, 
I mean, I'm assuming the president just can't decide it. Does it have to well, be that's a, the, no one on? knows, but like, I don't, it's not like the, um, the constitution doesn't call out a specific number of people on the Supreme Court. So theoretically, mm-hmm. the president could just say like, oh, I'm going to do like four more nominations in front of the Senate. Let's see what so happens. When FDR <laughs> did it, did he just do it? He just said, I think just... FDR threatened to do it. He didn't actually do it. But I it thought like he, I could have swore he did. Didn't somebody uh, extend in the court, didn't they? Well, the court has, I think FDR the court has been extended to. a couple times, I think, right? But it's not. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Okay. It used to be one judge. <laughs> let's bring it down <laughs> to quiet. yeah. Let's bring it down to one and really up those stakes. Then all that that no, would be exciting. That's, yeah. that's, that's horrible. Terrible. I wasn't a being serious, but yeah. Strategy I know, I know. to be calling them that um, for our own movement. So you kind of feel like that's good. Agree uh, to that? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I think we're I think we're rapidly reaching the point where our ability to uh, achieve our Jeez. political goals is going to come down to convincing liberals, like yourself, um, that this is no longer a political conflict which can be won exclusively through, you know, um, tra- traditional institutionalist political discourse because the Democratic Party isn't really willing or able to operate as an effective agent of change on our behalf, um, instead that we need to be preparing for more dire civil conflict. Uh, and in so doing, we need... I mean, it, he goes straight to that, to like, maybe, why is that not the case? Why are the Democrats not the force we need them to be, or believe them to be? What do They're we not do radical we, enough, dude. Do They're not radical. Convince more people. Do we need to reach out to a broader kind of, you know, the popul- segment of the population? Do we, what, what can we do... With these sort of you know bottom up solutions to things, is like it's that. funny that he's so in favor of democracy because when you have these fringe political beliefs like Bosch has, you're never going to get a majority to sign off on them. It's just impossible. Mm-hmm. Do you so think that's he's why just they push accepted for this. that deep down that it's just no? A- he's pushing for political violence because he knows his uh, people will never vote for his policies. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do you think that he, you know, in his in his mind? recognize that my positions are radical um there's no way i'm going to get people enough people to think as i do how can i get around i don't think that? that's i don't think, I don't think so think yeah i think so. vosh is a bit delusional um, i think there's this myself, issue that yeah. all progressives have where they think that their policies are, would actually be loved by everybody in the united states if they just oh, yeah true them. Progressives yes. always have this idea that like, well, this would be so much more popular. They just we just need to tell them better. We just need to inform them, and so that kind of leads them down these roads to where if they're losing elections, there's only two possible reasons why progressives can right. lose. Either one because of manufactured consent. None of them have read the book, but that's either one because all the corporations <laughs> and everybody have actually like rigged the media landscape in favor of uh, bad candidates, or two, it's because people just don't know yet, so they're uninformed. Um, there's never a good reason why a progressive has lost an election. It can't be that their policies are unpopular. It's always one of those those two reasons um either the election is rigged or like the consent has been manufactured mm-hmm. yeah for all their standing for democracy they really don't know how democracy works which nobody is really gives a fuck how democracy works at the end of the day people just want to expand their political power and democracies can be a useful scapegoat depending on the conversation i think but, it's true yeah very yep. true <clears throat> gotta have those These, the stakes to be understood fully uh which you know obviously i want to impress upon my audience and i do fully believe that yeah, so one of the things that bothers me whenever I hear people talking about we can't keep going with what we're doing and the lack of action from our current Democratic Party is proof that anything other than kind of dramatic, dramatic, maybe revolutionary type um, actions isn't going to work. And they'll say like, uh, an example of this is that's outside the conversation we're having is people will be saying, oh, They've been saying reform the police for ages and nothing's happened. That's why we have to completely abolish the police or something. And to me, it's like, yeah, but they've been saying that and, and we've never gotten people in office or at least enough of them who are actually going to try to reform the police. So it's the same thing um, with this, where you're saying we're, we're past the point. We've seen time and time again, this isn't your- I certainly think the, the abolish the police folks have certainly poisoned a lot of that side of the, the discussion. It's It's that kind of- like that that's a step way too far and so that gets mixed in uh with you know more reasonable kinds of discussions around that and it just goes to show don't be so radical mm-hmm. yeah definitely it, it's it's a stain that spreads well I, it, biden said it hurt the defund the police hurt democrats in the last election horribly yeah well, yeah obviously well but that's what's I, just annoying about the way everything's just like this kind of tribal reaction because instead of 
like the moderate left broadly just saying, you know, defund the police is stupid. That's a ridiculous thing. There's like this tap dance of like, well, it doesn't actually mean that. It means this other thing. And just to me, it feels like it would have been much more effective to just say, this is dumb. We're not doing that. Ignore the extremist. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they need that. Maybe they need that force on the ground to enact change or something. Yeah, big problem that people have is that like somebody will point out that like um, here's the thing that's happening in the United States. And then people will point out like, well, this is a really small thing, so we shouldn't worry about it. Now, I agree with that to some extent, but the problem isn't the small thing. The problem is all the people that will come out to defend that small thing. And then once a crazy crazy amount of people have come out to defend the small thing, you can't afterwards be like, well, you know, it's a small issue. It's like, okay, but if it was a bigger issue, you'd still defend it, wouldn't you? That's, I think that's the issue that a lot of people don't want to contend with sometimes. And it hurts, yeah, it hurts the discourse. Mm -hmm. Well, the the issue is not a small issue though. Police brutality by any means, it's the solution that's the problem. It's well, no, the you, you make the, that like, they propose. The people calling for defund the police is not there. Are many people actually calling for that. And I mean, ca- saying that it's a small number of people advocating for that is fine. It's just it should be there's a small number of people advocating for that. And I think that's crazy. And that second step is very rarely taken. It's always sort of this like dismissive. Oh, it's a very small thing. I'm not going to give a strong denouncement of it whatsoever. Right. The wording, but the party or the left in this country tries a certain strategy while the right goes further and further um, right and it just doesn't work and to me an actual progressive movement that doesn't go all the way to kind of like violent rhetoric could dramatically change the political landscape and bring over a lot of the quote-unquote moderates or center rightish people who don't want to uh murder people right and uh <laughs> so let's so yeah. let's let's who are I, demons? I so he's. I, I think he's completely correct. But the problem is assuming that Vosh's actual goal is to like manifest political power in the real world and and change hearts and minds, which I don't think it is. Right. That it's is true. But if he's going to state channel. that's his goal, then you're going to have. Then you can at least attack him there, right? Right. Um, true. Yeah. Well, to to for me to give Vosh some credibility or some charity here, he did you know, push everyone to vote for Biden. And I don't know if that would have helped him on a purely cynical level with his audience, because I thought it was pretty surprising from his audience when he did come out for that position. No, because when that was happening, he was still poising himself. It's like kind of like a moderate, intelligent person, right? Ah, uh, like that was still his. I name. see. So you're saying now he's since well, he's because now, himself he's, as now an he's changed his rhetoric to like we've already lost the next set of elections and Democrats are toothless. Right. They're not going to do anything anyway. Right. So it's kind of hard to square that away with like we should vote for people like Biden, you know? Has he denounced his vote for Biden at all? No, I don't think he will. I think he'll still probably advocate for people to vote for Democrats, but it'll be a little bit like weak. Like, oh, I guess you could vote for him. But he's like speaking out the other side of his mouth, saying things like Democrats are useless. They don't do anything anyway. So, mm-hmm. Right. Well, I, well, there's there's a useful chunk of the rhetoric, even if even if it's changed, where like he was basically trying to make Trump out to be Hitler. Right. So if, if you think that Trump is Hitler and Biden is like a, a flaccid do nothing Democrat, that's much preferable to Hitler. Right. Um, so, like, if your primary goal is is to make the Republicans out to be as bad as they possibly can be, you could still argue the same thing, and that is what I usually heard him say. It, you know, he wasn't like, "Oh man, Biden is so fucking based." It's like this guy is gonna, I mean, genocide trans people, right? So, <laughs> right. Let's hone in on this. Um, you talk about um, nonviolent rhetoric, okay? So I'm a, I'm a big advocate for defensive violence here. You know, um, I do mm-hmm. think we're in the. That's why he was uh, totally supported Kyle Rittenhouse. But let's continue. <laughs> preliminary stages of a genocide against queer people in particular, but probably adjacent groups as well. Well, but th- this is annoying because this is how all these conversations start. They're like, oh, this is defensive. I mean, this is Russia saying, oh, we're defending the ethnic Russians in Ukraine. Everyone uses this. Or conservatives saying excuse. they're defending themselves from a mass migration of brown people. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Everyone sure. uses this defense excuse. Well, no, Noam Chomsky pointed this out when like the when, it, when the name was changed to the Department of Defense. Like this is very, very effective propaganda. Right. Yeah. And Vosh wow. said the same shit about all kinds of shit. Like he, he was saying that the rhino killing of uh, Danielson was 
in self defense, it's like, oh my like, god, Wait, he him said that him. really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, how can that's you like a say whole that? chapter of what? my video. Because I forgot he, about that. I'm so glad that Go. that killing happened. This sounds dark to say, but like, because <laughs> I was always wondering after the Renton House stuff, I was like, if there was a reverse thing, there's no fucking way these guys would be saying the same shit. And that Reinhold thing was like the perfect like counterexample of like, dude walks up, shoots a dude in the street or whatever, and people are like, oh, yes. well, you know, the, the guy was, he had a knife, and it's like, no, he did. Like, oh, well, he was threatening him. There's no proof of that. Like, oh, well, and it's like, okay, dude, yeah, you obviously don't give a fuck about anything you're talking about. No principles, you know? Mm, it's okay yeah. when we do it. Yes, and that's the way they characterize the Rittenhouse situation. They characterize the Rittenhouse situation as the Reinhold situation. It's so fucking evil. Last I heard, well, Vosh was a submit to the mob guy, though, so I don't buy any of this <laughs> defensive. That was, uh, a, that was a good meme. Uh, and in such an environment, I think it is politically irresponsible to uh, treat the agents of that genocide with anything other than the greatest possible degree of moral condemnation. See, there are historical examples of your strategy not working, usually when fascist governments begin to take power. And it's, and again, this instant jump to genocide, this instant jump to, oh, well, let me find the worst examples, the worst atrocities, and link that without even saying, but it's almost like this understood not even going to establish why or how we're just we're just going to jump there so that you've already linked these horrific things the worst of the worst things to what's yeah. happening now we've, we've, he's, we've he's, already linked them subconsciously but there's, there's there's another important thing that's going on that happens a lot that fucking annoys the shit out of me which is like fascists always do this this is something vosh says all the time we have like two or three data points in the whole of human history like For fascists. We, we don't yeah. have enough information to know what fascists always do Mm -hmm. We just yeah. don't. That just doesn't exist. It seems but to be the, things the, I don't like, though. So you you really should probably. Uh, we do have some that. good studies on authoritarians, though. Authoritarianism we've been studying pretty, mm -hmm. uh, pretty that, rigorously. So that, that that isn't the rhetoric that he uh, prefers. Vosh actually is an authoritarian by those, by those studies. So yeah, it's authoritarianism that's the problem. It it's is these that people kind who. Of it's you, you always have to escape it if you're a, a Voshite or a, you know right. so that kind of person you have to escape the the authoritarian label it's it's something you're constantly running from i wonder how many of them realize they really are that thing do they try to rationalize it as no we're the good authoritarians though do they push it away in the back of the mind and try to rationalize why you know they're not really the thing it's it's the kind of like what i was talking about earlier with uh, like kind of more more passive Christians, there's a part of them that says, yeah, that thing you're doing is bad. And that other part that says, yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's fine because X, Y, Z reasons it's, you know, I, I think it's very simple. And, and like, this is the logic. I'm not an authoritarian because authoritarians are bad and I'm good. And like, that's, that's true. Oh. That is the, that is that aspect, the, the instant label of, I mean, it, it's, you can see it. The, the other side are evil. They are evil. Republicans are evil. And I'm Wouldn't fighting it? the evils. I mean, Demons we're called, we're called Antifa. We're anti-fascists, guys. Would Vosh vote for a authoritarian type personality on the left? You know, if they were running on a platform to end democracy and install socialism in America? I kind of feel like you would. Maybe. Well, I mean, there's, there's, so, many, the there's so many copes to get around that. Yeah, like the, there's so many ways to define that as not authoritarian. I mean, the thing is, it's just such as law, right? You just end up playing fucking word games. Well, the, the the question is, I mean, first of all, no one would run on ending democracy, but they would enact policies that would sort of push you slowly in that direction, Palpatine and then did. you would get into this exact question on the right, like, well, when is political violence, you know, acceptable? Yeah, exactly. acceptable. And I guess, and I didn't think about it until just now, but you know, would it be just if couldn't the political right say, hey? If the Democrats took power and they tried to get rid of uh, the Electoral College, like would that necessitate or would that be would that allow them basically to have violent revolution because of that? Yeah, no, it a, wouldn't. But they but they would question. but they would say that. But again, there's just easy easy cope, right? It's like well, the, the Electoral College is undemocratic, so getting rid of it is more democratic. I mean, well, it depends. Like, upon you can always say how like they did it, though. That would be the important part. I guess. I guess. Yeah, I this mean, is I why I it's so important. I don't think so to, because the things be bipartisan. Like, well the, well, the thing is, like, I don't. I'm not fond at all of Trump, but like, he did get elected, and like, Vosh has a tendency to not acknowledge that, right? It's like sure. Trump did get elected, and 
a lot of the things I really don't like about Trump are popular, right? So it's like you can't just a priori say it's undemocratic when a guy wins. No, the but what but I'm saying is like does what people want him to do. But the pro, but the way it was done is done would matter because I, I would I assume that if you want to get rid of the electoral college, it would take a constitutional amendment. And if they tried to do that without a constitutional amendment, it would I I mean it'd be hard for me to say that that I wouldn't uh, I mean I wouldn't take up arms, but it would be hard for me to denounce people calling for some sort of violence if if that happened, something like that happened, and it didn't I mean, follow if, that process. If it, if it did in practicality require a constitutional amendment, I just I just don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. I understand that. I'm just saying, but what's what I mean? If if they if, would circumvent the if process. they tried to do it without yeah. a constitutional amendment. Yeah. Or there is a outspoken liberal contingent that mocks, downplays, attempts to civilly reason with, pull people over, and then, of course, invariably, they're silenced or killed. The fascists take power uh, anyway, because people just seem to be more responsive to alarmist rhetoric, you know. Um, yes, yeah, I'm, but I'm not talking at all. See, he says, about... he just, sorry, he just said, people are more responsive to alarmist rhetoric. So yeah, you, you, we, we yeah. well, that's, know, okay. well, that's just true. We know <laughs> that that's, <laughs> that's just factually yes, true. Yes. But we know that Vosh knows that that's the thing. That's the yeah. important aspect here he could, because that's what he's doing here. That's exactly what he's using. I mean, he's been, he's worked in politics for years. So of course he knows that. Yeah. Oh, really? How, how do you know that? He's got a YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> uh, minimizing or standing by there's a difference between being you could be super alarmist this is so dangerous without saying this is a class of people that is and just so you know i'm not like morally horrified oh my god he called them i'm literally just thinking from a strategy point of view um with see he's totally tiptoeing around. he's like dude i hate republicans too i feel you no he's i just think it's a good strategy he's, no. no no he's trying to have the more important discussion which is right. surrounding the rhetoric and not debating the merits of whether or not republicans are evil no, yes. Luke, is, Luke is giving an argument as for like how we can win elections more, and Vosh is doing something that, uh, let's be real, maximizes his sub count on YouTube. No, I, like, I, I, I completely let, agree. Luke is doing the right thing here, but he's not. Right, or certainly. He, he's, he's definitely speaking only to the left. Yeah, but that's the point I, of the conversation. Like, I, I was going to have a debate against a conservative about reducing the number of abortions. I would say something like, let's talk about how birth control can help now, I'm not saying that birth control is like moral or good, but like, wouldn't it reduce abortions? Like, I would constantly reframe it that way because I don't want to get into a debate on whether or not abortion yeah, is like, or whether or not birth control is good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. Morally, but just, yeah. Conception doesn't say. That's all they want to debate. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. So I think that Luke's strategy here is good. It's a good one. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I agree, but I'm just, I'm only pointing out that his position for me is unclear, which I just, I would, li I always like to know. It would be nice to have the whole, I don't actually think they're evil. Yes. Uh, that would be Until cool. you Yeah, have but wouldn't that, but wait a minute, wouldn't that then sabotage that. his position mm -hmm. that he's trying to advocate right now about rhetoric? How? Because then Vosh is like, oh, well, you're only saying that because you don't think Republicans are evil. I'm just saying it'd be Doesn't nice. change the I'm debate. Nice. It kind of does, though. I mean, that's, I don't know. The, the, I, don't, I guess I don't the like element of logic. we'll, we'll does, debate the rhetoric because we agree, or we'll be, debate the rhetoric because we're trying to get a goal started. It does. It Look, does okay, only. On. It does only in the sense that Vosh will immediately have zero trust for Luke because that's Luke exactly. Does not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. The it, it doesn't change. It doesn't change the reality of the situation. It doesn't change any of the facts. Well, yeah. And no. It changes the reality of the opinion. conversation. Look, okay, not the reality if, if, of the facts. Who cares in about Vosh's that? mind because he feels slighted because he yeah, feels... Yeah, but Vosh is that is if, half of the conversation, right? We're not robots. We right. have to be mindful of right. how we approach other people. Otherwise, we're just going to shut down right. the conversation completely. And Luke's goal here is to not win a debate. It's to have a conversation, right? Right. right. I mean, like, I, I, I've done almost exactly the same things that Luke is doing just because it's smart. Like, you don't, you don't want to throw something out that's going to identify you as the fucking enemy. You want to be someone who is a reasonable ally talking it's smart or sneaky doomer it, and it's like it's it can smart. be a little bit of it's both effective. right yeah <laughs> both okay okay both. sure sure both. okay got you guys no he should just go he, i mean he didn't he just slap him in the face in the very beginning he I said feel it like a, he did well abs absurd is kind of pretty mild for calling republicans demon and human flesh right so. okay there's there's a big difference between saying your take was 
stupid and saying Republicans mm. aren't evil. Those are <laughs> very, right. very That's different. Just, that is Bosch. a sad thing, Doomer. That's exactly what I'm dialing in on here. What kind of world do we live in? That you you get chastised on social media if you're on the left if you just admit that Republicans aren't demons. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like I've been I've been through it myself. Okay, it's, it's yeah. Hardy, society. That interesting comment in his chat, uh, Vosh. Big difference between what this guy is saying and what saying Republicans or demons does is we're not trying to do a revolution with that rhetoric. We're just trying to get ready people. For when the right wingers start to get violent. Yeah, I mean that's I, look. This is okay. This is you will see this one hundred percent of the fucking time because it's very very effective rhetoric. You don't say you're going on the offense. You say we're going on the defense. And if you aren't actually going on the defense, if they haven't actually done anything yet, you just say, oh, well, they're about to. We're getting ready. Yeah, they're going. I to, mean, we're getting ready. Yeah, we're yeah. prepared mm -hmm. for it. We know they're gonna because especially if they're evil. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is true. I, I'm pretty sure this is true of like almost all conflicts, right? Yeah, they, even you know, in if debates. you're going to go to war with someone. Like, like I'll say in debates, like I, I never open a debate insulting somebody. If they insult me first, I, I'll start to do it. But then I, I always have the appearance of being the victim there. If I open a debate right off the bat, I'm like, you're a fucking moron or whatever. People are going to view me as the aggressor. But if I let the other person lead on stuff like that, it always makes me look better. Um, even rhetorically, like that's a true thing. Mm -hmm. I got to try to do that. That sounds so smart. I just I can't <laughs> help myself. Jangles drive me insane. What am I going to do? Damn, Jangles. Yeah, I, Adam, Adam, you fuck that up. <laughs> I can't help myself. I know. People into a non-human category because I feel like I've heard you talk about this on stream before. Non-human category. Even with people like Nazis, if we say, okay, they're monsters, they're not human, they're something different, then we're not, yeah, I definitely have heard you talk about this, um, then we're not able to understand, okay, how do they get there? How could we take them out of it? Or how could we even fight them? Because you don't really know how Certainly to conceptualize a better strategy to take. an inhuman monster. I agree with can, that from an yeah. analytical perspective when we're talking about average people not so much when we're talking about politicians you know there for instance there's a difference between politicians some random 16 year old neo-nazi and nick fuentes and that nick fuentes not only perpetuates the system but actively benefits from his participation in it same with the republican politicians you know um i think that oftentimes pulling people out of very like far-right movements is about helping them understand they've been duped misled their life is being harmed but for these people do you think do you think he purposefully w is making sure not to say but uh, not pulling people from far left positions you know well, he's not gonna do that as a problem but i mean i don't think that's how you pull people out of far right positions i think you have to do the daryl davis approach you have to show people that you know you that you can both be part of the in group that you're that you're not an other you can have sh share common interests and well, you know common what's values pretty, what's pretty interesting is that pulling people out of like being nazis used to be a really big thing that Bosch did. It was like one a priority of his. Um, and he has his own perspective on it. Uh, this quite a bit different than Daryl Davis. Um, but well, no, didn't he, he never not did. Wait, wait. He never did. He. I thought he claimed to do that because of Faraday speaks. And there wasn't there someone else that said that? It's it's my perspective that he probably did some good in that in that mm -hmm. regard. Damn. Like, yeah. I, I I don't know how much, but it, that, that definitely used I'm to skeptical, be a thing. But They're like, hey. I will I will be based and fucking defend Vosh, okay? When when he, when he does things that are potentially effective. So one thing one thing he said was that he'll go into um, arguments with like Nazi people who go on the kill stream or whatever the fuck, and he's like, it's less about being right and it's more about looking strong. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. If you can if you can make someone look stupid, that's far more effective than telling an effective argument. Because let's be frank, the audience doesn't even track the argument half the time. Yeah, the right, audience true. knows who who is per, per, like. Uh, what's it called like projecting strength in the conversation right yeah Vosh right. definitely so, used to be like a de-radicalizer uh, like yeah that used to be like his big thing he'd go into right-leaning spaces kind of like me and then like have arguments with people and like not look like a soy boy fucking leftist that was his goal earlier and i think he did that decently well mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry it wasn't uh caleb said he was de-radicalized by contra points so yeah uh, and me i was mentioned that article as well thank you but oh that's you right no were. one no one cared yeah. about you because you were not a trans woman so Contra got yeah. billing and you got yeah. straight, <laughs> straight white male. Obviously, you got moved to the bottom right. there. Caleb, the other day, Caleb told me that Vosh was actually not a socialist and he's just a liberal. So I guess he's become radicalized himself now, which is sad. Ouch. People, their life isn't being harmed. Matt Gates' life is not being worsened by being a fascist in power. It's benefited significantly. So at that point, it's no longer a matter of convincing. What did... What did Matt Gates do that and 
gets him the label of fascist. Yeah, do you th- could could a re- could an actual fascist get elected in the Republican Party? I don't. What? Trump did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, don't know I think given I'm... the opportunity to be Trump would absolutely be a fascist. The, our institutions, thankfully, were strong enough for him not to be. But he definitely has all the markings of the kind of person that would be. Absolutely. <clears throat> I don't know that. I don't know that that's true. I'm reading Kellyanne Conway's book, and she was his most trusted advisor. And I just I mean, the, the Trump picture did she everything of like the stoking of the racial fears constantly. The idea of banning Muslims and Mexicans from coming to the United States, wanting to supersede election results because he did, didn't disagree with them, looking for every possible way to break institutions and get around them to enact what he wanted to, saying things like we have a national security crisis and that's why I'm going to go and enforce my own immigration policy on the border, constantly making enemies out of like every country that we used to be friends with, the hyperfixation on isolationism when it came to economic policy and like military we, things we, like okay, Trump is in every you've way got, side shape or form he's like a fashion you've got right? your cnn talking points memorized I it's, not, it's not it's not talking <laughs> point i'm just saying that like given the opportunity to I, do I so no, trump absolutely would be a fascist this is like it's part and parcel of what he does for sure he, okay, so look at the even the clearing the, the clearing the park story you, do you know that that wasn't that's not a that's like fake news that's, that's not a real was story bullshit, but it's not anything yeah. to do with him being a uh, right, but so that's not what I, I, I think. I, like, I, 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 I basically, wait, I, I think Adam, I think it comes down more to not. Well, first of all, I don't, I don't think anyone here is going to argue that Trump has some ideology that he's really focused on. I think it's more just that Trump want to do whatever he wants to do, and he's not going to let. He doesn't want to let any rules or institutions stop him. And that can very le- easily lead someone down the path of being, you know, authoritarian. Yeah, that is like a fashion thing. Like, look how often he like was saying things like the media is the enemy of the people. I want to open up libel and defamation law so I can sue the media when they publish bad shit about me. Like, well, the people do want to. I mean, I, defamation is a problem. People lying in the media is a problem. <laughs> but I mean, like when, when your okay. president is telling you that he wants people to sue the media for posting bad shit about him, that's a red flag. Well, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's yeah. Right. Like, it, it, if you're in the president situation, but the media is actually lying about you. And like, Kellyanne, I, Kellyanne, Con- listen, Trump, call, Trump had his attorney call Kellyanne Conway and try and get her to rig the the straw poll in uh, the CPAC straw poll or whatever. And really? she wouldn't even, yeah, she wouldn't even rig. He couldn't even get the fucking straw poll. Rigged. Yeah, but that that kind of that, helps Destiny's argument. That doesn't. That's exactly help. the point. He's trying to do shit, and people don't let it. Wait, like, but okay, that's, hold on, hold on. Well, that is I, I, any I, that is Adam, any Adam, politician. Adam, Adam, she says she literally not, no, says no, she no, literally that is says not, no. That is not any politician. Okay? Bullshit. I would I would have agreed with you until the election Doomer. shit. The Doomer. election shit in twenty twenty is maybe the scariest shit I've seen in my life. Having Doomer. a president Terrifying. call a governor okay? saying I need you to find twenty three thousand four hundred eighty two votes. That is wild. That, that is unprecedented. That is, wild shit. That is that is fake news too because he was. Not, not talking about making up the votes. He was talking about actually counting votes. Okay, hold on. That's yeah. not fake news. You can literally listen to the phone call, which we did. And number two, he was looking for yes. the number of votes that he needed to win the election. You listen. You listen to a out of context clip of the no of the actual phone. <laughs> what? Adam? No. <laughs> wait, wait. Hold on. Wait. Explain to me the context. There's a longer of... phone conversation out there. I listened to the whole thing. Okay? What is the appropriate? He's, phone? he's not. He is not talking about breaking the law in any way, shape, or form. Let me and let me get back to the straw poll thing because I wanted to tell something to Doomer here. Kellyanne Conway has run the straw poll for years and years and years, and she said a lot of people call her and ask her to fucking rig the straw poll. So it's not just a Trump thing. It's a, any fucking politician. Okay, I, don't, I don't know who brought up the straw. I don't care about the straw poll. I'm talking about our mm-hmm. elections for president of the United States. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. I don't know what the straw no, poll is. I, don't... I agree. I totally agree. But his behavior is unprecedented. Yes, I completely agree. I like. And the goal the... was to overturn the, the norms of how we elect a president, right? Are we agreeing on this or? Yes, it was. Normally, people would have stepped back and said, you know, I concede, obviously. It's a close no, election. No, that's though. not I'm not talking about step back and I concede. I'm talking about expecting the vice president of the United States to not certify the vote. I'm talking about making phone calls to governors, asking them to find illegal votes. I'm talking about constantly undermining every part of the electoral process, well, saying for, the mail-in for, ballots all, were rigged. First of all, like, for, hey, first of yeah, all, Dustin, I'm not, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not contesting. <laughs> I'm not contesting. The only thing I'm contesting is that phone call because there's a longer version of the phone call. And obviously the media has 
spun the story as in Trump was asking them to fake votes, fake ballots. He wasn't to, asking to them do. outright to do it, but it was like, a, don't you think no, there's some illegal talking, stuff here that look, we can probably look, find? No, in the longer version of the phone call, he talks about counties that they originally had won in the previous election and then flipped the other way around and that he only wanted a, a a recount in these certain counties. And that's why he's saying, you know, I only need to find this many votes. And that's why I'm only focused on recounts in these but particular like, that, counties. Just listen to what you're saying, right? He, like he's literally quoted that, as saying, you, what you I want to do is understand. this. I just want to find 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have because we won the state. Like, how, like this doesn't sound like a good faith. Per did, what other hold, phone calls hold, did he make hold, to other states on, trying to? There's two, there's two positions here. There's Trump is calling a a an election official to say make up a bunch of votes and just stuff them in there and we're done well, he's not and there's say the position that and there is the position that trump believes the election has been uh you know wrongly counted and that we need a recount no, let, let, no, and we need me, a recount in certain areas let, let me let me introduce a third position he doesn't like the election results and he's going to do what he reasonably can without making himself look like a complete well he did look like a lunatic yeah he looked like within, a lunatic a already tolerance. you can't he say did that basically Th everything this is he like, reasonably could i hate to godwin's lows and i'm not i don't think any of you are nazis i don't mean that at all of course i've never right. said it but like this is Yay. like the equivalent argument to when like um when when like nazi apologists are like well there's not a direct order from hitler saying we Dest need to kill all the Destiny. jews and it's like of Dest course trump is never going to call someone to be like god Guys, we need to rig the election. Obviously. Destiny, destiny. I first of all, I didn't vote for Trump. I could care less that Trump I'm not didn't, win, he did. <laughs> didn't win the election. I the thing that I okay, care wait, about wait, 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 is on. honesty in media, and that that you got to admit honesty that in media. story. Trump was saying the election was going to be rigged eight fucking months in advance. Yeah, and true. Fucking crazy. He's going off like fucking crazy. Did you see his fucking Twitter during the election? <laughs> it was terrifying. Like it, it was, it was fucking mental. And then the, and then the, the speech that he gave beforehand. Getting Fuck completely off. triggered. Is so fucking <laughs> I, yeah, I'm triggered. It was terrifying. The like, speech that he gave at White House that we have to Doomer, fight back Doomer, for our democracy and shit. Like. <laughs> Doomer, I didn't realize that you had TDS. I'm sorry that I didn't. Oh, no. Actually, yeah, it's, it's, the TDS I'm sorry, claim has come out. I'm, TDS. I'm sorry that I didn't put, it's, you know, a look, Adam, trigger I'm warning the, I'm, on this I'm conversation. The, I'm proud to be the first person in history to have TDS and VDS, okay? <laughs> I have DS about everybody, okay? I've got ADS. I've got SCS. I've got RDS. I've got I've got all this shit, okay? I'm fucking there is a, That shit was scary. There is a longer version of that, that conversation. That, that, doesn't, that completely... conversation is one data point of 200. And that even the longer version isn't a good look for a president to ask for votes. <laughs> but I mean, like, I do agree with you. There was no conversation where Trump said, hey, we need to rig the election. That's true. That conversation never yes. happened. But that's never going to be a conversation that somebody trying to rig an election is going to have. So, of course. so you're you're saying basically that he's asking for it without asking. For of course. It. Absolutely. Yes. Of course. Yes. Okay. Well, that is your belief. I mean, I can't read minds or anything. So, I mean. Well, I mean, we can look at his other behavior. Did he thank, call other thankfully, states? Thankfully, okay, you, hold on, hold on, thankfully hold on, Destiny hold on. can I, read minds. So. Let, 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 <laughs> let me try and build a bridge, Adam. Would Destiny, you how do you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't build a, bridge. You, have hold on, you build a bridge. He's building a bridge. Let him build a bridge. Adam, Adam, let me let me build a bridge. Do you think that Trump's behavior was the most fascist thing we've seen from a like from a presidential candidate in 30 years? January 6th was insane. January no I think what he did on January 6th was insane and totally fucking stupid and uh, like his entire speech on January 6th what he's trying what he's asking is has there been a president that's been more fascist than Donald Trump well I I feel like it's every a, it's a no it's a no it's an obvious well, let him no answer one, maybe. what 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 about Nixon I mean Nixon was literally fucking bugging the office of the fucking Democratic National Yeah, Nixon's shit committee. was bad, but honest to God, compared to what Trump I mean, did, I think Trump was way worse. Nixon like Nixon, literally did on, Nixon, espionage Nixon, on wait, his Nixon political said, rivals. So Nixon I mean, sabotaged peace talks to continue the Vietnam War. Nixon was pretty fucking bad. He was yes, for so sure. What the fuck? What the that was fuck? that was sixty years ago. So he's the most fascist president in 60 I mean, years. They're... We don't need to split hairs. Oh, is he a fascist? Isn't he a fascist? Dumb Technically, Trump was impeached this more times than Nixon was. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> well, is true. it, is it just true. the term? I feel like it's just the term fascist that you're kind of hung up on, Adam. 
when I think of fascists, I think of like one one bend of fascism is this concept of authoritarianism. It's this concept of like you are above the democratic norms, you are above the institutions, you are above Mm -hmm. the law. And Trump acted like that every single step of the way. And him constantly attacking our electoral process when you're the president is a pretty scary thing. And I think there's a lot of evidence of that. I mean, I don't know that I don't know that he did think he was above the law, but. Well, I mean, would you, you, you would say he that, didn't have you respect? Could definitely for, make that argument. You would say he didn't have respect for the processes and institutions of our country. No, I would say that he's constantly trying to undermine them. I would make that statement way more extreme. Right? No, I'm I'm saying for Adam, so kind of soft. The well, he the, did he have respect for those institutions? I mean, he did when he does when they work in when his favor. Winning? He does it when. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey, listen, Destiny, how is this any different than Vosch's position? It doesn't need to be. Wait, Vosch wasn't president. I mean, if you're going to try to get me to defend Vosch's position, I'm not. Vosch would be a fucking fascist if he had the opportunity as well with other racial bent. Well, sure. Va- right. I, I have no doubt that vo- that Trump believes that he won the election and that the, it was stolen from him by, like, he probably watches uh, Dinesh D'Souza's movie would like just oh my god they, they can't believe they did this to me like he watches it like it's it's real yeah mm-hmm. Vaught, he's completely he believes that so every I, single person around him told him no his intelligence agencies told him no bar told him no like yeah, but he doesn't trust any of those he doesn't agencies. trust anybody well at what yeah. point then are you like a delusional like fine then maybe he maybe he's like a no skin- he is delusional okay. i'm Let's, not Let's, I'm not going to argue Trump is not delusional. What? The, okay, you think let's, I'm crazy? Let's, okay, I'll, I'm going to build a bridge now, okay? I'll meet you halfway. I would not call Trump a fascist. I'll call him a schizo-fascist, okay? He was a fascist, but only because he had, like, this schizophrenic understanding of the world where he was just so delusional that it drove him to try to break every single democratic norm we ever fucking had. So I'll, I'll meet you halfway there, okay? Well, he did, he did break... Yeah, he did break norms. I mean, I'm not arguing about that, but... Well, and also, I mean, whether what your intentions are, whether you think you're acting honestly or not, I mean, that doesn't really have anything to do with fascism or authoritarianism, right? Like, you can think you honestly won and then break all the norms. It still would be an authoritarian power grab. Well, right? well it, true. You're discussing the reasons behind it all. Why? If you, the thing is, though, if you believe, if you, like the the institutions have already been subverted in his eyes. So I understand the damage has already been done. Have yeah. they been subverted assume, or did you just yeah. think they've been subverted? Because uh, he didn't I don't get the think they've been, they I do not. No, no, I'm I saying do what not think, think that they've been subverted. Probably, I think that I don't think he thought. Like, isn't he, what was his <laughs> one quote? Like the, the polls are real, but the news is fake. Like when you're picking and choosing this hard yeah. at some point, you're going to say, I just don't think he's a good faith actor. Right. Or right. he is a schizo fascist, which I was willing to accept. If you want well, to listen, know. I appreciate Adam steel manning. The chat, okay. <laughs> we need. I mean, dude, fuck the ch- the chat is so wrong. <laughs> pull the pull the, the chat pull is so fucking our chat, hard. Doomer. Okay. Pull let me, let me the go ca- look at Destiny's chat. It's probably a lot more. Look the call. Than if you listen, if you listen to the call, it's the perfect duck rabbit thing. You can hear it either way. It, it's it's pretty obvious. So sure, I mean, but it's the same thing the with the call. Ukraine call, which I think was far more obviously, in you know, wrong. Right. So do you, so. Sitch, I'm interested. Do you think? Well, I listen. I have resident, <laughs> saying, I'm the resident TDS on the stream, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm trying to like. Well, no. How look? Guy. How do you? What? what literally, th- it just seems so implausible to me mm-hmm. that he would call up an election official, and you know the votes are either out there or they're not out there. But to to insinuate that he covertly wants this election official to what fill in a bunch of ballots or just make a bunch of ballots up or hire people to make up a bunch of ballots or flip a switch on some machine somewhere. I mean, he, this guy literally announced that he'd won the presidency before even the votes were fucking counted. It was Pence that walked us back from that cliff Wait, on election you wanna, night. Hold, hold on. Do you just, I'm focusing in on this one point, sure. Justin. Yeah. Do you accept though that uh, like, why would I call somebody on the phone, some election official official that I don't have any kind of relationship with? What exactly am I asking them if your narrative is correct? You're asking them to see what they can do, wink, wink, to maybe like drum up some yeah, votes. But what that is you. that? Who the what fuck knows they, what, what it is? Trump doesn't know anything about the, any of the electoral process. Maybe it's finding a box of ballots process. somewhere. Maybe it's discounting some ballots. Maybe saying some votes shouldn't have counted. I don't know. It could be fucking anything. But like it was I obvious. Just find it was, it, I find it hard to believe that Kellyanne Conway wouldn't step in and go, "This is, that's a little fucking, you can't do that. <laughs> it's like, that's insane. Okay. Here, here, here's a question for you, Adam. 
if Justin Trudeau did exactly the same things during an election that Trump did, would people uh, on the right call him a fascist? Absolutely. Sorry. I, I don't, they do call him a fascist. Yeah. He, and he, hasn't he done some more things? I don't look. I don't give a shit about Canada. Okay. I, I mean, he don't know what Canada's Can- out there. Listen, Canada is not even a country in my eyes. So I mean, I'm with you there. <laughs> it's, it's it's an outpost for maybe North East Dakota. That's where we get our hot celebrities. That's all Canada, I know. Canada is like in Stardew Valley, south of your base, when you put fucking maple things on anyway, the trees and you just go down every couple days. We should move on. Okay. Just remember, I was right about this. You guys, <laughs> one day we'll hear I'm the sure entire phone the, call, the and you'll be like, stream. you'll be like, oh my god. I can't believe Adam was right. <laughs> he was just calling genuinely concerned about the uh, Georgia election process. <laughs> how, did I, how did I miss Trump's genuine concern for this one state that might have been pivotal in winning this election and then calling for the exact amount of votes that he needed plus one to win? Of course he was just concerned. Fuck, I'll listen to it afterwards and I'll see. Maybe maybe my one, mind will change. One, one last, uh, just, I <laughs> yeah. mean, I, I think you just have to realize that he, he was focused on a recount of the election. Like he had assumed ballots were incorrectly counted. So he wasn't looking for just finding new ballots. He was saying, "Hey, we need to recount, and these are the these are the counties that are likely where the mistakes were made." That's basically what he was saying. Okay. But anyway, let's move on. Let's move on from TDS to VDS. Let's get back to where we're supposed <laughs> yeah. to be. Okay. Plus, it, I feel like the guy in the Judean people's front saying, "Brothers, brothers, the Romans—they're the real enemy." Destin, <laughs> you you have to come back on again too because we needed to talk about Jordan Peterson. I don't want to get into it here, but you you constantly like. You're gonna drag us into a different conversation. I know, I know. we can't. We can't. It. We can't do it now. We can't do it now. But I well, I just I think Jordan I don't Peterson think... is based. As long as he's talking okay. about psychology and nothing else, because anytime right, he opens his mouth about anything else, is a fucking moron. I don't think you're being. I just don't think you're being fair on the Jordan Peterson in front. But let's talk about that next time. Let's move back on okay. to this. Ah uh, yes. This uh, this see. communist demon in human what, what, form. What, 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 one quick second. I, I have a, a message from a friend of the show. Okay. Yeah. Dev says uh, Trudeau actually did something comparable with the SNC Lavalin scandal. Telling the minister of justice she didn't see what she thought she saw. I don't know what the fuck that means. Dev wanted me to say it. We, we just right. Continue on. The, well, no, the the Mikey face Dev. photos. You didn't see that, Mikey. You thought it was. Uh, I think it probably had something to do with the elections, but anyway. Nice. Convincing them removing the. It's a matter of fermenting a suitable degree of political opposition, which obviously I believe is uh, farther than what you might believe it needs to be. The crazy thing, though, about this new. Uh, sect of the Republican Party, this we think of as the more fascistic, far, far right um, kind of category, is they are very much, not on some things, they're still very pro-corporate a lot of times, stuff like that, but in the areas where, that they really define them, they're actually representing a lot of their base very well. And so in a democracy, they're just very clearly self-interested politicians who are seeing a increasingly radicalized base that wants to get meat to, thrown to them all the time um calling for that and they they answer and so it's not this is this is the the polit- this is what's called in political sphere is fears the the big weld strategy the what the one that is you know what we're gonna let that one sit there and if you want to oh no you, you we're just gonna carry right along is what we're gonna well do. no but this is seems like a sort of inconsistency because in you know, I think Vaj says in this conversation in the earlier videos, he's like, I'm not blaming so much the voters. Yeah, you know, you're blaming right. the politicians, but the pol- but the politicians are doing what are catering they think to the, the voters. voters want. Yeah. 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 No, that's I'm, not how um that's not how a lot of people view politicians on the left or right. Well, I know he doesn't view it yeah. that way. People think but. that politicians act independently and that getting votes isn't like a real thing. You just get them because you buy elections or whatever. That's a really popular You don't buy that though, right, Destiny? You... No, that's absurd, but nobody views yeah, okay, the electoral good. process as being valid in the United States anymore. People on the far right and left think that it's all bought and paid for, basically. Mm-hmm. It's all theater. Though, right. I would I would think like if it were to come to violence, I don't think Vosh would really, if we're in the midst of like some violence, you know, you know, the left and the right are shooting each other. I don't think Vosh should be out here saying, like, brothers, just shoot the police and the politicians don't shoot, like, Republican voters. I don't think that distinction would of be Of course made. not. Of course not. He'd be like, oh, look, a Trump sticker on a car. Get him! <laughs> I like, uh, to me, someone who's evil, and kind of what you were talking about in your video that I'm responding to, was, listen, we can reason and understand people when they're doing it, for their own gain but we can't understand people 
when it's literally just to make somebody suffer. And in the case of the politicians like Mac H that you're talking about, it's not just to make people suffer. It is making people suffer and it's horrible, but it's out of complete self-interest. As you just said, he's benefiting from his base loving him because he's doing all these radical actions. At least he knows it's inadvertent. He's saying so. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're willing to accept that the voters aren't just, uh, you know, demons and human flesh, well, then the politicians aren't really either just really self-interested people. Yeah, Farsh's political understanding is so naive. <laughs> he thinks they're doing it because they want to torture just people. want to hurt people. He yeah. doesn't understand that they have, uh, their voters have desires that are in conflict to the desires of him and his voter base. Yeah, there, there's that understanding with a lot it's of people. So simple. And I'm sure there's plenty of politicians and a, a lot of just a lot of normal people who realize, yeah, the things that I want politically, it will. Some people will be negatively affected by it, and that sure. sucks. But yeah, like that. This recognition that yeah, like I'm not, I'm not some utopian. Right. Like not everyone's going to benefit from this, and I don't like that. But maybe I just think that's going to be the best overall. Im it's immigration. Like Immigration is a hot button topic because there are economic winners and losers in the in any change in immigration. So obviously there's going to be conflict over that. But the easiest the easiest thing for Democrats to do and what they they've been doing this forever now is just to hit everyone with a racist stick. And and uh, immigration is a great place where they can do that. Now they can do it with the trans stuff as well. In terms to, of uh, stay in office, in terms of their moral, uh, you know how I would judge them morally. I can't say there would be that much of a difference. The only difference is how you can treat them in terms of what approaches are politically efficacious. And I always think that it's more acceptable to take hardline uh, stances against people in power than uh, you know just random citizens, even if they have the same political positions. Also, of course. Even the farthest right random Republican dipshits can potentially be convinced out of their positions. You can't convince a politician out of their positions. Right, their lot, whole but, job but, is to do the things that they say they're going to do. You can't Look, he kind of gets it here. <laughs> kind of, but he's actually missing it. That's not true. Politicians will change their views to reflect the voting population. They do sure, right. of course they Look will. Look at Biden yeah. and Hillary. I'm um, changing their scans on like 15 an hour minimum wage because of things like what Bernie said and how popular those movements got. Like politicians right. will update their views to reflect their Clinton. constituents. Or the, uh, you know, to Obama stay in power, yes. Was kind of hiding his position on gay marriage. Oh, until, of course. You know, Biden yeah. kind of usurped him. But that's why his, his position doesn't make sense here because if you can change, if he thinks you can change Republican voters' minds, then you, that's how you would change Republican politicians. I mean, I guess maybe. Well, no, he's saying the politicians he operate independently from. Voters. Right. He thinks they're, they're, all, like, they're paid off yeah. by some evil force or something. Yeah. 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 The manufacturing consent view of the world, which I just. Well, I don't... So, yeah, I guess he thinks the the power or the views come top down as opposed to. Well, I mean, I guess they do come top down. I guess it's kind of mixed. To but, some extent, it's a yeah. it's a back and forth, obviously. Right. There but is. We an... want to be. In like a persuasion mode, not a violence mode. Go ahead, Dustin. I think there is an Overton window that encapsulates everything that the American public thinks about a given set of issues. And politicians' goal is to try to find where that window is and then speak to the people that exist there. That's the goal. So, yeah. I mean, politicians and think tanks and everybody can also move the window around a little bit. People can move the window around a little bit. But like a politician's goal is not going to be to dramatically move the window. That's a losing strategy. And you see this happen time and time and time again, where people think that they can change everybody's mind on issues and they're going to bring in all these voters that normally don't vote. And they're going to actually, and you can't do that. You're like, you can move people a little bit, but for the most part, people believe the things they do and you have to identify that and then play to that. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to think about it, because I think too many people view Trump as like he radicalized the Republicans when <laughs> I think he just found where the Overton window exactly. was. He just found a niche yeah. to kind of sneak in there that no one was really speaking to. Mm -hmm. What well, and he brought in a lot of never voters. So that's yeah. always celebrity. Well, just, I mean, that. it seems it's almost the same thing. Like, you know, we hear this so much from a lot of mainstream media sources that like YouTubers are and twitch streamers are radicalizing their audiences but i, I kind of feel like it's the opposite i feel like it's you know you have these political commentators and they see that their audience 
generally is more you know unidirectional their audience kind of radicalizes the streamer i think you can radicalize an audience but the relationship there is fundamentally different because we're like we're, we're more as creepy as they say we're more like friends than politicians because you're mm -hmm. spending hours and hours and hours consuming our content we have a higher chance of actually shifting your point of view on something than a politician that you might only see yeah, you know, a few days more ago. interaction yeah. is possible sure it just seems to me like whenever we talk to someone or we, we watch their content, the chat seems always way more extreme politically than the actual person is. And they, there is sort of this audience capture thing that it's happens. It's a lot in our easier sphere. to be that way when you're just some person in chat. As That also depends. Well, might be yeah, people course, hiding their power level too, you know, it kind of depends of course, on what. Right. I mean, we're definitely seeing that in your chat. Not our <laughs> chat. <laughs> our chat. I love our chat. Our were you, chat were you, were you oh, looking man. at your chat? I don't know. I man. was looking at our chat and seeing that it was nothing but nuanced. I'm watching a lot. Dude, there's this guy in chat called okay. Luke, and he hates me, man. Oh, my God. I really? Oh, wow. yeah. There's a few of them in there. This Gene girl, too. Woo, there's a lot of spicy chatters out there, but it's fun. It's all good. They don't like you? No. Maybe we should good. ban them. No, 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 no. no. I, like, <laughs> I like the hate. I'm basking what, in it. What is your, what is your, if we're talking about Trump again? Thank you, Sitch. What the fuck? I didn't, wait, I what? You brought Trump up again. You did. So, uh, do you have a take uh, on Steve Bannon, uh, Destiny? What about like him? Like a well, what what is the what is the take on the left about Steve Bannon? I don't think we think think about Bannon anymore. Wait. Okay. Okay. Why, Why did you bring wondering? that up? That seems so random. Well, because I I hear a lot of I sometimes I hear people on the left making the argument that's like Steve Bannon is the power broker. He's the Carl Rove of of uh, Trump. I think for a they while think. people saw him as making a lot of wasn't he the one I could be wrong, but wasn't he the one that ultimately decided to support Roy Moore? Wasn't that a big thing that he decided? Or am I making that up? I don't remember. He but, seen in the book he seems to have like no power whatsoever and he wasn't he, even in the Trump administration. There, there was that some long. issue that yeah. he pushed Trump to support that and ended up blowing in his face, and I think that was sort of the beginning of their fall. I don't remember what it was though. Yeah. I thought it was Roy Moore. Somebody can check me if I'm wrong. But maybe it might not. It might not have been. Maybe awesome. Kelly and Conway basically just destroy Steve Bannon in this book. It's sure, not, but weren't it's they like pretty. also like politically rivals too? Like, wouldn't it make sense that she would be shitting on Banner a lot? Yeah, well, I think, I Kelly, think he isn't, was isn't, a political isn't, rival with her. Yeah, definitely. Kelly and Conway just sort of like a normal, you know, Republican, a normal or, person. Yes, exactly. No, <laughs> I mean Steve Bannon. I don't know what exactly. Steve, yeah, what Steve his, Bannon he's is more like in the, is weird. Yes. He's sort of isn't he sort of flirting with the neo reactionary sort of side of things, or was Kelly and Conway just kind yeah, of yeah? That like was a his Republican. background in media, wasn't he? The head of um, fuck. What was the name of the yeah. media thing that he Breitbart, was? Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, wait, hold on. Kelly and Conway, she was fucking insane, wasn't she? I don't remember. Was she the one that gave us like Bowling Green and like the fucking alternative facts? Look, Destiny knows how to use Wikipedia. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Wait, Wikipedia what? To look up the crazy I know what you're looking up. I'm not looking. Hold on, wait, hold on. I literally, my job is talking about politics. What do you mean? You think I have to Wikipedia the crazy fucking statements that Kellyanne Conway made? She does address the alternative facts thing in the book. And mm -hmm. I, but I she I haven't got to Bowling Green. I don't know what that is yet. So. Yeah, it's nothing. She they, it was either her or Trump made the statement like, look at what happened. Oh no, there was the look at what happened to Sweden. But it was she referenced something called the Bowling Green massacre, and it's, it's just like not anything. It's not a real thing. Oh yes, she thought oh. there's some some like immigrants came across the border and killed people. That never happened. Okay, yeah. well. Anyway, Destiny Lucas wants you to know that he actually loves you and just wants you to unban him from his chat. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that earlier. He said that I was one of the only chats that he had been banned in, so it must be an extremist there chat. You go. Like that. Yeah, well. Yes, Steve Bannon. Hex says Steve Bannon is 100% for the dark enlightenment. Okay. Oh, so he is a neo reactionary. Wow. I guess yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not a fan, but <laughs> can't debate them out of that. Right, but if someone's listening to you walk them through okay these people picture them are demons in human flesh then it stops <laughs> there like if i'm running down that logic train and I'm well i hear someone say demons in human flesh and i'm instantly just like oh i'm gonna go somewhere else you're crazy i'm leaving oh biden <laughs> i'm thinking okay this is the person that i fully to be fair, I could imagine Biden saying. I know. Could, if you told me Biden is a demon in human flesh, I might believe you. I mean, he <laughs> seems old enough to be. Trust. I would stop the analysis there because if someone is truly purely evil, they're just Satan, then they're just trying to harm people. And I can't really understand how do we combat them because they're just going, going, going. No, Vosh, Vosh thinks the way you combat them is combat. Yes, right. literal combat.
But if you understand that they're just trying to represent a, a radical uh, base, and then you also understand that the best thing you can do to um, change the radical base's mind is not address them in such a way, then the goal now you have an, an actual. I think you're conflating a, a few to, things. There's no nothing mutually exclusive there. You can say a person is evil while also recognizing there are socioeconomic justifications for their behavior. Evil is but not, really a, not the analysis that you had. It was just like, that's well, it. Game at over. No point, we can't pull them out of it. But we totally no can't pull voters I, out of it. I've never made this an intrinsic thing. Yeah, I'm so glad it you played the like clips. You, you mm -hmm. never made, he never made a socioeconomic argument for abortion or anything like that. No, his, yeah. his, I mean, we didn't watch the whole thing, but his only argument was that you know, Republicans just want to control women. Yeah, that that's not. Yeah. That's just what they want to I do. I mean, unless they're he's going to control them like they're going to make cookies and they're going to sell them or something. <laughs> it's only through socioeconomic <laughs> well, no, he, he, reasons why. What, they what he means is them. like, I'm assuming what he means is like, oh, if someone, you know, is a uh, carjack someone and kills someone. They'd be like, well, you know, the socioeconomic conditions place them in that role of, you know, being poor and engaging in the carjacking, you know, yada, 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 yada. But I don't think that applies to his rhetoric when he talks about Republicans being evil. He's not really giving some sort of justification at all, really, for their beliefs. Right. Yeah. That's the problem that we have. But I have it. Jeez. Doomer can think whatever he wants. <laughs> This isn't like people being born evil. Well, yeah. Maybe you oh, could course. say it's their job to be evil. But even evil isn't like a real moral category. The closest thing that I could really come up to it, you know, outside of rhetorical shorthand is um, the axioms that they are attempting to maximize with their behavior. Are isn't evil a moral category? Yeah, so the That's one, like the Vosh learned is. a couple words for me about like ethics. <laughs> and he doesn't like, actually know any of the con yeah, anything surrounding it. So basically, anytime Vosh starts talking about ethics, you can just fast forward. The whole conversation is basically going to be him saying in fancier words, good things are good and bad things are bad. And he does this over and over <laughs> oh, again. And I it's agree so with that. unbelievably painful to listen to him try to stumble through. And, he, and he'll do this. He'll reiterate this a few times when it seems like he's justifying something. He'll be like, well, you know, consequentially, if it led to good things, then I would say that it's a good thing. But, you know, if it didn't, then it would. It's like, okay, yeah, but that's the whole point is whether you think it would or wouldn't, though, right? Like, he, he does this type of thing a lot. It's really mm -hmm. cringe. He's, he's beyond, it. yeah, it's, it's fucking insane. The, the thing I noticed him doing over and over again was that, like, if someone on his side did something bad, he would start talking about their motives. Right. And then if someone he doesn't like does something bad, he'll be like, oh, motives don't matter. I'm an right. actual consequentialist. Right. The only thing that matters are the outcomes. And it's just like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty classic, you know, self-serving bias from a group. It just doesn't, I think it's called the fundamental attribution about. error. It's where you um, you will whenever yes. you do something bad, it's because you have really, really good reasons for it. Or when somebody you like does it. But when somebody else does something bad, you only look at the action and then you judge them for the action and you don't look at the actual. Yeah. Terrible. Those so kind of like if evil. we like make up a bunch of excuses why Trump would call a governor to look for eleven thousand four hundred. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that was aimed at me, guys. If you guys didn't recognize that, I, that did, was, oh, I missed that's that. called a, that. that is oh, called a okay. callback. That is oh. that's comedy gold right there. Thank you, Destiny. Call back. Like you've added call you've added great value to our show. Thank you. I'm trying. Yeah. Wait till you listen to the call. Well, Hopefully, you're on been. stream with us when you do. But it let's is a continue. comedy show. So let's continue a real moral category the closest thing that i could really come up to it you know outside of rhetorical shorthand is um the axioms that they are attempting to maximize with their behavior are in stark contradiction to the pause for one second axioms that i okay so i just want to be clear everybody might be trying to maximize different axioms than you by definition, if they disagree with your meta-ethical position on what is good or bad, that would make them evil. Otherwise, if we're to accept Vosh's definition that different people just try to maximize different things, then there can be no evil because everybody's trying to maximize different things, right? Using Vosh's example here, I could say, well, you know, Hitler was just trying to maximize the axioms of creating the perfect Aryan race. So can I really right. call it evil? It's not really evil with respect to him. Well, of course, with respect to an individual, there is no evil because with respect to them, they're always doing some self-serving thing to maximize their own ends. So it's, it's just, that's what I mean when I say a lot of, when Vosh starts talking ethics, all of it is incredibly vacuous. He's using so many words to say, good is good and bad is bad. And he just says nothing of consequence. It's so yeah. irritating. But. Well, but is it 
do you think it's intentional that he's basically labeling evil so broadly that it could you can use it any way he wants? It's not or intentional. Is it just he, does no, he, no he knows like a little bit to navigate the so conversations using some of the right words, and then he can kind of trick himself. I don't think he's doing it intentionally. I think <laughs> he, he just doesn't himself. understand. Yeah, I think he's kind of like no, tricked himself, no. and I think he's got like a really enlightened position on ethics, and he doesn't see like that there are fifteen different like pitfalls that he's that he's like wandering into every time he starts uh, trying to make these analyses. All right, go ahead. Dude. Yeah, he's I, I think dude. I think it's worse than that with all the fucking superrogatory shit. Like, <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, the guy that taught him that word messaged me. I he felt so bad. What a horrible thing for him was to it, learn. Was it was it Lewis? I don't remember who it was. I just remember a long time ago somebody messaged me like, "Bro, I had a conversation with Vosh where I introduced that concept of supererogatory, and I feel so bad for it because yeah, he uses it for like ever to escape. He has so many good escapes. He's learned like so many different words so that he can say absolutely nothing but like escape from every responsibility necessary, and then condemn yeah, people so, with all the conviction you know that he could ever want. It's just like just uh, just, just to explain really quickly, supererogatory basically means something is morally good but not obligatory. Okay. Right. Now this is a, a, a very fucking fringe idea in moral philosophy. So like I went to try and the shopping cart. I, I went to try and read <laughs> papers on it, and there just aren't very many because no one really talks about it. Right. Like, it, when, when people talk about morals, they talk about duties. It's like, what yeah. must you do? That's the whole like, that, point that's of the a entire moral. fucking conversation. Yeah. That's the yeah. entire the whole of more. Like this is a, a, a very fucking fringe thing. And Bosch will say that like basically everything is supererogatory. Yes. It's the most a every it, single thing. Yeah. You, yeah, it's like you're not insane. a blot. You're not obligated morally to do anything. Yeah, which is what a moral. Well, that's what essentially moral obligations are. <laughs> like what? Like you're talking about basically saying like a neutral action has no obligation. You can't say like a morally good action has no obligation. But by definition, morals are odds. They're things that we're kind of I mean, obligated I, to, right? Mm -hmm. it's, so I'd say like said, it's majority it's of the time bad. I hear the word obligation, it has moral in front of it. T typically, are you yeah. saying I? Are you saying I have the same obligation? To tip as to not cheat on my wife is that? Kind well, no, of no. I mean, like, there could be like a different gravity behind certain obligations, but like you wouldn't say that like there's something that would be like morally good, but like right. whether or not you do it is like neutral or something. Like there's still going to be degrees of good and shit we talk about. It's just, you know, it's yeah. Usually is, he, yeah. Had, he had to find this word out. It helped him escape the idea that socialists should have any sort of responsibility whatsoever to acting a certain way in society. Because I don't know if you've noticed this, but every socialist yeah. on the internet, yeah, the son, like, he bought a big house yep, and a nice and a car. Huge car. Yeah, they all live as like the most hyper capitalist, hyper consumerist people in the world. But Vosh has like discovered a word that lets him escape literally all responsibility or mm -hmm. obligation for living his values. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, and this be whole... nice to have such a simple existence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. But, if you and do this anything. whole. This whole sidetrack for him is, I mean, not sidetrack, this whole conversation is kind of bullshit because he's the one that brought up the term evil. He's the one that called them evil demons in human flesh. And now he's trying to be like, well, what does evil really mean? Yeah, they're just yeah. trying to maximize anything. different axioms. Like, yeah, it's like, well, okay. why did you use the word then? Because yeah. <laughs> you know what it means. But, but he almost said, I think he flesh. said this. You can go back, I don't, We don't have to go back, but I think he actually said, like, well, when I said evil, didn't he say this? I didn't mean that in a moral sense. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Says, what other kinds of yeah, evil are there, Bosh? What does that mean? Yeah, that's just what in I the technical on the whole, sense. Yeah. I don't mean evil in the sense of a moral category. And he's like, but that's what it is. Yeah, totally. That's literally. Really right. what it is well we and even think things are good and evil to morally categorize them right and obviously the audi his audience takes it that way the way that everyone else takes it even if he has some like really weird hyper definition for it mm -hmm. that i would like to put about so for example if they're fascists and they believe in a fundamental sense you know um the in in rigid hierarchy and the promotion of like an anti-degenerate social order that would starkly contradict with any invocation of my axioms because it would entail genocide against queer people so in that sense you know you might say well well hold on real quick so he's saying this would entail genocide and he's given an example of something that's not necessarily evil <laughs> okay but it would entail genocide but it's not evil they're just trying to maximize different <laughs> axioms it's so vacuous i'm sorry okay i'm done part. this is all dumb I don't care about this. no it's great no it's so stupid if you if you're not going to call genocide evil, then like, what is the point? Your moral system is just useless. Well, you know what? Point, you know what? I'll, I'll bite the bullet. No. And I'll say in front <laughs> yeah, of everyone uh -oh. that genocide might not be great. Nice. Genocide <laughs> is evil. So brave. Yes. So brave. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll do it. I'll be. I'm, we need to make a word. To go that far. What is the opposite of supererogatory? Where, like, it'd be good if you did it, but you didn't have to. What about one where it's like, it'd be bad if you did it, but, it, like, if you don't, it's not bad. Or so there's got to be, like, an opposite definition there. It would be bad if you did it, but you don't have to something like uh, it wouldn't yeah, make you feel like that yeah, framing it would be bad if you Called did being a dick. but it's not a big deal if you do or like right. oh no no it would be that you sh you you shouldn't do it but if you do do it it's not bad that would be the contrapositive of it there like you know? not returning right. the shopping cart maybe yeah yeah anti-erogatory maybe sure <laughs>
New York actually is a word. I just, I just don't know. The philosophers do this. You know, kind if you of say stuff. it, we know what you mean. It's a word. Yeah, there we go. Axiomatic outcomes are uh, mutually uh, exclusive to, to mine. You know, they contradict. And then he goes to the beard stroking. That's just weird. It's yeah, just it's, weird. It's a I do it thing, too. okay. Oh, I think yeah, it's a good. tell. I really do. I think it's it. This is think the, it's a are they buying? Tell? I think this is a, are they buying my bullshit tell right? <laughs> Adam, this is like, no, 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 no. Hair. Adam, I do that so hard. I pull a hole in my beard. <laughs> this is like I just went all in and I have nothing. You're like, dead wrong. The, the, are they buying my bullshit tell? Is when every time he finishes a sentence, he glances over to the side to look at chat to see how they <laughs> Yes, <laughs> he's doing <laughs> yes. that. That's he's doing tell. that now. That's what I meant to say was. Maybe he's, if I say Axiom a few more times. I isn't know. that what he's doing? It seems like he is well, reading. It, with, if, if you watch the Dankula debate, he does that like every single time he says some stupid shit. He looks over the fucking <laughs> chat. Right. Yeah, so the reception. Also, if you want the real black pill, every streamer does this. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> you always glance at your chat and be like, am I on some wild shit right now? Or are they actually following me? It's like when you're high and you're talking, you kind of look around. And it's like, you guys actually following me? You know, everybody does it, but Bosch does it. I have more, not more really than looked us, at okay? the chat. I have not really looked at chat at all. I had more fun with the chat before the stream even began, but. Oh, well, sure. I guess you're just better than us, okay? Good job. I am. You're That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Good for you. Listen, I like Good for you, chat. dude. You're I'm right not sometimes. willing. I'm not willing to defame an American president just because the entire <laughs> media decided it was a good idea to do okay. Good, good for you. Well, I, it's called I, principles. I, I, okay. okay, wait. Adam, uh -oh. Adam. Oh, no. Adam, Adam, I can agree that the media said tons of fucking wrong shit about Trump. True. Tons of fucking wrong shit Hold about on. Trump. No, Why are we going no, not to all sides? No. Oh. Aiden Paladin for $10. Oh. Thanks so much, Aiden, says this is the coolest group. This is like the coolest group of people all at once. Much love. Thank you, Aiden. That's maybe you should, that's, that's an astute observation. I agree maybe you should read some $20 super chats if we have them just because. Even if Adam's here, I agree. People like to people like to super chat. We I don't know how you. Destiny, I've never heard you read a super chat in, in well, my entire life. Well, I've got Texas life. speech. I did, one guy donated 20 dollars said, here's some dollars for recognizing the fundamental attribution error. Thank you, guy. Um, usually I have a text speech that just reads them automatically. So. I should get one of those. I, I actually have a stitch that reads the should super you, chat. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. Should you, Adam? That's because you, you wait. That's because you can't read, Adam. That's a I know, different. I know, I know. It's bad. But uh, So we do $20 and up super chats during the stream. Jesus. So people tend... People tend to do the twenty dollars ones because they want to say something or be included well, we're in the conversation. Us, so I want to... Yes, that's how it works. Ad. That is, yeah, that is the. Uh, well, I mean, why not read a couple and get some more going? Okay, I mean, you're right. We're not, we're not communists here. That's true. We're not bread tubers. Uh, William William Vance for twenty dollars says schools shouldn't teach fringe political views until college. Keyword is fringe, meaning when we say political, we mean a tiny minority believe it. Just like when Destiny says nobody thinks that. There you go. Nobody thinks uh, that what? You can't end a sentence on that. That was the end of the sentence. I don't know. Oh. Uh, J-Mac for $20 says, I learned sex ed from watching Species and reading Song of Solomon when I was a kid. What a oh base set God. of horror movies. Who remembers Species, guys? I remember right. that movie. I remember yeah. Mutant Species. Is that Natasha Hens Hens yeah, she had to fuck guys Hendricks? to make an alien baby. And that was her. Yes. Like yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that. She was like a giant bug or something inside. It was gross. Uh, she was like an alien, not a bug. Dude. I thought what she was like a incredible metaphor for women. How I know, I know. Oh. Exactly. Uh, that's. I feel bad for you, Jay. I had to it's read Song of Solomon in sense. high school. That book is fucking insane. Lots of weird incest and uh, crazy sexual shit going on. But terrible. Well, that just the Bible, Song of Solomon. Uh, and it's it's based off. That's the title that comes from it, but no, not the actual Bible. Oh, okay. You said Solomon and incest, and this. there you go. You just yeah. Gotcha. Lord of Hank, Lord Hank of Household for $20 says, great lineup. I'm glad to see you guys get Destiny, a woman's name, on again. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Lord Hank of House Hill. Uh, Righteous yeah. Indifference for $20 <laughs> says, queer theory is trying to label itself all over LGBT spaces, superimposing the political onto the LGBT people and introducing toxicity into the general populace. People need to do better at differentiating LGBT from queer theory. I agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, investigator one quim for twenty dollars says, "Did you guys see Lilith Love it twisting herself in the pretzels, trying to justify Vosh's trying to justify Vosh state on Dev's tube cast outtakes? You guys should really talk to Lilith about gender ideology." I, I think it's tubcast, it. not tube cast. Oh, excuse me. 
Uh, I don't know I, what I Vosh State on Dev's Tubcast outtakes were, but yeah, who is I Dev? I'm not aware. Dev? Of Dev? I thought Dev and Lil were. Fat, Dev is short fat otaku. I thought oh. Dev and Lil. I thought they were besties. It seems like they, they might not be. Okay. They do a stream together. Right. They yeah. they argue like we do. Yeah. Oh, so nice. Yeah, I like that. Frenemies. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Hub so mates. I understand what you're saying, but. It all is a rhetoric game, and if you take someone who's, um, I have a, a few friends who I would say are from center left, center, and center right, kind of all around that little spectrum. And God. watching their engagement with politics is super interesting because I got in a conversation about abortion with a, a family member, and afterwards she was like, "Oh my gosh, I don't know if I, I still feel like I'm pro-life. I don't know if I agree with you, but that actually makes a lot of sense. Like it's about." All the reasons we say about like, Tommy, the that's, uh, that is all baby. well. And, that's all well and good, but beforehand, did Didn't you call her Simon evil? Says, <laughs> <laughs> that probably would have helped out a lot. Did you spit yes. in her face or punch her or anything? Yeah. Yes. Her oh, to be baby, the fetus being biologically dependent on the mother, so then she has right over it. Uh, and she had not even heard that explanation laid out for her anywhere. And so I'm picturing her being like, "Gosh, the right wing's pretty crazy." And she flips over, okay, maybe not this person, but someone who's younger flips over to uh, your channel. And your response to the news is not, oh, we really got to deprogram people, but the leaders of this let's movement program are just them more. Or, I don't know how exactly. No, yeah, yeah, let's see. They're just evil, fundamentally evil, not human beings. I feel um, like. <laughs> and she's going to go like, wow, okay, that's definitely radical too. And then we have a bunch of people who are just status quo, uh, excite, you know, all yeah, I am I am pro making the dehumanization of other people associated with radicalness. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh I'm pro that. Yeah. That used yeah. to be a fairly common position. Yes, yeah. That's a path to genocide right there. First you start dehumanizing people in the next thing you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm super excited about the status quo. I feel like the because uh, the everything else is radical. What you're talking about right now is kind of like the liberal myth, like the starry eyed <laughs> dream. If this was the case, why My has none? Why can someone will have to fill me in on the liberal myth? Oh, he's going to right here. It's great. Oh, okay, yeah. excellent, fantastic. Why Get ready. The moderate. You got, or you like got your seatbelt on. I'm I'm strapped on. In I'm strapped in. Talking about right now was kind of like the liberal myth. Be better if you were strapped on. Like the starry-eyed <laughs> dream. If this was the case, My why has none? Strapped. Why has none of the moderate or like center leaning or bipartisan messaging of the Democratic Party brought over anyone? Republicans because exactly were as this is what I'm galvanized. About. Because they they uh co opted Has there I feel like there hasn't has... been a lot of bipartisan rhetoric no, from either none. side there, recently. None. Has there been? Yes. Um I'm not I, sure yeah, what I don't he's know if I agree to. with the premise. I'm not like super popular. Yeah, what's their pitch to moderates? Well, yeah. it seems like the it seems like the strategy, at least on the news, obviously the news is a little different from politicians, is just to beat everyone with the racist, sexist stick. Totally. Which is obviously not trying to appeal to moderates because it's trying to basically force people into accepting the position to avoid the label. Yeah. But yeah, assume the position by force. Right. It's ba basically rape politics. There was um, David Shore tweeted out. That was the guy that got a canceled and then hired by someone else for saying that hey maybe blm shouldn't riot because it leads to republicans winning elections um he's like a, a pollster guy and he tweeted out a study that showed someone did like a giant analysis of like 100 different countries elections in the last 20 30 years and that even you know he said that in most elections and in the u.s is 75 percent of the times when one side wins it's because they're able to sway the moderates in the middle who are undecided and only 25% of the times do does one side win because they're able to draw in new voters. Right. Yeah. And I and I think that really to me shows where a lot of the left is completely missing. Because when I hear totally. more, you know, far left people talk, it's always we need to draw more voters, and they always kind of dismiss the middle There's as a uh, being huge you know, applicable. Myth. It happens over and over and over again. It happened with Bernie. People and people always keep saying to this this idea that we're going to mobilize a a band of voters yeah. have never voted before. We're going to bring these guys. Right. We're going to do and kids. Like, yeah, and it, yeah, it never happens. These motherfuckers never show up to shit to vote. So why waste your time appealing to them? Yeah, what, what, I, I got I, a, uh... <laughs> what is that? What is that study such? Because that's what I was saying with Carl about the kingmakers. Like that's mm -hmm. seventy five percent are the moderates that are the kingmakers. It sounds like this study 
I should have this on my computer. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Opted that language. You understand it as much as I do. The quote unquote moderates in Congress slash the Senate, you know, the House and Senate, or even Biden, are not actually moderate in the country. They're just more friendly to business interests, more friendly to the status quo, stuff like that. They're not at the center of the country. That brings but them if you closer actually had, to the middle. Yeah, sorry, go for it. Well, that brings them closer to the middle. It's not like Republicans aren't pro business and pro economic elite. They're more so. No, but you see it in situations like um, West Virginia, you know, we talked about like this a lot with. Joe Manchin, because people will say, ah, he just has to be conservative because uh, West Virginia is conservative. But then you look at polling, you're like, yeah, they're conservative on a lot of issues, namely uh, social issues, but a lot of economic issues are actually super progressive. So they call themselves moderate to get away with keeping the status quo. But I think the center of the country is very willing to look, do I'll, some change. That's I'll, just pretty be, progressive. I'll just be a bit more direct here. Um, Go for it. I think that for interpersonal conversations, it's very important to adopt certain rhetorical approaches to make people feel like they're understood and to address their concerns. And I'm wondering where calling such a broad swath of humanity evil and demons enters into that aspect. But maybe we'll discover that as we progress. Well, he's saying oh, interpersonal, so he means like in personal conversations, but now he's about to advocate something different Even for then. widespread conversations, right? So he'd probably say personally, right. you should never call somebody evil. But when right. we're making like widespread analyses, maybe we'd call people evil is what he's going to say, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah, also you... feel like we're on the precipice of a genocide. And I know looking at history <laughs> okay. that your approach has been ineffective, to say the least. Would you have told the Jews back in 32? Look at this fucking look at this. He's just stepping on the gas. Too in Germany Jeez. that they shouldn't be calling Hitler evil because they may yet convince some moderate leaning Germans. Of course not. You would understand that past the point you just need to ferment as much radical opposition as possible. What we're living through right now is an era of unprecedented partisanship, and there just isn't that much evidence. Yeah, thanks uh for helping. Yeah, yeah he's exactly. just fermenting that. Uh, You're yeah. responsible for this, Vosh. Uh, uh, we're just playing into it. Evidence to indicate that on a broad scale, we're going to pull the Republican Party apart. The QAnon believing, January 6th defending, Trump really won the election believing Republican Party apart. What we can do is socially stigmatize them, and that is an effective form of rhetoric. After the civil rights... To who? I guess. Like, it can be. I mean, certainly. I suppose you got to be really careful on who you pull the trigger on stigmatizing, right? No, I give this uh, the same argument all the time. I think we, when we stigmatize things, we assume people are changing their beliefs, but what's actually happening is we're just not looking at it anymore. I think that part of the reason why Trump caught everybody by surprise, me included, was because we'd stigmatized so many of the beliefs so much, we assumed that no one else in society could have held them anymore, but that isn't the case. What actually happened is you just didn't see it anymore. And then when Trump came out, there were like four different points during his campaign where we were like, this is it. Like, he can't survive this. He can't survive McCain being a pussy or calling McCain like a you know a war captured guy I don't like him he can't survive the grab him by the pussy thing yeah like, grab him by the pussy but the issue is that these views still exist in the United States we just stigmatize and push them aside so much that we didn't even know they existed so I don't think that's an effective strategy for dealing with people of, with differing beliefs in your country not in a country like this with as many different beliefs as there are you have to have you heard them. have you heard the term preference falsification destiny um, probably at some point, but explain it. Where people, it's it's a the concept where people basically agree with people just because you know they they're agreeing with the crowd, but their preference is is diametrically opposed to that. And uh, the, it's the idea when in these like communist regimes where people are all everyone's lying to themselves about how great stuff is, they're really just keeping quiet because they think everybody is down with what's going on. But none of them are really down with it. They're just afraid to speak. So uh, it's like it's a, a good example would be like people, pollsters asking, are you going to vote for Trump? And they say no, but they sure. Are. Yes, exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. So but there's a point when it when it flips and people are just like, fuck this shit. I'm not holding my tongue anymore. And everything is like outed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hopefully you get to that point before the Nazi, the Nazi regime takes over act was passed and dr martin luther king it was every time you say that they're going to take over and they don't or it's just it's like the 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 end of the world or the rapture it's 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 always on the, around the corner it's going to happen here oh no it didn't oh it just right it, it, it tunes people out or it, it dulls people's wariness of it 
So I when think it does actually the, come around, you know, people. I think people on the left are completely lying to themselves with the amount of racism, sexism, and homophobia that's in the actually in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it's 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 like a it's a social game that people kind of play, or like a status game, even maybe that like you have to kind of buy into certain things because it's what everybody around you is doing. And sure, you don't want to be like the odd one out, yeah. Yeah, because sure. people's definitions of like where racism and sexism and all that shit are today are insane. That's why I think that like like if you take a deep breath and then take a step back and you look at like the LGBT genocide, like the fact that we're even having conversations today about children taking puberty blockers in school because they may be trans, that's like an unimaginable step forward compared to 15 years ago where like trans people didn't even exist in pop culture. Like, yeah, of nobody course. Even, yeah. So the idea that you think we're on a genocide now when we've made like such an unbelievable amount of progress in such a short time, like something is wrong there. You've got like some kind of issue. Issue. there's so many movies that were made in the 90s with trans people actually being the villains that just could not get made today mm-hmm. because of that and it was just a complete blind spot for people what we can do is socially stigmatize them and that is an effective form of rhetoric after the civil rights act the was passed and dr martin luther king yeah, demonizing he's saying demonizing people is an effective form of rhetoric like, well, stigmatizing, stigma, and demonizing, stigmatizing yeah. them yeah it's effective for solidifying it your makes you base feel of insane people yeah it does make you feel better to demonize people. we got them off twitter guys we won yeah, exactly. but you're not we got gonna win guys <laughs> you're not Twitter's gonna win that life, moderate not you know you're not gonna win that you know you're not gonna be in that situation where 75 percent of elections are won by the moderate base swinging wasn't this guy uh wasn't this guy wasn't Vosh talking about uh like Puentes or something earlier and he just streams on some whatever platform most people haven't ever heard of to his he, he's got a big audience there didn't and it turn out he was lying about his numbers or something i don't know oh, no, I, it's hard to say who's lying about what lots of claims being made by lots of people mm-hmm. look at this sitch i think oh, we got like claim. 25 20 super chats in a row <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hear this. Uh, this I know. Thought, I'm, so. no, I'm just I'm, it's just funny. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. Uh, most Americans didn't like the man. Um, thought he was too radical. Okay. He's, Vosh keeps uh, making this claim and it drives me crazy. The, the reason that public opinion turned on MLK towards the end of his life had nothing to do with the civil rights movement. It, it was because he, he was like one of the first people to publicly come out against the Vietnam War when no one else was coming out against it. And that's what people had a problem with. He keeps framing it like, oh, you know, America didn't like black people or America didn't like his radical. Well, that's what you know, your mind goes to whenever you say Martin Luther King, people just assume automatically civil rights. Right. But I don't think he kn- he doesn't know. He just saw some poll that said, oh, there was, you know, 40 percent approval of MLK near the end of his life. So therefore, it must have been because of this. And he's never looked into why. We didn't make people and make social life less racist by calmly debating the issue or reaching out or being bipartisan. We did it by shaming. Um, I think it's high time that the perpetrators of a, that, of a potential... Like, is that the case? Is what the we, case? we just, like, we shamed the racists and how that's how we became a less racist society. Is that, like... I feel like the um, shame probably what? came after the arguments were majority won, but... I, mean, I, assume... I don't know the background is saying. Because I assume that the nature of shaming is something that's done primarily to the, the the minority after something has been generally decided upon as the way things will be. Yeah. You can't preemptively shame people into doing things because you just look like a weirdo. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, as if the majority agrees with something, obviously you can't, you literally couldn't be shame them because there's like, well, you're not, you're the one that's doing the weird thing. Genocide yeah. be referred to as what they actually are. This liberal hand wringing has not brought Republicans over to us. Okay, yeah, they I'm, are I'm evil. Not your... They're murderers, <laughs> and I think it's okay to <laughs> tell murderers. people that. If that makes them go out and buy guns and ammo and prepare for a day where they try to enact that genocide, then all better for it. Guns... But you're you're telling them, like you're telling them almost like this is what you need to be preparing for. This one thing instead of this broad. Um, it, I, it, it's sort of loading the reasons why you should be doing this. This is what you need to be watching out for in a more specific sense, potentially. Mm-hmm. Instead of, a, like, there might be a line one day that is crossed by the government that becomes, like, tyrannical or do it to protect your family or your house or things like that. It's just do this to achieve this political goal 
almost. And I'm just like, uh, it just rubs me kind of this weird way. Like it's not how it should be done because it, it should be, it's one of these things that needs to be treated with such immense respect. And I feel like it's just being used in this thing that's thrown out there that it's just, um, they go out and do this thing that you should be, you know, you should be very wary of. You need to have a lot of respect for Just go out and do it do, for this political reason. What's he saying to do? Go out and do what? Go out and get guns and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I, I just, I don't like the fact that he's scaring the shit out of his audience for his own political game. That yeah. really is detestable to me, but go ahead, Sage. Well, I'll just say you can, I mean, you can tell people to be prepared for violent conflict without demonizing some yeah, group of people as you know demons in human flesh and that's where i call bullshit on the whole defensive thing because you could be yes, like listen that's the thing, yeah. right you could say listen you know things get crazy who knows what will happen you know make sure you protect yourself form community watches or whatever you can say all of that without throwing all this you know language at the other side calling them demons yeah and the, there's that big divide that i feel when i listen to this here and when i hear a sort of you know maybe you should have a gun if you feel like you need to protect yourself in general or your house or you know, something right. like that and th there just seems like to be a big difference between these two things right oh, there we go. are already in this country i would rather okay. them be in the whoa, hands whoa, of victims than Even, victors yeah lots of stuff to respond uh first of all <laughs> I know in comparison to your language, I'm going to come off naturally, which I hate, as the pro, uh, like, bipartisan. Oh, no. It's definitely not actually my positions. I <laughs> am sickened every time I have to hear a person in power, like, get super turned on by the idea of pointless bipartisanship and all that type of stuff. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. There's a big difference between heavy shame and uh, trying to socially stigmatize certain I ideologies and understanding as of I, I i don't know i guess the more it sits in my head the the more i kind of don't care for this concept of almost like dis discounting being bipartisan you know like i mean again just, i think like, he might actually be that far left but it could also just be he doesn't want to fight with vosh on this because like there yeah are a couple like trigger true. things that you bring up where if you just even mention something they're going to like lose their fucking mind like if i was going to debate somebody about the concept of like toxic masculinity i'm never going to use that phrase ever <laughs> because i know if i just even if i just utter it like the conversation is over it's going to be a new battleground so he's probably he doesn't want to appear like the moderate that wants bipartisanship because lefties hate that shit so he's just trying to avoid that characterization as much and as possible. and that's a shame too um mm -hmm. yeah it is uh -huh. but Oh, I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Now, the block of people who truly believe those things, like we're talking about right now because of the mass shooting, the Great Replacement Theory, how Tucker Carlson's talked about that, and, you know, lo and behold, uh, in this guy's manifesto, he's talking about it, and a lot of people believe that, but I think it was like 50% of Republicans think there's some strategy going on to replace voters. And if there's a block of, even not even, just liberals, no, li don't you agree that liberals are a part of our movement? Because otherwise, you're the people you classify as actually uh, a part of the movement that you're a part of is so tiny. Well, they're not part of my if, socialist movement, and they can't really be part of an anti-fascist movement. movement either unless they're actually willing to act on it. This, this is always a fun one. Like, liberals can't possibly oppose fascism. <laughs> I, I think I like this a lot now, now that I've read a little bit more, because I hear lefties make claims so much I have to read more so that they can't. I think it's really funny because this mirrors a lot of the rhetoric between the um, KPD, the NSAPD, and the SPD, the three big political parties in Germany around the time mm -hmm. when the Nazi coalition was starting to grow, was this idea that, like, the communists could never align with the liberals. They were never part of their movement. Um, and even if they didn't 100% line up with the Nazis, the more extremist rhetoric was things that they were willing to get on board with. They just didn't think the Nazis were going to become as big as they did. But it's funny because Wash is actually mirroring Obama. that rhetoric here. Like, I would never be part of a coalition with liberals, ever. That's inconceivable. Um, I think that's kind of funny, but, yeah. Yeah, I was going to actually bring that up later because he kind of mentions that specifically. It's it's ironic because it's actually the opposite in Nazi Germany. The As you were saying, the Socialist Party refused to work with the Liberal Party, and that actually split the vote and allowed the Nazis basically to take over. And they even had a term for it. They called... Oh, they called, social they called, fascism? Yeah, they called yeah. the Liberal Moderates social fascism. The, that was this idea that basically the Liberals were the worst enemy because they created false consciousness and they made revolution impossible where they kind of said, well, you know, we don't like the Nazis, but if they get in the power, that will just make people, you know, more revolutionary on our side. So by, by the way, if anybody wants, uh, wants a citation, when uh, Vosh's conversation with Hakeem, 
he's talking about social fascism and like the justification for genociding liberals. So if you want to go tune into a oh, really? conversation about that, I missed like, that yeah. one. I, I did. I don't think I use clips from that just because I got tired of making the fucking. He uses that term social fascism. Yeah. He That's hilarious. is an insane guy though. That's an actual tanky, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a tank. And they basically agreed on almost everything. Wow. Wait, 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 okay. wait. Hold on. Which one is Heem? Not Dr. Heem, right? No, not, no, not Dr. Heem. Hakeem. Hakeem. Okay, Hakeem. yeah, I'm sorry. I said the, Heem. Yeah. The Hakeem. The that ML. guy is the ML, the crazy tanky dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Heem's cool. Hmm. Okay. I Able think liberals are the easiest people to bring in. Well, mm, are, it's not easy, but That's what I'm the trying options to do. are going to be the easiest people to bring over into anti-fascism. I agree. Liberals need to be dissuaded of their weird uh, ahistorical paternalistic delusion that fascism is something that civility will work us out of. They yeah, need to be buying guns either. and operating militantly. I don't like, like, this is so the issue that I have with Vosh is that like, he's he's given you all the prerequisites to go kill Republicans. Like, totally. we cannot yeah. work our way out of fascism using the system. This civil, um, or this civility that liberals have deluded themselves in thinking and, and is so stupid. And Republicans are fascists and these guys are fascists and the election's already lost. It's like, you walked us like right to the to the edge. Where like, well, Those what are we supposed to do? moderates you think are okay? Yeah, yeah, is that essentially, like, it seems two. like that's, yeah, he's given us all the arguments to get there. It's very frustrating. That the same guy that would have been arguing against like a great replacement like alarmist and everything so long ago is essentially doing literally the exact same type of rhetoric that they did and it's like okay well yeah there, there was a similar situation that played out in the u.s where uh you know probably 100 million people were convinced that like the election was stolen the government was being stolen mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe sure. there might be some consequences of that mm -hmm. you mean january 6th <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean not just that i mean entirely up to it yeah yeah Bad shit. Trump should have just conceded. Why wouldn't mm -hmm. he? Uh, Brain, thank you so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says Carl is on V's channel crying about having to feed guests. I hope you dorks can do better than that. Oh, we'll you get try. food? We'll try. You don't get food here. Sorry. Oh. Uh, Joe well, the Mig. If, if I knew that before, well. I know. You have to get your own. Sorry. Uh, Joe the Mig, thank you so much for being three months. Says Vosh is probably the grossest offender regarding stochastic terrorism. Also, high rags. Hello. Based. Well, that's what to do, by the way. Liberals need to be afraid. There should be afraid. We are at the precipice of a very Jeez. difficult social situation. Their Don't fear think the precipice needs to be politically incredibly Any day now. You're, so, what, um, wait, what is? Yeah. The, uh, we're about, a genocide is about to happen and we need to all go get guns and that right there. To, and also the liberals need to be afraid. He's like, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. I love the fact water. that Tim Why, Pool like spent what, like a year, two years working up to this point, and Vosh just does this arc in like two weeks. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, the... speed running's popular, man. What the wanna... fuck? That's funny. We're not a part of the same group. No, we're literally like if you look at any like lead up to a genocide like charts, like where are you here, 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 like. It's not ambiguous. Those charts weren't written by leftists. I mean, we're at the point right now where, you know, um, right-wing media is coordinating to condition their audience to think of all queer people, or even people with colored hair, Jesus, as groomers and pedophiles, which is a clear element of dehumanization. Do, do you think a lot of this is because of the groomer thing? Like, Bosch has been called groomer too many times in one day, and he just, his mind has exploded? No, no, it's just I a popular political issue. Yeah, I think the groomer thing is just it's it is pretty dumb. The the republic like, but we argued on that earlier, I guess. But yeah, the Republicans leaning into that groomer thing a lot is pretty spooky and not probably good. What is it? What is the genesis of this? I just it's so bizarre to me that he's made this this crazy turn. Maybe he's always envisioned Republicans in this way. Maybe not. I don't know. I mean, Adam, you could like watch my video and go to the dehumanization section and pause. There's like 50 quotes of him calling Republicans literally Nazis. I don't like, right. This, this whole idea, new. though, that we're on the verge of gen like Republican led genocide. It's just it's so weird and so he, detached from reality. Listen, he had just, a he's couple of rough months. Times. Got to drum those views up. OK, mm -hmm. OK. That, see, that's my question. Is it just just cynical. is it really just for views? It's that. Well, he never bad. lays out in this conversation what what is he looking at? Is it just the groomer? He never says what he's looking at that leads him to believe that we're on the precipice of genocide. And he actually kind of hand waves it away 
after Luke leaves. And he's like, well, I mean, what am I supposed to go through a hundred pieces of legislation? It's like, well, I mean, if you're advocating for violence, I think that's kind of important. Yeah, the, definitely. The foundation of that. You could, you could at least make an argument. Right. Yeah. Not just like but, assert positively that it's happening like a priori I, or some shit. I don't know if you caught it. He said too, that if you don't see the lead up the way he sees it, then you're not on the same team. Right. So, well, I guess I'm not on the same team then because this is insane. But he's of saying this I to Luke. That. He's like, oh, Luke, do you want to be right. like on the correct leftist side or are you like a dirty liberal? Oh, he's pressuring him. I know he liberals like a jab. I've heard him say that in other streams. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Liberals and insulin. Yeah. You never know when somebody calls you a dirty lib. You don't know if they're far left or far right anymore. It's really okay. <laughs> It's scary. Yeah, exactly. Which leads up to legal uh, oppression, which we're getting through. Uh, currently, right now, unstopping, and following that, you know. So here's the big, the big difference, though. That is not something that even uh, a large portion of everyone who's to the right of, of me, um, believes in fully. Almost I every single care. person I talk to, and if you look at polling, look, he says he, he doesn't care. I feel like he should. He just said, he just said, listen, they don't all believe that. Only some crazy ones believe that. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Well, this is this is another this is another like rhetorical tactic, like the the uh, superrogatory thing. I, th this was the whole conversation with um, fuck, who was it? Irrelevant, where he was like, I don't care about hypocrisy. I don't care. And it's like, well, what the fuck do you say? It's like we could just right. be hypocrites, and I, yeah, I just he don't, wins. I don't care. That's an auto win thing, yeah. dude. It's scary. You're that's, a hypocrite. That's cool. Yeah, and I guess it's, <laughs> it's like Giga Chad. Yeah, <laughs> fuck me. I guess Giga Chad with a man bun. Exactly. But you should care because for a genocide guy. to they don't have be to believe it on the horizon, there has to be a you know significant portion of the country that has enough people in power that could uh, make that happen. Wait, they do. Whereas right now, the major vast vast look at any polling on any LGBTQ issue. Uh, Vast, vast majority of America is. Can you imagine Ted Cruz going to his colleagues in the Senate and saying, "Listen, guys, genocide. What do you think?" <laughs> I'm tossing around this idea. I know it's just insane. It's insane. I mean, I don't, I don't like listen, Ted Cruz, but he was I just willing can't to imagine. listen. He, Ted Cruz is willing to blow up the economy over the debt ceiling. Okay, anything's on the table. But Adam. he you didn't. Don't know. Well, the if the funny idea... thing is, he didn't know though that he was going to blow up the economy. Well, I guess he did. Never mind. He knew he was going <laughs> to blow up the economy. I guess if a genocide made Ted Cruz look good, he probably would float it. <laughs> well, the thing is, you're you're thinking of genocide in like you know the actual definition of the word, not where like a genocide is like passing a bill to restrict trans kids from being able to go on puberty blockers. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah. But I mean, he, if you put it in said... those terms, it's a lot more reasonable. He said it's not the same thing, though. He's definitely out. He's talking about rounding up people, and he's talking about the real deal here. He's he's doing both. He he right. says round up people, and then when he's questioned on it directly, he'll probably come up with a soft. Yeah, he backpedals. Yeah, yeah. It's very not the Weimar, on board with, with the Weimar violence. Republic was the most progressive place in Europe before the Nazis took over. Republicans in 2024 are probably going to have all four branches, well, three branches, four segments, uh, the presidency, the Senate, Congress, and certainly the courts. Uh, if you don't think they'd be willing... So surely, like, I, well, I know very, very little about 1930s era German politics, mm -hmm. but uh, is, is it this, is the idea here we want to link the 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 moderate to liberal-esque progressiveness of today or just that concept to the weimar republic which leads to genocide is that the is that the strategy here yeah which i mean wasn't before the weimar republic was i mean they had like a, like a, a, a king weimar, right? right i mean germany had kings kaiser? for yeah they had a kaiser like germany's been an empire had various kings for hundreds of years it's not like in America, we've, you know, for hundreds of years been a liberal democracy. And I think, what? you know, we have those traditions and institutions which have taken, you know, definitely a lot of hits. But to say that we're on this precipice the way Nazi Germany is, is just ludicrous. It's, well, but they didn't have a king. To, it's they didn't have a king after World War One, though, right? I mean, World War Two happened. The yeah, but that's only, yeah, but that's only 10 years. Yeah, but if, if you're a country that's had a king for hundreds of right. years, then for 10 years you have, you don't. I mean. Yeah, okay. I got you. And I think oh, the goal me. is just push back on this idea that like, like 
like the liberals trying to say, well, look at how far society's come. And he's like, well, the Weimar Republic, they were actually so far along too, and they still fell to fascism. Right. That's the goal right. is to push back against that idea. Yeah. Well, he right. doesn't so know in, in here that the Nazis were democratically elected and then disbanded their parliamentary system. Obama. He in here doesn't, he thinks they took power well, or outside of democracy. Well, it, initially they were elected democratically, but there were definitely some flips at the end that were illegal or yes, undemocratic right. in order to, you know, enabling to, everything to and stay, power to stay them. in power. Yes, yeah. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, the, the, the joke here too, is that basically the guy who won the election in Germany, who appointed Hitler to be chancellor, he would have lost if the socialist candidate had dropped out and supported the center moderate candidate. That and that the splitting of the can. <laughs> yeah, the oh, splitting shit. of the vote between the far left and the moderate left is basically what allowed Hitler to come into power. Don't uh, tell Bosch that. But that's the, they literally advocate for the exact opposite of this stuff most of the time, which is why it's like they're so ahistorical. Right. Even though he wants to bring up Nazi Germany every chance he can get. Cause, like, yeah, because I guess start, to me, who, you know, I'm just uh, not. Oh, sorry. Because I'm not huge into politics, really. But there is this aspect of. That's a tough sell to give to me to say that being progressive leads to genocide. <laughs> it, I don't think yeah. he's trying to say so much that being progressive leads to genocide. He's trying to say that having a lot it's, of progressives won't necessarily stop genocide. Being being a super okay. liberal is not enough. You need to be a socialist. That's what he's saying. Oh, okay. He's saying that you're not, you're basically your argument fails. You're not safe. Shut up. Go home, kid. If I just not, have to read this super chat really quick. Danimal the Bruce uh, mm -hmm. says... I'm going to use my free milestone chat to say I just listened to the Trump call entirely while doing work. And Adam is 100 percent correct. Goodness. <laughs> we, yeah, I mean, yeah. if we want, we can divert and listen Thank to the you. call right now. But I mean, no, I mean, it might no. be. It might be fun, but I don't know. Next time we'll do it next. That's yeah. How Actually, long is it? Be, Isn't the full call like 15, 20 be, minutes? How long is the full call? There won't it's, be. It's pretty long, yeah. There won't be a next time because I'm sure Destiny will, will watch it later and be like, "Oh fuck, I was totally wrong. I'm gonna shut up about this." Oh, <laughs> oh the full phone call is an hour long. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, okay. We can't do that, obviously. Destiny, just you know, come on. I thought you were Team Truth for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Uh, uh, to do in full stop legal oppression uh, like their messaging for decades they've been signaling this uh, what, oh, I mean, what do you think the lead up is suicide? Huh? It, I agree there, I mean you look at you know I'm in Texas and the law that uh, or that Greg Abbott tried to do of uh, classifying gender affirming care for children as child abuse that's legal oppression 100% is that what you're talking about? The legal yeah, oppression precedes right? other behavior. Okay. And it, do you then, sincerely yeah. not believe? Like, do you think he's so? It's he so, just has such a weird demeanor in this call. He's just so. How dare you? Because he's trying my to tip status. Out. He's trying to tightrope walk this thing. But like, so he says it leads to other behavior. But what? What is the other behavior? The most extreme example is the one Luke just gave, and that got struck down by the courts on a local level. Right. Yeah. It didn't even make it to the federal level. Right. The obsession with degeneracy in America, the belief that there's an effete elite group of liberal or leftist academics that are controlling our children, and the belief, the popular belief that non-whites are being brought into the country um, in order to replace the white population. In that is such a fringe belief in the Republican Party. You just, you, I cannot, that's not mainstream at all. Well, he, he's laying well, out- Which way, the, what part isn't mainstream? Yeah, there's there's parts of that that are right. Because I would argue that like the Great Replacement is pretty mainstreamish. Maybe not on every part of that point, but I, I think Tucker's been talking about it for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody wants only pulling data or if there is pulling data on it, but like like when when fucking forty three percent of Republicans believe that there's like some satanic sex cult shit going on, and then like when I think more than fifty percent still might believe the election was stolen, um, I'm pretty sure a lot of them believe in, in the Great Migration stuff. Is that too. where you're getting your information from? Like how many people believed QAnon? I don't even know those. Well, numbers. QAnon Maybe is significantly like... more radical than the Great Replacement. So, um, well, but what are the numbers? That's not like mainstream Republican Party. Depending, I'm pretty sure for the QAnon on, stuff, I thought it was like 40 some percent believe that there is some satanic sex cult ish stuff of Republican voters believe that. I, I can go I look heard, it up. I heard, I heard, I heard 25 percent. Might have been 25. Okay, I got like 25 is still a huge number for those kinds. It, of it, 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 it was shocking to me how high the number was. 
So and they, and they a, weren't like softball questions. They were like, I mean, it was it was pretty mask off shit, and it's like twenty five percent. Hillary Clinton crazy. broke their brains. It's not so, it's not a lizard man constant thing. So there's a poll that I looked up that Vosh cites later in this conversation and says. 18% of Americans believe the government, media, and financial world in the U.S. are controlled by a group of Satan-worshipping pedophiles <laughs> who run a global child sex trafficking operation. 18% percent of Republicans? No, I think it's 18% total. Or maybe Americans? it was Republicans. I'm not sure which uh, one. Okay. But it's, it's pretty shocking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but that aside, it's interesting because everything he just laid out is basically the same conspiracy that that Vosh and leftists put down put out for capitalism is that there's this elite cabal of rich people who basically pay off all the politicians to get whatever they want and ignore the will of the people and they're you know influencing culture in such a way to keep the socialist revolution down but that's objectively true so <laughs> okay. I mean, that's completely different right right <laughs> Don't understand the Republican Party signaling that they're going to attempt another coup if they don't win, but they're probably going to win and hold all houses. This isn't something which you think merits a sufficient degree of alarm in your part? reflection. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm a hundred. I mean, look at didn't under tr like the first two years of Trump, then the Republicans control everything too. Yes, they did. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we didn't have fascism. We didn't have LGBT people rounded up on the streets in trump's first term or anything like that I mean, there's there's a bit of a difference between merit's significant degree of alarm and they're going to round them up and kill them and put them yeah. in camps mm -hmm. yeah you don't understand Vosh is just trying to scare people to the polls so that doesn't happen of course <laughs> don't know that he cares about the polls my own content there's tons of things to be alarmed about and it's exactly what you're talking about but uh one of the things that i think you did do a very poor job of um conveying and okay let me finish what i'm saying but then I'm, i have a question as well was you didn't at all divide until maybe the very end of your video between politicians and and voters and then went on to talk about uh political violence build our democracy kill them and then you pause i mean i i would imagine vosh probably hates the voters more than the politicians on the other side well, he's saying that, that he hates the politicians more, right? That's the argument he's given. But. Right. Yeah, I'm a... Yeah. This is for a long time. It was like socially, you know, politically. Um, and they want to... The Republican Party... The modern Republican Party wants to personally murder every minority that lives within the border of the country and then Jeez. tell people to get guns. To me, that's expediting some sort of huge violent clash between two groups in the country but not at all moving us faster towards squashing the fascistic element of the movement you squash fascistic movements by winning the violent clashes <laughs> jeez probably not good but hmm. uh, so your political plan but, but where are these fascistic violent groups like has this happened already or well, is this the republicans and the legislation they're trying to enact right that's the argument well He's, that's what we talked about earlier. No, it was like that, two that's not violent. That's not a violent ca clash. So you can't really define legislation. Well, well Vosh is kind of violent clash. He, he's kind of intentionally jumping back and forth between talking about uh, laws that are being enacted or will be enacted, and there's going to be roving bands of fascists in the streets somewhere. Well, there he's is kind of doing this intentionally. I, I mean, there are these back and forth between Antifa and and various right wing organizations proud boys and whatnot yeah, but is that I mean, it really that's that. like yeah but so what those are is the that, violent that's clashes the down, downfall of american society is that the proud no. boys and antifa get into no. some warping contest where they punch no. each other on a street corner uh, -uh. no nah. exactly yeah but even i'm assuming vosh knows he can't point to that because that's just so no one would buy that yeah ridiculous it's totally larpy is to prepare for a civil war and then fight it I don't know if a civil war is the right word. There's certainly going to be violence in this country during my lifetime. And if there is going to be violence, then I would prefer the people with... Yeah, but your lifetime is going to... That's a long time if we're just already. But even then, I, I often wonder. I don't know. It's like this. It's it's this maybe like it's this concession that it's just going to happen. And we need to in, in this implication that you guys listening to me need to arm yourselves so you could fight this political fight. Or is it maybe is 
the better maneuver to try and stop that violence from happening or don't feed into the I, I guess the radicalization that leads to that end um well he's just he's giving himself wiggle room because earlier he said you know there's going to be violence when the republicans win in 2024 and now it's sort of well in my lifetime there'll be violence right didn't scott adams make the same claim about if if biden wins the election Republicans would be hunted. Republicans yes. will be hunted. The Scott today. Adams guy is actually, I think he's gone like mentally, like there's like issues with him. He needs to be on medication. Oh, or what, what's, what's he doing recently? My man. What's he doing? <laughs> you, yeah. I agree. Scott Adams is insane now. What, what, what has he been up to? I haven't seen him since like the 2020 election. He's still doing his thing. Do you, do you still listen to him periodically? Yeah, I still listen to him periodically. Occasionally, I think uh, I'm going to listen, but then I don't. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's funny. He still tries to. I mean, Scott Adams is a weird guy because I like a lot of what he says and I don't like a lot of what he says. There's right. not a lot of middle ground. And he still tries to defend that claim whenever something he can sort of tag onto that. He'll say, Look, people laughed at me for saying Republicans would be hunted, but look at this. So he's still defending that one. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, was Satoshi was a reptilian. One. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Satoshi Maybe was a reptilioid for 200 Knock Knock says, congratulations on getting the famous transport tycoon streamer on for some classic Vosh dunking. I'm, of course, talking about Doomer. Yes, this dumb pun was worth a donation. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Gavin McLean for $20 says, I work in the medical field in the U.S., long-term care specifically. State agencies do determine standards for medical institutions, including appropriate treatments, requirements for leisure, minimum, and minimum requirements of care, etc. So there you go. It relates yeah. to, I guess, the transgender care that we were talking about earlier. Well, and all medical care. Yeah. Right. Um, Rona Zoro is here for $20, says, charismatic Christian conservatives pushing faith healing prayers as alternatives to medical treatment is a better comparison to woke pushing trans ideology than conservatives pushing affirmative care as a way to deal with the gays. I guess, I mean, you'd have to parse out what you mean by transgender ideology, but on the extreme end, I would agree with that. Obama. Uh, Brian, Brian for $20 says destiny if trans affirming care is to prevent suicide in children then shouldn't there be millions of unsolved suicides from children before the internet and social media where the bodies it's mass hysteria what does unsolved suicides mean you don't solve a suicide by figuring out how it happened number one number two trans people make up a really small percentage of the population so even if a good proportion of trans kids were committing suicide it's not like there'd be millions of them and then three um you could think that a kid killed himself because they were depressed and that could be the case but they could be depressed because they were trans but nobody would ever know otherwise that guy made an unbelievably right. stupid point in very few words i'm do, so I'm do you do you think there are people who are depressed about other things and they fixate on the gender stuff when it's like a not really they don't really have gender dysphoria it's a false positive yeah that's absolutely possible it's also possible there are people that are super depressed about what they think is depression or other stuff and they have gender dysphoria but they don't know sure mm -hmm. yeah okay i think it's less likely today that probably was more likely in the past because uh, so many people are going to point to gender dysphoria and say this is the pro this is likely the problem it's one of the first places they're going to look well, that super depends on where you are. You're, that would be a really extreme area if sure. a kid is depressed yeah. and like, oh, he must be trans. Right. right. If you're in San Francisco, yeah, of course. They're, yeah, that's, that's true. They're going to work, yeah. Uh, Dan with Bruce for $20 says, what became queer theory was originally independent of gay rights? Think of the proto-queer theorist as akin to Malcolm X and Frank Cammy and Marshall Kirk after the ball types as akin to MLK. Yeah, I know I've heard... Uh, Andrew Sullivan make that argument. He said, I haven't looked into this, but he claims that the queer theorists were originally against gay marriage in the 90s because it would normalize uh, being gay. So I've heard that claim too. The better morals who are appropriately armed and prepared. But My right actual now, guess is that there's going to be an increasing divide between red and blue states and that with control of the federal government, um, Republicans are going to attempt to impose federal law to control the blue states because they can't control it with state law. Um, blue states, some of them will refuse, and then there might be clashes between state guard or police. You know, some police might try to enforce it, but like others will say, like, no, don't do that. There might be attempts at ousting. Remember during the Black Lives Matter rallies, you know, there were like those Patriot Prayer dumb fucks rolling their, you know, $60,000 trucks through like urban neighborhoods with a bunch of guys with guns in the pickup trucks. 
When that happens, I want people to be able to take shots at them from apartment windows. Jeez, that's a rough quote. <laughs> yeah, they're just driving through the neighborhood. Listen, they listen. They had a MAGA flag, so they had it coming, right? Yeah, because it's it sounds like he's just saying literally just driving through a neighborhood, you should yeah. be able to shoot someone. If I want to be like he, ultra super duper charitable there, maybe he meant <laughs> that if they were driving through. Good faith, accident. Gary. Yeah, but that's like a, you gotta. He would never. We would never extend this level of charitability to like conservatives saying something like this. It would right. Be wild. Yeah. Right. You know, I don't want them to just be victims here. We have to be ready. <laughs> Look, he's we gotta be ready. Luke. Yeah, it's just this. We gotta be ready. We gotta, we gotta be ready. Get ready up. for oh, what? Man. I mean, during a Black Lives Matter... Like, oh, you gotta during... be so careful when you're telling people to arm up and you're giving them all to this... To shoot at people as they the drive genocide by. genocide is coming. We gotta stop them. Violence is the only way. The only way you stop fascists as particularly is how I've defined them and how everyone believes them to be in his circles is, is this mm -hmm. thing. It's, it's just so, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. It doesn't taste good. It it need, there needs to be so much reverence, because I'm, I'm a big Second Amendment guy and a lot of guns. I'm big in that, but there's there needs to be a super, just a deep amount of responsibility and reverence towards that sort of thing that I think people are just too flippant with. And I don't like it no matter what direction it comes from. It's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. And people I think that, will get killed and hurt if you don't treat it with respect. I think the gun sitting on the on the counter in the in the frame. Mm -hmm. It's just it's such terrible optics. He literally has a can gun sitting right there on his desk. Right. That's a weird looking one too. What kind of what is that? Exactly? Is it is it real? Is it a BB gun? <laughs> No, it's I don't real. Know. That's, that's yeah. kind of how, how I think he uses I it. He pulls it, it, it out at the end. Yeah, and like okay. cocks it and stuff. Yeah. I, I'm trying because so he's he's laying out this whole like there's going to be evil right wing fascists driving through neighborhoods terrorizing people. Once the Republicans are in charge, they're going to be, you know, putting the National Guard to overthrow what state governments want. All this other stuff, which is, I mean, we saw none of this during Trump, but also I was thinking, you know, we had the Chaz um, for however long that lasted, like two weeks or a month or whatever. <laughs> what a magical time that was. Yeah, and I'm like, would the country have put up with a right-wing version of, of that? Like if there was some, you know, I don't know, white ethno-nationalist communities, you know, took over a couple Hell blocks no. of a city. Like, Hell I just, no. I feel like the police would have cleared that out very quickly if that happened. Yeah. I don't think it would happen, though, it, to be honest with you. It's annoying because... I feel like Vosh and a lot of other leftists, they have no respect for the fact that basically the majority culture in mainstream has been captured uh, by the left. And they just have no respect for that fact whatsoever. No. What state do you live in? You live in the States, right? Texas. Texas, yeah. And Austin, you better be so... buying guns. Jesus. I'm you not. better it's easy be there, buying ain't it? guns. To me, there's a huge difference. What, what did you say? It's easy there? Oh, to get a gun, yeah, 100%. Um, the amount of people who are willing to conduct any sort of violence right now, as opposed to people who sort of, like a person who watched Tucker Carlson is like, oh, I kinda, I kinda like this stuff. The Great Replacement Theory, yeah. They already have guns. But we're not seeing this mass movement of people uh, it's still very fringe to me. Well, and you know, the largest mass movement we saw recently was the BLM protests, you know, and, so, and a lot of them did devolve in the riots. And it was based on like this rhetoric, which was this idea that there was, you know, thousands of unarmed black men just being gunned down by the police. And when you looked at the statistics, that all turned out none of that was even true. I mean, Doomer, we haven't. Doomer blames Kenosha on Bosch and his. Bosch in in his Bosch video, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, right. Stochastic terrorism, good fucking argument. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I would say true. it was Vosh's video in particular, but the style of video that Vosh and Hassan engage in is absolutely like one to one the reason why Kenosha happened, of course. Yes, yeah, he makes a pretty powerful argument in that video. So. Yeah, was Bosch is want Bosch wants more Kenoshas. That's what he wants. Was the Kenosha the Kenosha? protest the Calvin house was part of that wasn't about michael brown right it was about the guy who it's about was about jacob blake jacob, jacob blake, blake yeah. yeah who was 100 percent. they were justified 100 percent in shooting mm -hmm. him yeah that was the yeah. guy who took the car with the 
Yeah. The, the kids okay. in it. Gotcha. I'm yeah. just trying to keep all my names straight, you know. Yeah, right. I could, after he'd I could, been. I could go through the details if you want. Tased twice. I think the I tried to tackle him and all that I think stuff. I'd watch some of uh, Destiny's discussions with some crazy people trying to say that Jacob Blake wasn't justified and stuff like that. So I, I knew the name was familiar. Right. I just needed to make sure I was thinking of the right thing. The, the TLDR is the police have two options. Shoot Jacob Blake oh, or let a car chase happen. That's like maybe crash into innocent people. Those that has kids in it that, point. The that they think are being kidnapped. Let kidnap children. Yeah, right. People often forget a car is a deadly weapon. Right. Maybe we should just buy cars. <laughs> uh, people who are buy like, cars. Oh. <laughs> Stock up on your cars. Conduct violence. And so then for us on our to. side to be like, okay, it's time for us to be getting guns and preparing to... Uh, shoot each other down the streets. Well, first is, of all, the right's is, been doing that for decades. This whole they're gonna t feds are gonna take my guns. We better arm up. They've been getting ready for decades. So we got. They've catch just up. been keeping. Second their of guns. all, it doesn't they've matter if they want to go do them. Doing... Well, they've yeah. been no. They do this shit wherever, and you know this if you have guns. The price of ammo and guns always goes up whenever there's a fucking Democrat in office. They start talking about it because everybody wants to run to stores right. and buy shit or whatever. It ha it's happening in Canada right now too. Like, yeah, but I'm doesn't this? It doesn't like. It seems to be that they just they just get more of them it's not under this assumption that you need to go out and do stuff with them oh There's right yeah exactly because of like price reasons and because you might not be able to in the future you should get them now it doesn't i i never get the i the, the sense that you need to get these so that you can use them for something that's upcoming sure maybe yeah yeah, I was going to say, this seems to undermine Vasha's point, because if the Republicans have been doing this for years, they haven't, there hasn't been some explosion of right-wing militia violence. I mean, the closest thing I could think of was, when was the, um, ironically enough, the BLM, the Bureau Land Management thing? Waco? Uh, no, 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 no. After that. Remember, there was, was it the, the I want to say Bundy's, but I don't think that's right. What's Remember it called? Yeah. There was like the, the rancher that took over some Bureau of Land Management building in like 2000. Yeah, what's the name for seven it? Seven or eight or something? I don't know. Yeah. They'll say it in the chat. Whatever. We haven't seen this explosion of right-wing fascistic violence, despite the them buying all these The right-wing does. I mean, they have the meme, the tree of liberty needs to be watered with the blood of tyrants every now and again, right? <laughs> but they're, they're, they're not putting a date on their calendar. They're saying, I you know, if that happens, like I'm going to be yeah. prepared. Mm -hmm. But Vosh is basically saying, no, this is going to happen in the next election. Right. I mean, the examples they would give are the Michigan attempted kidnapping of the governor in January 6th, right? Yeah. Oh, they, right, right. They foiled that. Bundy Ranch is the, what you're thinking. Bundy of. Ranch, thank you. I was right with Bundy, yeah. Well, then the response is that that was all uh, set up by the feds, but I never looked into that enough to make a did, determination on that. Out of curiosity, the January 6th stuff, did, uh, did they bring guns to the Capitol? Was that a... I don't know. There were no shootouts with cops or anything yeah. for whatever that's worth. I don't think they recovered any firearms from people they arrested. No. Yeah. Because if um, there never was, I, interesting. One protester was shot. Yeah, but by the, the security. Actually, by security. Downstairs, yeah. Though. That wasn't yeah. like a, a gunfire was exchanged between. Right, right. But that, that was, was kind of the moment. in the Senate. That we covered that one at, right after it happened. And that was kind of the moment when Ashley Babbitt got shot. The there was no fight by the crowd or anything like that. Like if it was going to, you know, turn into all out violence, that would have been the focal point. Yeah. But, you know, everybody just fell well, back. Oh, well, January 6th, it seemed to me, it seemed that it wasn't like there was no plan. It just was like no, a, it was a lot protest that devolved into a riot. It wasn't like people set, gearing up to say, let's, you know, infiltrate Congress and, you know, force them to vote for the way we want them to. This is part of the problem people have in like conceiving of a civil war is they don't realize how cowardly people are. Like you see someone get shot. It takes like, yeah, you be fucking Dylan Burns to like see someone get shot and walk forward. Right. Yeah. It's like fucking around in Ukraine. <laughs> God knows why. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like very people few people will do that. It smells like, man. It's uh... I, I mean, if I saw someone get shot, I guarantee fucking tea. I'm a coward. I'd run and fuck that. Yeah. I'd be like, mm -hmm. I don't want to get shot. That looks yeah. awful. That looks terrible. That does that look awful. Me. That looks she awful. She died. She died just fucking around. It's so yep. awful. Yeah. yeah. Any shooting. You know what's actually going to happen? Police are going to try to do it first, and then they are going to support the police. You know, go look at any genocide in recent history, past century. The way you think it plays out ain't how it plays out, you know? It's not like 
a bunch of people vote or like there's a poll how many of you want to kill the minorities and like 50 percent say yes and then they go start doing it you know there's a a creeping assimilation of political power as the right ramps up genocidal messaging against the funny thing is is that when he says that. genocide i don't he probably couldn't name like a, like more than one ongoing genocide right now and they're not going to be like fucking like hitler in world war ii nazi germany <laughs> like that's really all he's talking about he's yeah kind of, totally. i just kind of funny. he's like well look at the current genocides like, like which ones in africa do you want to talk about wash like how tell me the creeping liberal political power of, like come on dude but mm -hmm. the number of civil wars is up though in recent years yeah I saw yeah, but is this in liberal was, countries that have no, democracies? No, or is no, it, no yeah. obviously well, authoritarian be, regimes, but... yeah. Well, and his rhetoric, I don't see how his rhetoric that he's using now could 100% be applied to justify BLM violence genocide. against yes. uh, police officers and just the populace. Because they'd be like, oh, well, you know, there's a genocide against, you know, uh, minorities by the police, essentially, would be yeah. the argument them of being the weakness within the country that's tearing them and civilization apart um then you see like a i mean that's basically what he's saying about the republicans that they're tearing yeah, civilization to, apart <laughs> you have to frame this in a way that we have to make the other side seem like the thing that i'm definitely not doing right yeah right-wing militias acting alongside like police units to enforce unofficial or official legal restrictions against certain minority groups or left-leaning areas this is happening like like what, what happen? though <laughs> like when is this happening or what is, just give up just give a prediction of some kind of law or some situation i mean unless he's talking about kyle rittenhouse maybe that's what they means. they believe kyle rittenhouse was working with law enforcement in that way and killed people indiscriminately people believe that shit yeah, but so then, so fucking don't be a coward though and say that. I mean, that's why I kind of like people get mad at me when I do this. But this is why I like to bet these people. Like, if you really think this is gonna happen, let's put some money on it. Like, do you think there's gonna right. be actual roaming militias killing trans people? Like, what? Like, let's put some money down on something if we're gonna make these types of like extreme claims. So there's some accountability to what you're saying. Is it actually true? Or are you just like stoking flames for a political cloud, basically? I agree. Yeah. Get them yeah, to put like, some money down on it. I mean, the cops were pretty promiscuous with a lot of the blm protesting that turned into rioting and looting promiscuous so, okay. what do you mean promiscuous they? yeah yeah what does that mean <laughs> permissive. Like banging people on the <laughs> permissive side, sorry you know? they're very permissive oh like, like, I, 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 fuck I, the police but uh there you go <laughs> look they want, they want to turn it that. around as, as a good progressive okay i'll endorse <laughs> i'll endorse yeah. the cops doing that there you go but is it bribery or is it rape that's the real question oh god <laughs> no, before and by the way that militia group shit's already happened ain't it um desantis Where? recently didn't he try to form like some florida His own home? state guard yeah yeah wonder like, what he wants what's going on in florida sitch this is uh, this is such a nothing story because it's like so i looked into this it's like first of all 22 states have active state guards california and does of course Fuck california you, does and it's when you yeah. look at it it's, it's like a it's a pretty 50 50 split of blue slash red states for it and for and in Florida, it's actually a pretty justifiable reason that he gave. It was for uh, storm, flooding, and hurricane totally. uh, preparedness and reasons of that Na nature. National Guard kind of stuff. Or? Yeah, having a state guard essentially. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to wait for right. for Washington to save us. Come on, yeah, Wash. Because that doesn't seem like it's anything that should be a left or right issue. I mean, you could. Well, it is if you frame it like I guess DeSantis is, wants a, like that, a state guard to like crack down on the trains right. and black people. He's yeah. going to send his army in to invade Georgia and fight their <laughs> army. No, no, no. He's going to send the state guard in to like arrest teachers that are teaching CRT. That's, that's what he, that's what Vosh believes. Yeah. Right. Right. Do you, uh, Destiny, do you have a position on CRT? We talk about CRT a lot, but I, I don't know that I've ever seen you do a video on it or anything um crt to me is it's the same thing as the um like grooming shit it's just like a conservative boogeyman to like drum up fears about education or whatever oh great uh -oh. We'll have you, yeah we'll have you back it'll be its own debate <laughs> wanted that yeah. for yeah one makes you wonder right after an attempted political coup why would one of the most right-wing governors attempted in the country maybe coup? the most who's gunning for president in 24 want essentially a private army <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't operate exactly as a private army, but, you know, he's played it fast and loose with the rules before. Backpedal, backpedal, to... backpedal. The guy, mm -hmm. a guy who lost the election is trying to make a private army? I think that there there were, um, there was, 
I believe 5% of the people that showed up at the Capitol did have some organized plan. So insofar as, now I don't even think Vosh knows this because he's following, but insofar as if you wanted to make an argument that there was an attempted coup, I think you, you can make that argument with the 5% of people there that did have some sort of plan to like literally circumvent the electoral results with guns and all sorts of shit. What is that? Where is that information with... coming for? Is that like FBI probe? Or um, what? I believe I want to say it was the FBI released that there like five percent of the people there approximately had been involved in some larger plan. Uh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, no, but wow. plan to impede the election. Or yeah, something? to impede the right. election was essentially the. Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, were sure. they working together or were they? You know, two groups of two people who were just delusional people who. I think my understanding is there's some level of coordination between all of them, but I'd have to go and look up the exact. Hmm. That's a little disheartening. Or, man, we need guns. And it's defensive, too. I'm not talking about initiating violence. I'm only talking about making not. sure innocent folks can defend themselves when they come for them. Yeah. Well, what it is, is it's saying you're, you're telling people essentially to get guns and arm up, and then you're saying that guy next to you, he could punch you at any second. He will kill you at any moment. It's coming. I promise. Well, even worse, he's, he's saying, like, oh, it's you know, defensive. I just it's being defensive. Just, governors are are getting their own. Wait, private can I just click a thing and discover to, that? Wait, did that? I didn't think up, I could. You know, can I actually do that? Want. Destiny, yeah. you're muted. They're going full Eric. Prince. No, no, I was, I was a different yeah. question. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I think right now public opinion is in a place that the way we can defend ourselves from all of that is by grabbing power and being like a fun little movement of online people who scream about uh well no, that's not how i would want to say that uh who's just screaming about preparing for a huge violent clash is not does not have broad appeal and we need look he's grabbing the gun he's hiding the gun <laughs> oh geez oh my gosh <laughs> how dare you call me doing? a fun little movement <laughs> Trying to get Is the he, gun. Oh my god! He almost he he did he knew he stopped himself because he knew he was like a bunch of people acting like complete idiots online is probably not a good way to win the next election. Like this guy's thinking in terms of actual, you know, electoral politics. He's just trying to chill Vosh out. Yeah. Bro, in our movement to have any chance of getting power. One of the people I think about a lot is uh, Bernie Sanders. Obviously, he sort of oh, came he really out of nowhere in that, that first run, away. and did pretty well didn't win obviously um but one of the things that was super notable about him he definitely conveyed his views he's definitely very you know raises alarm about uh the anti-democratic stuff with uh the republican party all of that but comes off and in his rhetoric comes like he could be a moderate dude now of course the media pretends that he's super radical all the time but there was a lot of people that i knew who generally were usually saw themselves as in center and they're like oh bernie's kind of cool even though he was the most um, left candidate. And I think if generally as the left, we and online progressives, we adopt messaging that it has broad appeal, we could very, very easily get in power and do the actual uh, foundational things that will prevent them from being able to enact any of this type of stuff. Because that's what we need. I'm telling you, a bunch of Voshites fighting against a bunch of like, proud boys, it's just, it could, could definitely happen in the increasing rhetoric on either side currently but that's not gonna save us from a fascistic takeover i don't we think definitely you... have to get enough actual political power and the only way you do that is to have broad appeal in your movement and not just sound like oh see there's radicals on the left and radicals on the left on i don't right. think because our, our policy prescriptions aren't even radical maybe farther down so they call us radical uh, either way movement. they call biden well, people radical. understand the difference people call bernie radical exactly and it didn't work with biden They'll call it, you that, but if it lands on people, is it a different thing? Republicans have called Biden a communist. I don't think my rhetoric. This is this is Carl. Sure, some people will call some people anything, but that doesn't that doesn't change the fact that you can't just call anything any whatever you want and not get broad appeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for your land, for your blows to land, they ha you have to have some semblance of truth, right? Right. Uh, you can't yeah. Just call anybody perfect. anything and expect that it'll stick unless you've got like some reason for it to stick, right? Mm-hmm. Where, with respect, I think this is liberal brain rot. I don't think <laughs> with respect. acknowledging that you should arm yourself in preparation for a genocide and that the people who want to kill minorities are evil is an optical harm. I think you're falling for civility no, politics. No, but I'm saying that 
I mean, you see, he just jumped it's ahead. Already, He's like, listen, yeah. you think it's an optical harm to call the people who want to kill minorities evil? Come on. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. It's establishing they just want to go out there and kill minorities. Right. That's, yeah. that's the party to be established. Nah, you I'm don't not, need to okay. establish that. Yeah. <laughs> In my own... Okay. You have to understand that a lot of people who aren't... Uh, I don't like using this because I know Destiny has like a thing against online. Ooh, Destiny. Uh -oh. Destiny mentioned. Oh Destiny comes up in every political Be conversation. Beware. It's so really annoying. <laughs> it's so fucking annoying. Absolutely true. <laughs> Jesus. Every well, time... I don't know how much you watch Destiny, but Destiny, every fucking time I was not. discussing the video, people would be like, what about Destiny? I'm like, I don't give a shit. Absolutely. You're true. talking about Vosh. What the fuck? It all comes back to me. Yeah. Well, well, Destiny you, is responsible for Vosh, so it makes sense. True. Destiny, you are bringing people to more moderate positions, which I think is a force for good in the world, even if Vosh hates your guts. So. Wow. Well, lefties, and it sounds like you have a... Even if you're wrong about the Trump phone call, I'm willing, <laughs> I'm willing to forgive it. Take the uh -huh. good with the I bad, think it's yeah. a, I think it's a net good what Destiny's doing. Thanks. Even his Jordan Peterson hate. You know, I'm going to I'm going to forget even his CR no. I can only go so far here. We'll talk about that obsession later. Obsession with it. Um and I'm not super do you, super obsessed. Do you with think it's a crazy online online lefties, online but wait, 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 let me thing let me, to arm wait, wait, yourself let me, in hold preparation. Up, hold up. Just let me finish the thought. Okay. I my point is most people, even who consider themselves liberal, who are a part of our broader movement, definitely don't think of the Republican Party currently as being preparing to slaughter minorities. In That's the right. And so when you say that, people go, uh, well, then it, you have to explain it in a way that comes off as sort of logical. The way that you explain it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you, yeah, you, you can't assume, by, you have to understand that people don't, by this wild claim that you're making and the people that do are already pretty far in a certain direction i feel if they're willing to just kind of accept that do you think those people vote i mean it's completely <sighs> i mean uncredible but mm -hmm. i don't know i i don't know if they're young probably not i mean what's the point in voting if you're on the verge of civil war i like i don't know they they think they're owing legitimacy to the system that's going to genocide you and i don't want to do yeah. that right yeah I feel like this is discouraging people from voting. For sure. Kind of, yeah. If you're telling people, instead of telling people, go out, go vote, be active, get right. people to participate. actually do things and participate, you're telling them to go get guns and bullets. And this I, is, I just feel well, they, like they, they had to contend with that. They had to contend with that in 2020 because there was all this like rhetoric about the election being stolen. And then there were like runner up Senate elections and shit. And it was a big fucking problem for Republicans because, like, why would people go out and vote if they think the election's being stolen? Yeah. Right? One of the, the things that I said is that I, I unironically yeah. think the Republicans might have thrown the election by being so doomer about mail in ballots because the margins were so close in so many areas. Like, they might have actually, maybe, maybe they could have won if they wouldn't have been so discouraged about them. Because I bet there mm -hmm. were at least a few that didn't show up to vote and they didn't want to mail in a ballot because they thought it was rigged anyway. Like, sure. Yeah, yeah. Which, and I thought historically before COVID, the uh, Republicans usually won on mail-in votes anyway. Yeah, it was pretty beneficial to them generally. They did when the mail-in votes were, because normally the mail-in votes are predominantly military, military. and military lanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I mean, that's damn, a reason. You, COVID is a completely a different situation. Then don't vote. Right. Well, but I guess if you're an extremist movement and you kind of want to cultivate this radical attitude, I mean, you kind of want that. You want people to feel could... like they don't have a change so that you can advocate for these radical solutions. Yeah, you don't vote. You can't make a change, but don't vote because that's just, I mean, you know. Right. This is, I think, why so many people on the left are demoralized by the Vosh situation is because they feel like Vosh is popular enough that he really could have some impact for them in electoral politics, but he's kind of not really moving in yeah, that I mean, direction. It's the same thing with Hassan. It's the same thing for Mike. It's the same thing with all these popular lefties. Like, they don't do anything with any of their political Right, powers. yeah. It's just like, they just make a ton of money and do, you know. If you chat So all chat the, all the day, people who care about, vote. yeah. All the people who care about harnessing that political power, sitting back going, if I was in their shoes, I would be doing something useful. Yeah. It's very sad. Go ahead, uh, Rex. Oh, you left. Okay. Damn. <laughs> it's as if you're just as, even though because I've watched you, I know you're not, so I take it more seriously. But for someone else who hasn't, doesn't have that underlying understanding of kind of your thought process, then it definitely comes off as just as 
kind of detached. But as I talk, I talk to my audience, right but I've about. explained my rationale dozens and dozens of times about the necessity of forming strong neighborhood-based political blocks, whether you're leftist or liberal. This isn't about socialism here. This isn't just about building communities that aren't going to roll over when authoritarians try to tear apart our democracy. I don't, like, I, 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 the, the thing is to me, like, you are the one more out of touch with America than I am here because you're the one who flinched when I said you should buy a gun, you know? I'm in touch with Americana here. Now, I, I saw, I'm in touch with Americana everywhere. here. Guns are. Why shouldn't <laughs> no. we own them? Dozens of them. Thousands of rounds of ammunition. Gun, Armored. I'm, I didn't flinch. Armored vests. I am very un, un, uh, shocked by what you're saying so don't so don't worry i My think aren't hurt. I, I don't think americana's in the space of we need to all start arming ourselves to get into communities to prevent the fascist yeah if, government if from marching guns, our streets yeah. they're like oh, i might need to protect myself my house yeah you know, it's, it's very much like that that's probably crime like is going up all these liberal well, prosecutors are well, letting people go there you go the but, vast majority of people who uh, that kind of person's mindset is not i might need this for a violent Res revolution against the fascist government who's who's rounding up gays they're trying to recall our los angeles district attorney because he's so soft on crime sitch so it's not i mean it's yeah real. so that was that was the hit and run video was from that is your district there's a bunch of them there's a bunch of them yeah, yeah that was pretty crazy that that guy who intentionally hit the woman with the baby and he only got right. six months wait hold, yeah. hold on. we gotta we, we need to clarify he hit the woman and the woman had a baby or so a woman was to hit the woman yeah. a woman was walking her baby and this guy intentionally drives into her while she's like oh. has her baby in the stroller uh fortunately the baby i believe was fine and she only suffered minor injuries um someone immediately crashed into that guy to prevent him from fleeing the scene and wow. it, was, it was very controversial because he i think the kid was underage he was like 16 or 17 and he only got six months in a juvenile okay. facility for doing that so that's fucked up Jeez. yeah now if you now if if, if you want to call people like that evil i'd be more agreeable than just <laughs> right massive right, segments right. of the population right. he was de he was a democrat actually so <laughs> at least he wasn't liberal so vosh is vosh is totally forgiving him right but it turns out that the baby well, was a republican yeah so. Well, I mean, that story would have blown up nationally if the, you know, if the woman that was hit was, you know, not white, because it would have, they would have assumed a racial animus to the crime. Right. But I explain my rationale well enough. The precursors to genocide, what leads to it, that's a broadly recognized thing, not just some crazy lefty theory based thing. The issue with liberals right now is they don't understand the stakes. You know, liberals should be treating Republicans as what they actually are evil and immediately threatening now you can talk with them all you want i love talking to folks nice. you saw that convo Someone's i had with the uh, lds like, person that's a big yeah. thing to say like an immediate real threat right yeah. we're starting to get you into know, like you might be able to justifiably shoot them in self-defense kind of levels and i'm like whoa we need we're a little bit past that i think those. we've gotten there already <laughs> yeah but yes. yeah 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 and well, he says what... he loves talking to people and i'm like you know the type of people that i don't like talking to people who are immediately threatened i just i have this thing that i just try to avoid those people yeah well he sort of walked in his next conversation after this he's another hour and a half long conversation with rose and he kind of tries to you know bullshit his way through that conversation whenever he's posed like well if you're saying it's immediate threat does that mean people can take preemptive violent steps and he doesn't yeah, really he just wanna... gets mad because he thinks he's getting baited even though it's just by his own word right yeah, that's, that's completely a valid calls, question yeah. mm -hmm. Are you fed posting right now? Are right. you baiting me here? Uh, Angry Man for $25 says, Destiny titled his stream on Adam and Sitch. This is proof that A-Team reigns supreme. Wow. Very, Disgusting. very based. Just yeah. naturally what your fingers and brains want to Stop do it. when you type You're that all out. wrong. I know. Well, listen, well, yeah. lots of things are natural. I would never make a prescriptive moral system based on biological <laughs> essentials. Uh, <laughs> Brian Town said, for twenty dollars, says to be fair, you can be called all those words for just disliking Black Panther or Captain Marvel or The Last Jedi. So I have no faith when I hear someone call oh. someone else uh, those words. I assume they mean racist, sexist. Hi, rags. Oh, yeah. S class. Oh, hi. Is best class. And our tards are cool too. There you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Afro Cook for twenty dollars says, as someone who's extremely pro-life and libertarian, I'm willing to compromise on funding contraception. Uh, Republicans need to be flexible on this issue. Also, Destiny makes for some good conversation. Hi, Rags and Tumor. Hello. I agree on all those things. Yeah, sure. Last night, friendly convo. Um, I don't want to, you know, it's not an intrinsic thing. Bring Republicans over. Save them from themselves. But this, the threat right here, it's what we faced in Germany. By we, of course, I mean the progressive left. And everyone else, by the way, I it's they that were the belief for it. that this type of political movement can be squashed by anything other than militant, aggressive political action has failed in the past. So that's what we need to do. We got to so bring liberals on board. What is what is the movement? What, what is what is happening that requires this militant action? The genocide, bro. The, the, what, what genocide? All of it. They got to own the guns. They have to be practicing at the ranges. They have to be treating political organizing with the same sense of fatalistic engagement that Republicans do. You know, we need people out there as crazy as Going the Republicans the ranges, in those geez. school board meetings. We need them showing up to all those local town hall groups. We need them that. to be psychotic. Uh, uh, you know, Jesus Christ. I don't, know, I don't know that. <laughs> what the fuck is this conversation? Generally, this one avoid worse? telling people to be a psychotic, but. Especially when they got the guns and they're going to ranges. I, that, yeah, that's that's pretty fucking spicy, buddy. Break the law. I don't give a shit. Don't hurt any innocent people. What? <laughs> Did he mean? Wait, he didn't say break the. He meant. He said break the law. I don't give a shit. Just don't hurt any innocent people. But he wouldn't. Good thing Republicans like, cops... aren't innocent. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He wouldn't oh, find Jesus, cops and Republicans the law, is innocent. Just don't hurt... Ugh. Jesus Christ. Cool. Be psychotic. Do crime. But be wacky. You know. Throw some bricks. Don't care. They need to put the. Don't is throw this, bricks. Is this TOS? Please. Stop! Stop throwing things. Don't throw things. Don't I'm do it. I'm legitimately not sure. I haven't read YouTube's TOS in detail enough. This seems borderline not TOS. Susan, we disavow can, Vosh. Just so I can that we're clear. Yeah. Guarantee. First of all, yes, we disavow. Uh, we I can disavow. almost guarantee you that this is a TOS violation. You know, he's literally telling people to go out and commit crimes. <laughs> so. Jesus yeah, Christ, dude. Jeez. The fear of God in uh, Republicans. No, we're talking about the the greatest country on earth. The God. So what's going to happen is if you do that and you go out and do crimes and you throw bricks and destroy property. I know mm -hmm. that you love destroying property, but the Republicans are going to use that against you. And they're going to say, look at all this violence. And they're going to show all the violence. And they're going to say, all right, you need to do the things we want to do because people are throwing bricks and being psychotic and committing crimes. That's what they're going to do. Right. They're well, I mean, polarize people against you. I forget who we were talking to about this, but it's like, you know, for someone who's so worried about, you know, the history of fascism and authoritarianism, I mean, historically people generally choose, you know, extreme order and authoritarianism over chaos. And if yeah, you start going out that, there yeah. causing all this chaos, you're just going to incentivize, you know, people to turn to the right. If they feel like, yeah, they're in danger. And the social fabric has fallen apart. They just might, yeah, right. They might go more authoritarian than they normally would for the sake of uh, getting things straightened out. And you don't want that, of course. But be wacky, you know. Throw some bricks. Don't care. They need be to put the fear of God bricks. in Republicans. <laughs> no, we're talking about the the greatest country on earth, the God given U.S. of A. and preventing you... the takeover of fascism. This this is the line. And we have what's the what what do you mean what is the line the the union organizers in the turn of the 20th century were out there like warring with the police and getting neighborhoods bombed but that right it's there like precursor to genocide throw a brick that you flinch at like this is the issue here i'm not saying i'm going out there and you know doing some well i mean it's not just the throwing of the brick it's the you telling people to go out and doing the throwing of the brick that's like damn oh mm -hmm. oof I mean, Absolutely. it's just a Result. trick, right? He okay. mentions he mentions the least extreme thing that he said when he said like all kinds of shit that is fucking insane. He's like, "Oh, I'm I'm just saying throw a brick." Like that's uh, no, dog. True. Okay, right. hey, listen. I love you guys. It's been fun. I commend you and I wish you the best of luck on the rest of your thing. I'm going to take off though. Okay, I got to sleep pretty soon. Oh, all wait. Righty. Uh thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, but before you go, I do need to tell you I was listening to your uh, Ukraine debate. Oh boy. And when it, this this Newland, the Newland phone call keeps being thrown in your face. 
And I got, if you don't have time, we can talk about it later, but that whole thing about the Newland phone call is 100% fake news. Yeah, I mean, we've listened to the full phone call on stream. It's just two diplomats talking about who they'd prefer to be in power or who would be more flexible, whatever. No, there's another, there's another aspect to that. What is the other? I'll I'll give you really quickly is that um, what they're talking about is that Yanukovych offered that position, the prime ministership to Yats. And they're just saying that they want Yats to take it. They're not talking about having the government after Yakov. Sure, I know. They, yeah, but they phrase that wanting as though like we're, they're going to do something about it. Like when there's no proof of that, they're like the U.S. is going to like install some dictator or do some shit. But yeah, um, right. yeah. Okay, I love you guys. It's been fun. Stay safe. Be careful. Rip on. Okay. See you later. Yeah. Take care, man. Safe. Thanks for Don't coming on. Bricks. Yeah. We'll do it again. Don't throw any bricks. Bye bye. Okay. Good job, guys. We did it. Well, son. We had our own Vosh support group. How amazing. Feels good, man.